got a chance of making it's it past lunch, check. I think. Yes. Um, I think it's Got a chance of making it last one day. <laughs> emergency teams to organise. Hi all, and welcome to the <coughs> Croquet Association National Open Championship finals <laughs> between <laughs> James Deeth <laughs> and Mark Avery at Nottingham. Um, sorry for the slight delay. <laughs> Um, um, we'll be trying to get some streaming to you shortly. Um, I'll pass you over to the commentators now. Um, the players haven't started warming up yet, but they will do now. Right, OK. Welcome to the 2023 Association Croquet Open Championship at Nottingham. Uh, I'm Chris Clark and I'm joined by Keith Ayton. Hello everyone, good morning. Um, we've been a bit delayed by the um, few technical problems and the players haven't actually had their five minutes hit, hit up yet. So they should be coming on to lawn shortly. Um, this is the new side of Nottingham, these used to be bowling. There used to be three bowling greens here and uh, there was a plan formed a few years ago to basically level the whole area and as you can see um, there are now four flat croquet lawns Absolutely. and they've been in use for a couple of years now and they, they said the view seems to be that they're, they're actually much better than the existing five croquet lawns. Yeah, and they're miles better for two reasons. First of all, they're flatter, but more importantly from my perspective, they're much firmer. So when we hold golf croquet tournaments here, we notice it's much more difficult to get the ball to jump, and that's because there isn't that layer of thatch on top, creating that springy layer. And the added advantage in that is the hoops have been able to be much firmer than normally at Nottingham. They actually got a level of challenge on this side and that's really really important and it, it has played an impact. We saw errors yesterday. Um, we're probably going to see less errors today I think. We've had an overnight rain and the lawns have just slowed down a tiny bit more. Um, so this is lawn six the final is going to be on. Yesterday we were on seven and eight for the semis and we've got James Deeth from Nottingham against Mark Avery. Uh, is Mark Amok still an Ipswich member or? I'm not remember. sure he's a member anywhere but uh, yes he's, he's from Ipswich. Long time member at the Ipswich club that's where he learned to play the game and Mark is playing in the final for the first time since 1989. Correct, and 1989 was the first ever World Championship, That's which right. was combined with the British Open. And Mark played Joe Hogan. He did. Fantastic player from New Zealand. Hi, Joe, if you're listening. And I think the score in that was something like plus three TP plus three, or the other way yeah, around. They were both plus three, one of them with a TP, yes. That's right. So, um, but we should also mention that two years prior to that, Mark actually won the Open Championship in 1987 87. and he was only 21 when he did that uh, and he is still the youngest ever winner. Um, perhaps more surprisingly he's never won it since. Indeed. And that's 36 years? That's 36 years, that's right. Um, and throughout that time he's been remained a, a very fine croquet player 
Um, well, he is, he is one of the most naturally gifted, or, or so it appears. I mean, if you watch, we'll see. I mean, James, James Deeth is, you could say the same about him. Um, Mark, when he's on form, he does make the game look very easy. I... He doesn't hang about. Um, appears to be very casual, but he's not. And his croquet strokes are, are superb. In many ways, on paper, this is the most attractive final we've had for, well, donkey's years. And it's partly due to the elegance of the two players, uh, but also the speed of play. This isn't going to be a slow final. No, it won't be. No. Um, you know, going to be lots of, you know, positive, tight, controlled, quality break play. Well, let's hope so. We hope so. Anyway, yeah. Um, uh, perhaps another thing to note is that we've got two left-handed grips here. James playing with a, a left-handed pen holder, and Mark playing with an Irish grip, left-handed, where the hands are slightly split, aren't they? In Mark's case, in just well, a little bit, just barely. I one of the things I, I noticed with Mark is he's got very big hands, right? And the hands actually cover a large area of that top of the mallet, uh -huh. which perhaps makes them look more split than they actually are. But yeah, that's the hands sort of devour the top of the mallet, and you know he's probably using ten inches of grip. There, yes. Whereas yes. most of us wouldn't use anywhere near that much to place our hands. So, so what do you th what do you think the advantages are for for Mark's grip? Would, Irish you, would you recommend somebody taking up the game to use that grip, or James's grip, or or another grip completely? Well, generally, we say play with the grip that feels most comfortable. Most people who pick up a mallet with an Irish grip, which is my preferred grip, simply aren't physically able to do it because they can't bend their wrists far enough. So I can't bend my wrist far enough to play Irish. If you can play Irish, it generates a flatter swing than a standard grip. Okay. And a standard grip generates a flatter swing than a Solomon grip. And by Solomon, we're talking that both the sort of knuckles pointing forward, both hands in fists. Right. Um, and a lot of people do pick up the Solomon grip straight away, don't they? Particularly yeah. younger players who yeah. are smaller and need to hold the mallet in a certain way because they're not quite tall enough and um, we don't have a lot of shorter children's mallets knocking around at clubs um, but yeah Irish grips my preferred grip but I can't play with it myself so what about James's grip so pen right. holder there aren't many people you see using that grip are there no and it's split and if you watch it it's it's what we would call quite wristy quite a lot of the power is coming from the bottom hand mm -hmm. um, and the swing is not quite as much from the shoulders as we would want. And James isn't the most consistent player in the world. Right. He's probably one of the most talented players in the world, but he has bad patches. And I think that's caused by the fact that the swing is a little bit on the wristy side, using the small muscles rather than the big ones. Right. Okay. Um, so... Uh, to me, one of the key parts of this match is going to be the first 20 minutes. If James starts well in the first 20 minutes, I think James is going to win. Well, he did that yesterday, didn't he? Because yeah. he hit in fourth turn in the very first game very nicely. Yeah. And, and that's a big settler it for is. anybody. And Reg had dug the balls out for him fourth well, turn. Well, he had. Very generous. So he actually had a, a laid break rather than having a ball near corner two and having to do some work maybe approach the hoop from the corner is it you've just seen him try to do that in the practice yes. and didn't get the right side of the hoop no well getting the pace of the lawn is one of the things you do in the warm-up isn't it yeah yeah and uh, and do you have a, a, a recommended uh, routine for mm. somebody doing a, a warm-up at this stage very much so I mean I, I do the same thing on all my warm-ups I have a five minute warm-up and I have a ten minute warm-up depending on what tournament you're playing in and what the regulations are but I always start off with sort of 40 seconds of just hitting one ball onto another, maybe from three to four yards. Mm -hmm. Just gain some confidence hitting your ball in the middle, at the middle of a target, and just get your swing grooved. And after that I like, during that period, work my way up to hoop two, and then I might play a takeoff back down to about 
eight, nine yards north corner four, and then lag a ball back to that spot. Okay. So you're gaining the pace of the lawn there. Yes. You're also moving your balls to position where your next shot can be rushing to hoop one from the east boundary. Gotcha. Yeah. Because that's a, a very common shot early in the game. Yes. And we want to know the pace of the lawn. Does it hill? Is it faster in certain areas? So that rush to hoop one from the east boundary is something I'm always going to put in my warm up. Okay. Yeah. What commentating here? If I came and sat sort of around the corner, I could listen to you. Because I might have to do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Welcome, Veronica. Veronica Carlisle from Veronica Hurlingham. Carl, yes. You're very welcome to take a seat. Um, so we are live. Oh dear. That's fine. <laughs> um, so mentioning that rush to hoot one, I've now rushed to hoot one from the east boundary. Yes. And I'm going to play three or four or five approaches to hoot one sure. from various positions, straight in front, from the east, from the west, each time trying to get a rush somewhere useful. Mm -hmm. um, if I play a good shot, I'll run the hoop gently and get my rush. Do you test the, the, the yard lines or the not particularly in, the east east boundary not in a five minute warm-up right um normally in a major competition i will know by this stage all the yard lines what they do and if i haven't played on the lawn myself i will have asked the people who do okay um, well they've had the toss and i'm guessing james won the toss i would say he would go in wouldn't, wouldn't you? he would normally go in now there is and, a and he would also normally choose red and yellow so i think he's won the toss choosing to go in and we're going to get what's called a super shot and again we mentioned this yesterday what's the purpose of putting this ball there well that unless it gets moved is james's pioneer for hoot one so basically he's saying wherever you put with the red mark i'm going to shoot at your red and try I'm and go around. I'm going to hit your red yeah. <laughs> and attempt to get a break, a three ball break, and before so, you've even had a go. And yesterday we saw Reg play to about 19 yards south corner three, what's called a max distance spot. He did, he had two goes because James did it in two games. The first time Reg had a soft shot at blue from corner one this this time blue's a little bit further north than james put it yesterday and i think mark's going to have a soft shot with red oh it's quite firm that that's gone a long way that's it's yeah but it's quite interesting actually i think that's a free shot through to corner four for it james. is but you equally Hitting blue is probably shorter, isn't it? Yeah. From a bolt. Looking from our position, if black goes to corner three, it's not a double, is it? He can't make a double from B bulk, I don't think. He's going to come up and have a look at various options. The shot through to corner four, I assume. Um, and I think that's a shot he's going to take. It is. But it I like do it. expect him to come over to corner three, at least have a look. No, he's just no, going to... He just take this shot into corner four it is what about 14 14 yards 13 14 well it's nine and a half to the hoop it's, it's he's playing it yeah, at an 13, angle 13 13 14 yeah um oh wow oh. gentle go walking straight after it he knew that was hitting all the way yeah do you think that have gone off the lawn it might have done i mean red's traveled a fair distance Centre point might not have actually reached. It would have been close. It certainly wasn't a thrashy go. No, it wasn't, no. Um, and I mentioned yesterday, when you've hit this ball in this position, I was talking about a max distance ball then, but <clears throat> it's quite an easy croquet stroke to play this. It's, and he yeah, has left it a bit short. And he also hasn't got a straight rush to hit one. And he didn't do that yesterday either, actually, did he? No. The, what we saw. The lawns are slower than yesterday. We've had overnight rain. Massive overnight rain. I mean, a real thunderstorm. That's good rush. Yeah. Um, any, anyone who's thinking he's, but he's rushed it the wrong well, side. He's, yes, and we're, we're commenting on that because he, he did this against Rich yesterday and he 
failed to uh, get in front of hoop one. Yeah, he said it hilled into the wire. He was taking off from further north of the hoop that time. Right. So from this position, you should never hit the wire. But you may end up with a you 15 may end degree up with hoop. An angled hoop, yes. <clears throat> So, this is a big shot in the match, I think. And he's got, not just run the hoop, but he's, yeah. he's hit the blue, meaning he doesn't have a nervy five yard return row cake. So, very helpful. But he's got this, <coughs> he's got this um, split roll. And people have been struggling a bit with these balls, haven't they, Chris? They just have. to get the ratios right. Ratios and a little bit of judging the pull as well. We've seen a yeah. few balls sent into the peg. And I think also this, the angle of split is slightly different. I, I, I would tend to agree. Um, so possibly coming a little narrower. Uh, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yes, the, the old Dawson balls do, because they're a bit harder, I think they, they do split slightly wider. But again, he's, well, I don't, we can't go on and ask him actually where he wanted blue, but I'm going to guess he would have wanted blue to, near a hoop three. But again, for people watching who are maybe learning the game, there might be a natural thought that blue ideally would be a foot in front of hoop three. And I don't think either of us would have been trying to send it a foot in front of hoop three. Absolutely not. And, no. and one of the reasons for that is that you will be moving blue. On, on your rokeh. Um So you might want to approach from fairly close to the hoop, but you're going to be rokeh it before. Oh, dear, that's, that might be bad. Uh, so calling a referee. So the first thing he's going to want to do, he's going to want to place well, this black. Is, this is quite technical now from a law's perspective, isn't it, Chris? It is. Um, He's, he's got to take croquet from blue, so yeah. he's got to put black in contact with blue. But before he does that, because it's a critical ball, he's going to get a referee to mark the position of the blue. Yes, because there's, there's been a, a fairly recent law change here, in that um, once he, if he doesn't get this done by a referee these days, he can't move blue back if he happened to move it. In, the, in attempting to place black next to it. Yeah. Um, now, if black can be placed in contact with blue... Well, this is the second technical aspect, isn't it? So that none of the black is poking out the far side of the hoop. Well, it's, and what, that's what we would call has started to run the hoop. That's right. Then he'll be allowed to play from this side of the hoop and it'll be easy. It will, because... He can just do, well, it looks as though he is in that situation, so he's going to just play possibly straight through the hoop now? No. And uh, he'll, okay. he'll play the rush with this shot rather with than this shot. with this shot. He won't risk running this short and being running into blue and having a hampered croquet stroke. He'll play the rush immediately, I'm pretty sure. No, well, he's I pointing to no, I'm surprised to. by that. Because red's in hoop four. He, wants, he definitely wants a rush. I think he should be playing this hoop and rake, surely. Uh, he's ended up with a cut rush. And it's a bit awkward, isn't it, having red in the hoop? There are things that can go wrong. Yeah. They won't go wrong, because James is a very good player, but... It actually looked like blue came out at a significant angle. It did, didn't which it? Which is yes. why he hasn't played the rush. Yes. Um, so we can actually tap it through and leave a, a handy rush to the boundary. Um, but going back to the position at hoop three, um, again for the people who are trying to improve their game and think a ball sent to hoop three should go to hoop three, it, you need to build in tolerances to each shot and none of us play perfect shots all the time. Sure. And if you end up sending it two yards long, that's much worse than sending it two yards short. It is, yes. So aiming for it to finish four or five feet short might be quite a good place to give you that margin of error, particularly when you're sending it out from hoop one. So James here going south of the red can clearly hit it through. Yeah, but again, the blues, blue, I would say, is shorter than he would have wanted. I agree. Um, one of the things we probably ought to talk about is, is what is he trying to do this turn? 
Right, sure. Well, he's making a series of hoops, what we call a break. Um, and I think what he will do is make nine hoops, if he can, in this turn. Um, and because we're playing under what are called advanced rules, as soon as James runs the seventh hoop, or one back, Mark will be entitled, as well as playing the balls <coughs> as they lie, on its next, his next turn, he can actually lift. I know he can't because he's got to play yellow into the game. Correct. So he's got to play yes. yellow into the game. So yellow yeah. effectively all, all has okay. an automatic lift, but doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. It's, yellow's got to be played from the bolt lines. Anyway, That's a so. really weak, weak red. That's a long way east of hoop six. And if anything, you'd prefer it west of hoop six if you're choosing east well, or west. Yes. Now, is that because he's played for pool that he didn't get? Or is it careless lining up? Careless lining up, well, again, we can't go out and ask him. Uh, but on a three ball break, instead of sending blue to hoop seven, you'd normally send it a bit south, giving yourself room to send out a two back pioneer Indeed. if you don't yes. get a rush out of hoop six. So expect blue to finish short of hoop seven, one back. Well, and that's, that's certainly done that. That's fine. It's fine, yes. Still got a bit of a cut here. I, it's now always... would you send this east or west of the hoop in the approach? I'm going to send it on the shorter line, so I'm going to send it west, so I'm playing less of a split yeah. approach. Um, James has got a good enough stop shot to be able to play the load of two back, getting a rush on blue, basically from where red is. Yes. Whereas neither of us would be confident of that shot. So no, I would often find that I'd, in a situation like that, I'd actually be wanting to rush red significantly east to yeah. give myself room to play that shot. Yeah, that, that shot is almost a trademark of James. Black's almost only gone two, two yards, and he's managed to put red all the way down to hoop eight. Yes. Uh, it, it, it creates so many more opportunities for you to play controlled blur it breaks by not having to move the striker's ball as far. And again, from very close to the hoop, he's managed to move blue a couple of yards past it, and now he's far more likely to get a rush out of the hoop. Which he has. And it just makes the break so much it, easier. It does, doesn't it? Because now, because he can rush blue down there, instead of having to play a croquet stroke from up by one back. Uh, his blue is closer to three back, which he wants to send it to. <coughs> He's doing it with a, a fairly straight croquet stroke, which is easier than doing a split. And black's only going to be moving about three or four yards, which yeah. is easier than moving it 15, 16, 17 yards. Yeah, I, I just love watching him because uh, the back ball just doesn't move very far each time. It looks so controlled. Uh, so anyone thinking about, you know, what should I get in a mallet? One of the things you need to think about is, does it have a good stop shot? Yeah. Um, and part of it's technique, but part of it is mallet. Um, so always consider how good a stop shot you can get and how consistent it is. Because um, consistency is just as important, if not more important, than what it can possibly do as a maximum shot. Interesting here. This is interesting, yeah. So I was expecting the leave that he would have made yesterday, the three ducks. Now, the three ducks is made up <coughs> level with hoop six on the other side of the lawn. Yes, because you can... This is the one time... Because yellow's not yet in the game, as I've finally remembered... Uh, it's the one time you, c you can actually lay up your balls with the opponent's ball. Whereas normally, since the opponent can choose which ball to play at the start of the turn, you can't lay up with an opponent's ball, because then you, you leave it in short row okay. This time, James can lay up with red, uh, because yellow has to be played into the game. 
So he'll be laying it with blue on the boundary, and blue will have a good rush on red to yeah. wherever he puts the black. You'd the, call this a defensive? Not, so, uh, that's S all deciding on where the black finishes. If he lags uh, the okay. black two or three yards in lawn, on the western side of the lawn, yes. it's not mega defensive. If he hammers it off the boundary, right. then it is defensive. Okay. And the idea for people wondering why is he doing this is if with the last shot of his turn he goes and puts black basically on the west boundary level with hoop six and then Mark shoots from corner three and hits blue, yeah. maybe in the middle, Mark might have difficulty getting a rush on red all the way over to a ball on the boundary and might not go round. Yeah, that's the defensive aspect. So, what's he doing? He's firing off. Oh, I think, I think that is going... It's going pretty, no? pretty nearly off. No, that isn't sufficiently defensive for me. Okay. Um, that's a couple of yards in from the boundary. Um, a smattering of applause for James is great to fall back now. A legitimate choice here for Mark. Um, he's got quite a long lift from corner three and a shorter shot from the end of a bolt. Would you, given the standard of the players, yep. well, from Mark's perspective, given James's level of play, yep. would you not be thinking, I'll take the shortest shot I can find? <clears throat> if it was game three, absolutely 100%. Okay. At this time, I'm a little bit torn. Well, how far is... is how far is yellow shot at, at say, blue from the end this of the This is part? about 17 yards. Do you think it's 17? Yeah. Okay, and how far is it from corner three? Uh, it's about 21, 22 yards from corner three, probably. Yeah. So, you know, no. Nope. Okay, so this might surprise some viewers, but that, I'd almost say, should be this game over. Yeah. Um, James will have all the balls into the lawn very quickly and he'll be able to make hoop one off the black, his partner okay. and the advantage of that is it goes straight to four back ready for the triple um, so James again as we mentioned yesterday will just be focusing one shot at a time and trying to make every shot in the next turn as easy as well, he can well his first task is to establish a break yeah. isn't it? yeah he should be able to rush red. He'll hit yellow. Stop yellow well into the lawn because mm -hmm. he's got that fantastic stop yes. shot. I so most people might move this oh, two feet into the lawn. James might get it two yards. But the number one priority is blue has to have a good straight rush at the black ball. And are you rushing, as he looks at it, left or, or right of black? I like rushing left of it. Mm -hmm. So you don't get as good a rush line coming into the black. You'd be going you, across the rush line. Yeah. Right? But you would be you, getting a straight you play shot. play a straight croquet yes. stroke. And whenever I had a straight croquet stroke, I thought I could put the back ball, you know, on a, you know, three, four inch spot. Okay. So I'm, I'm sort of saying, with a straight croquet stroke here, I'm getting a rush pointing within two feet of hoop one, within a yard of hoop one. And I'm getting a great hoop two pioneer. Um, he's over hit that, he's. that's bad. It's pointing worse than corner one, I would say. Yes, possibly. Just chasing off a squirrel. Um, so that hasn't sort of landed on that pinpoint no, that I would anticipate. And red's gone too far as well, I would say. Yeah. Uh, in, in many ways, as a top croquet player, red going too far is good. Because it means you've got both balls going too far. Oh, If right. you end up one yeah, ball yeah. short sure. and one ball too far, you yes. start questioning what's going yes. on. Yes, yes. So, good recovery. Um, rushed it halfway between the corner and the hoop. But still got a little bit of work to do with the approach. Mm. 
Now, where, what's he trying to do here? He, he's playing a sort of roll stroke here. Yeah, so black wants to go past the hoop, and he'll be trying to get a rush on black, probably back towards yellow, south of yellow. Is that necessary at this stage? I mean, I, I would have thought the potential alternative was to do a more drivey approach and get black further up the lawn in case you need to run the hoop with a bit more oomph just to make sure you get through. It's certainly legitimate. I, I've tended to find James doesn't like hitting it a bit harder. Mm -hmm. Lots of these players here would love to have just popped black seven yards up the lawn and yeah. run the hoop oh, firmly. Yeah, you could have got it nearly peg high. Yeah, and James actually quite likes playing gentle shots. We saw he hits fourth turn with a remarkably gentle shot. It's very smooth though. Yeah. Very and smooth and a, and a perfect strike. And I think he wanted to run hoop one with another smooth hoop okay. strike. Um, he knows he's got enough room behind yellow to play this shot. No, he's, he's not... looking to get beyond yellow, Yeah, if he can. Yeah. Doesn't want to have to take off from yellow to red, because that would involve moving the ball a long way. Well, but he's played a I'm poor shot. he is going to. <clears throat> In many ways well, now... This is something you <clears throat> see though, isn't it? I mean, at all levels, people going to a ball that's that wasn't particularly near the boundary. Nowhere but, near it. But there's just something about the fact that you can't go off. Does potentially unconsciously just spook people. I used to love those big wide angle croquet strokes. Oh, me strokes. too. But um, e even so, I would always uh, quite often find that I didn't actually get beyond the ball that I was trying to get a rush on. So there's a danger here of overhitting the red. Uh, he's done okay. Uh, danger he could have hit the wire just fractionally off to the right, right and finished in that similar position to hoop one. Yes. On the wrong side of the hoop, yes. have to take off, have an angled hoop. But he's mm -hmm. going to be fine now. I, th I think he will be playing for a rush to yellow. I agree. He, the, the reason being that he couldn't get a rush to black. He couldn't, exactly, he couldn't get a rush to black. There's no need to improve yellow. It's nice, but you didn't need to. And the key here is he gets a rush on yellow back up to black, obtains a controlled rush. Yeah. To well, again, it's, it's the principle that his striker's ball blue is, is going to move shorter distances. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. he's actually got a, uh, a better pioneer. Yeah. He's very that. happy. So he needs. So we're going to see the start of a triple peel here. So triple peel is three peels of black. Peel being where you 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 uh, send a ball other than the striker's ball through its hoop, and it's a manoeuvre that um, is going to enable James to actually win this game in this turn if it's successful. And one of the most famous croquet books ever written was Expert Croquet Tactics by Keith Wiley. And he said, any fool can make a break to four back, but the mark of an expert is the triple peel. Indeed. And in the last sort of 30 years since he wrote the book, 40 years maybe, I think the opposite is true. Right. <laughs> and anyone can now do a triple peel, <laughs> But the mark of an expert is getting the first break. <laughs> and often games are won and lost by the opening. Is that going in your book, Chris? Well, I, I'm not sufficiently competent to ever write a book. I, <laughs> I've written, you know, 40, 50,000 pages and gone, well, you're about a hundredth of the way through what you want to write. <laughs> you're never going to do it. Um, An encyclopedia. It's just that's what we need. I just, I just always look at things and go, oh no, you need Clark to say that. Clark Croquet. Um, There's your title. But, um, no, it was called um, North to South. Was my, was oh, my, okay. it was meant to be, and it never made it to the light of day. But, um, so again, good control here. Most people will look at this and go, yeah, can he send yellow all the way to hoop five? Well, yeah. And, and the, the answer, answer is, is more yeah, or less, just more about, or less, just yeah. about. Yeah, well, that's pretty good. So he's he did after hoop three. 
Um, this is why he needed yellow there, because he, he had a cocoa stroke going north and he needed yellow there in order to find a means of getting back towards red. And he's going to come all the way back to corner three well, area. Well, he's, he's left black behind here, it looks a bit lonely. So the idea by rushing that red all the way to the north boundary is he's got room now to send red to hoop six. And there are two options people play. You can either get a rush on black to hoop six and yep. take off back to yellow. Yeah. And yellow's in a perfectly good place to take off to. Or you could rush red all the way south and croak yeah. it back again to hoop six yeah. going to yellow. James normally rushes to hoop six. Yeah. Well, in this case, I wouldn't want to rush black southwest, say round about hoop one. Because yellow's, yellow's on the wrong side. Yellow's on the east side. So what you're saying is you wouldn't have done that. So I wouldn't have done this, yes. That's exactly the thing I wouldn't have done. Um. Uh, I might have tried to rush it a similar level on our side, on the east side. I think that was difficult was, with it, where it was the hoop was. potentially difficult, yeah. So I think I would have... I don't really like rushing to hoop six because I did it once and managed to find a spot where I couldn't actually take off within five yards of the ball at hoop five. Yeah, if you rush it on top of red and you get the well, hoop Well, there's a hoop in the way, and, the other yeah. ball in the way and the peg in the way. Yeah. It was um, one of those blades of grass. No, that, that's a nice shot. Uh, black's not perfect. But he's done the key thing of getting the correct side of yellow. He's, yes, absolutely. So this is now an easy approach. We did mention this yesterday, but we like approaching hoops from straight in front, yeah. don't we? Yeah. And the, the reason for that is that when your ball is moving towards the hoop, it's going absolutely on the line that you're going to run the hoop. And, and if you happen to hit it a bit too hard or a little bit too softly you're still in front of the hoop whereas if you approach from the side that's not always the case yeah i mean people practicing at home who are trying to get better at four ball breaks can um, actually mark themselves as to not just how many hoops they make but how many hoops they make from a one foot um sort of straight position they might be two or three feet back approaching but yeah. you know, from one foot, from a straight perspective, um, and that's a good exercise just to make sure you're not always approaching from 45 degrees and think it's good enough. Uh, as the lawns get faster, the more hoops you approach from the side, the more you're going to break down. Yes. And he may have rushed that a little bit too straight. Well, so, if he has. Uh, I mean, it looks to me as though it's a bit to the west, but if he has, he'll have to think about how he's going to get on it after he runs the hoop. What did he do there? I think he sent it outside. Oh, he's, well, he's oh, decided okay. not to hit red. Okay. Yeah. He could have hit red. He could have hit red. So yeah. he could have rolled black behind going to red. Well, and he could even have, have simply... Um, if he wanted to make sure he didn't get any pull on the croquet straight, he could have just played a straight shot and then tapped red. Well, we, but we, I don't think either of us would have liked that, well, having to take off from the side. Well, or just do a, a straight, a straightish or no, a bit of split, I suppose, to send red to the west, approaching the hoop. Yeah. Again, red's so close, I don't think that would have been a major issue. Well, maybe. Anyway, he's, he's clearly coped. And again, one of the shots that these elite players are very good at is he had a five, six footer after the hoop, didn't he? Yeah. And he just hit it gently enough to keep it in peeling position. And you see a lot of players get nervy on those and they just hit it that extra 50% harder and suddenly sure. it moves it out of peeling yeah. position. Um, and again, most people look at this go, he hasn't rushed this anywhere near far enough. He can't get red to two back going to yellow. Well, I think we're about to find that he has. There we go. And that, to me, is a delightful croquet stroke. Blue's perfect. Red isn't a great two back pioneer, but... Oh, I don't mind that. It's, it's near, a, near a rover. Correct. You'd rather have it on what we call inside the rectangle yeah. than outside. And the rectangle's an imaginary line between hoop one 
hoop two, hoop three, and hoop four back to hoop one again. Yeah. So anything that keeps balls inside that is never bad. So we're trying to send out his three back pan here, yellow, getting blue behind the black so he can rush black in front of hoop 12 for over the red top two, potentially to peel it going to this red ball. I have a feeling we wouldn't be doing this, would we? And again, yesterday we mentioned we'd just take a bit more time and croquet red in front of rover and peel it, <coughs> peel the rover going to three back. But yesterday he rushed it in front and I think he draws it, didn't in he? The jaws, didn't they? So again, he'll have a go at this, I think. Maybe with a little roll. He'll absolutely, definitely have a go at this. If it's in front of the hoop, he can peel, Chris. He'll be having a go at it. Um, and yeah, he's put that down once. And. How many times would we get that down in the perfect... Ah, oh, here we go, he's moved. Maybe he kicked it with his foot. We were saying yesterday, <laughs> we don't think James takes enough time lining up his peels. Um, <clears throat> but he's actually gone back well, and Well, we, we were more. talking about Reg and the fact that Reg is, seems to be very good at peeling. Yeah. His peels, he's annoyed if he gets more wire than he thinks he should have done. Um... Now that, Again, you see that? Got a lot of pull. Yes. I, I would say he's played it with a shot that gets the most pull. He's played it sort of almost out at 45 degrees with a roll, yes. gently. What he's taken out of the equation, well, he's, he, he could have landed that smack on the wire, which wouldn't have been a nice position, really. He's, he's ensured that if black didn't go through, it wasn't going to bounce too far Correct. away. Correct, yeah. So, even though Black is, is not in front of Rover, um, he can still rush it pretty easily to straight in front. Has he got room here? Yeah, loads of room. Again, for most people, this would be tricky on the verge of there can't get black red far enough and still hold for a rush James blue's good red's a little bit short again it's inside the rectangle it is and he should be able to yeah get this peel getting an easy rush on yellow to three back and it's actually quite useful to peel this by a little way so you can rush black up towards red it is yeah um, and then just, black can become the pioneer for penultimate yeah where's that oh. finished again i rushed i rushed my three back pioneer against james in the 2009 worlds today in the fifth game did you the knockout and i couldn't play the shot from the right place and i broke down and he beat me um, so it is possible to break down from these seemingly easy positions. I think he's been lucky again here. I think he's rushed it just like a hoop three to somewhere where he can place the ball on the correct side yes. and just play a little dink, well, we'll find dinky out, I think, uh, Yeah. He's got to have a go at placing it first, doesn't he? Yeah, so, so it, it doesn't actually referee. matter. You can't necessarily make the decision because yellow is poking into the hoop. It's, yeah. it's all about the position of blue. Yeah. Now there is a stroke you can play where blue is poking into the hoop and you can place it on the playing side of the hoop and then you do a little bounce off the wire into position. Yep, the bounce back shot. Um, you need firm hoops for that. You don't want the ball to hit the hoop and just sog and stay there. But these are nicely set. They should be able to bounce back without too much trouble. So he's got that as a sort of get out of jail just in case he can't get the ball in the right place. Yeah. Not the sort of shot you play for the first time 
in an important match though is it something mm. you need to practice and find out exactly how it works yeah and james is good at the sort of what we call the trick shots he likes those yes um So we've got um, the European Masters, or is it the World Masters? It might be European. the World. It's European, it's European World European. Masters hockey in the background. If you're hearing national anthems, yeah, um, that's been going on all week. Um, so just, I think they're closing today as well. And now Ian is saying yellow has been moved, and it needs to be moved back. Right. So that's the reason the referee's on, just to make sure that yellow is staying in the same place whilst blue is being placed in contact with it. This is actually, I mean, without wishing to sound critical, this is a pretty careless position to get into, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And look at this, he is lining up, well, I think he's lining up the bounce back shot yeah, now. I think you're right. He you wouldn't be playing a shot from there if you were just trying to approach the hoop or... or yeah, this is a bounce back. So he's going to hit blue. He's going to, blue's going to hit the far wire. Move his mallet out of the way so it doesn't bounce back to double tap it. Yeah. And he looks like he's played it perfectly. He's, he, well, yes. I mean, you can actually hit those quite firmly. Um, in which case, blue can come back a, bit, a lot further. But um, he certainly... Um, so number one he's priority He's done it well here. enough. You've got to get a rush on black. Yeah. Anything involving taking off from black to red is bad. And, and that, that is, is bad. bad. That is bad. There's no need for yellow to have been anywhere near Penalt, really. All that mattered well, that was true. blue getting a rush on red. Yeah, on black. Oh, sorry, yeah. blue getting a rush on black. Yeah. And anything and else... that's partly because that's just a good general principle, but it's equally <clears> the case because red isn't actually... Red is poor now. Red, red, yes, red needs rushing towards approaching position. And many people would play a takeoff to focus on just getting that striker's ball they a would, rush to They would, but red. he's also got the problem that yellow is not a good pioneer at penultimate. Correct. So we're, so we're doing two things in the same croquet stroke here. It's a very good black, and it's an okay. What would you say? Seven out of ten for blue. It's not. It's it's okay, isn't it? I mean, we're, if it, I would expect him to get red in a pretty good position, but he might be approaching a bit from the side. Oh, definitely approaching from the side. Okay. And again, but it's not too bad, is it? I mean, this is the sort of thing. If if the conditions aren't horrendously difficult, he'll make this look pretty easy. And two days ago, hoop three, hoop ten, on lawn seven. Yeah on that really fast brown patch you'd have been going why on earth am I here yeah. I've got a chance of breaking yeah, well, down I'm going to yeah. have to play a good approach followed by a good hoop stroke because the hoop was in the mega mega firm bit of the lawn and you'd have just been going I can't believe I've got to here from that easy rush to three back yeah. um, but the overnight rain yesterday's rain all these shots which might cause problems are now much easier well, I I, um, I watched a lot of the Robertson Shield yes. that took place recently in uh, Australia, and the conditions weren't easy, partly because of the horrendous weather yep. that they had. And I was enormously impressed by a turn that Ben Rothman played. A super turn, wasn't it? Um, and he just put utmost concentration and effort into approaching from straight in front of the hoop straight in front by inches yes um every hoop was just run from a few inches dead straight except for rover well he, he had to do an approach from the side at rover. right as i remember in in, the, in your commentary you, you were concerned for him well certainly when you played such a good turn suddenly having to do something fractionally difficult can cause problems yes. um I know he was very pleased with that, and it was a very important win in the match as well. So um, that was uh, one of the. And I've I've shown that to people as a as a coaching exercise, and some people have said, "Well, it's, it's only a four ball break to the peg," mm. <laughs> but actually it was because um, I think at some point on the commentary you said you were looking around at all the other lawns and seeing a sea of errors. Yeah. 
so yes now the conditions here are benign compared to I, well, I those think conditions it's about 20 degrees yeah there is not a breath of wind even Robert Fulford would struggle to find any hint of wind here today and it's a mix of cloud and blue sky uh, it is about as easy as you're going to get yes um, the hoops have been very respectable all week i've mentioned the firmer ground on this side with the lawns being only two and a half years old and they haven't got a level of thatch on top and they're quite firm underneath so the hoops if you get an angled one it's possible to fail them yeah whereas at hurlingham last year you you just carried on um so nice fast first game lovely to watch james uh, lovely pace of play uh, makes it look very easy we've tried to highlight some of the areas where errors might have been made um but this is a straight well there, there was enough interest wasn't there yeah to, yeah just to to raise a, a possibility that he might not finish so one nil fifth turn fifth turn yeah. Um, so just thinking about again, Mark had two strokes. Yes, from the point of view of the match as a whole, Mark's not had any play effectively. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on the other side, I think it's better to start a match like that than having made two errors and lost. Yes. Um, yeah, you're still thinking from yesterday I've just beaten um, Robbie Fletcher. You know. That's a pretty impressive win. Now, I thought it was impressive from two points of view. First of all, he went and got two two games up. Yeah. And secondly, when Robbie came back at him to equalise, he then was still able to just come out and win the fifth game. Yes. And it was a quite a poor performance from Robbie by his standards. Uh, in the fifth a, game, he missed two shots. And he, think, he made a big error in the first, yeah. Right. Failed four back. Well, didn't fail it, ran it by... Oh, in the first game of the match, yeah. yes, he did. He ran it by very a, little and missed a hampered a, shot. Yeah, put down a triple, didn't he? Um, so, yeah, and missed a whole range of shots that might have been what he regarded as easy shots, so he had about an 11-yard lift shot. Yes. Um, anyway, we've gone back to the start of game two, and this time Mark's playing first. Yeah, and Mark's played almost an identical super shot yes. to uh, what James played, and James has come over to the east boundary, looking did at what we mentioned in game one, the maximum distance spot. Did Mark use super shots yesterday? It wasn't the the um, the main match we were commentating on, so I didn't really notice. Um, so when he played second, he went just out of corner four. He did, and when he played first. I think he may well have used super shots from memory, but I know I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, so James has done something different. So we've got two different openings. It's the same opening because it's a super shot opening, yeah. but it's a different response. Yeah. And we saw last game, James had a 13 to 14 yard a third turn. This shot Mark's taking is about 18 to 19 yards. So it's yeah. about five yards longer. Yeah. And would you take this shot as opposed to shooting from B bolt? Hmm. I do like taking that shot if I know it's flat. Okay. Um, the downside of taking it um, is you leave a double target. You can leave a double target, yes. Um, the shortest single ball shot is actually at red, isn't it? It, it is. But you'll normally find that people take the double target from b bulk mm. They can line it up, probably in this case, from in front of hoop three and make it as big as they want. Mm -hmm. So most people will lay, line up a perfect double. You've got the, the trade-off between getting a, a potentially bigger target um, versus going over more ground. You do. And if the lawn isn't completely flat, that can be a consideration. I think we'll see James hit this harder than he hit his fourth, third turn okay. shot last game. Is. Yeah, that's much harder. And he's missed on the left. Mm. 
So, uh, I suppose from a neutral's point of view, that's quite good. Because we're going to now get Mark into play. Yes, and we're and we'll find out bit. if he's, he's, he's in good nick. And if he is, he should get a break and I'd expect him to go to four back. Yeah, and settle in. Um, nothing special, go to four back. And what I'm hoping for in the match is we get some lift shots hit. Yes, it can be a bit tedious if we don't. Um, and then there's lots of options from triple peeling the opponent out and having a pegged out ending, which is, I think we both would have enjoy commentating on a pegged out ending. That would be quite entertaining. Um, all the way to maybe going to one back and having the choice of either a sex duple or a TPO. Yes, um, I, I think that's something I can anticipate James doing, but I'm not sure Mark would. Yeah. Um, so hopefully, uh, I think already we've seen Mark has rushed this blue further away from red than James would. Yes. So he hasn't got as good a stop shot. No. And yellow's probably going to have to move a yard further in the shot. Just thinking about the technology of the mallets, is there a trade-off between um, getting a mallet with a bigger sweet spot and being able to play better stop shots. I think many people have found that the um, Pidcock and Trimmers, which were the first sort of um, generation. Well, they're peripherally, what we call per peripherally weighted. So the, the heads just look like a, a solid head, but actually, um, most of the inside of the head is is air yeah or potentially packed with you know foam or something very very light very very light and the, and the weight is uh, in the brass end faces yeah and and quite often the end faces might be covered with a, a layer of plastic yeah and, and that's very good for the peripheral weighting and the peripheral weighting helps to avoid the mallet twisting it and so you, you hit it, it straight. a bigger moment of inertia yeah yeah um which yes as you say it always beveled that that was a pure bevel yeah that was not a pure strike so he's got a testy five yard in there yeah that's not not good for the nerves if he's got any oh well I overcome that <laughs> but uh, for a player at this level to hit a bevel on a croquet stroke that's that's not a good sign i'm looking at that as the opponent going oh, he might have some nerves here yes um so we did, going back to the mallets um the trade-off with the you know improved moment of inertia and all that physics side is they do have slightly worse stop shots yeah um but that is normally an acceptable trade-off for hitting the ball straighter. That's a good recovery. You didn't want another four or five yarder on your hoop two pioneer, <laughs> no. did you? And he's no. got the most perfect length takeoff you could wish on a on an absolutely dead on line. And he's got a little tap just yeah. to move blue in front of the hoop, and that will hopefully be a settler. Yes, and he, he'll probably rush back to black. So he did have a look at black just then. Yeah, just improve your hoop four pioneer. You see, that's lovely. He's only had to move yellow a couple of inches there just to get his right in front of the hoop. And again, just look at look at that top wrist and how far cocked back it is. I can't do that. I know a lot of people who just just can't get the wrist into that position. Well, I, when I started, I, I started with the standard grip. Yep. So it's a top hand with the knuckles forward. Yep. Um, the bottom hand palm on bottom hand palm on and then after a few years I lost confidence doing that so I, I changed to the Irish grip and the first time I tried it I found I got no backswing couldn't actually <laughs> the wrist went no yeah what are you doing um, but it yeah I've persevered with it and um, again, it, it was quite a nice grip to play with. 
you Lazy, probably but, uh, didn't have a lot of power. No, well, I never did have a lot of power. Right, I was so known for not having a lot of power. A lot of Irish grip players struggled with power. Now, Mark's what is he six foot four, six foot four that area? Mm. So he's, he's a big guy. Yeah, and he's got lots of, you know, it's pure muscle strength, and he, power is not a problem to him. Um, whereas many many Irish players have struggled with power over the time. They're generally very good touch players, uh, but don't have as good power as maybe a Solomon grip player or a standard grip player. Well, what about Egyptian golf croquet players? What sort of grips do they use? Because well, they're known mm. for having a lot of power. Well, they're 99% Irish grip. Right. And they generate power in the same way as modern golfers generate power. So they have a much lighter club head, mallet mm -hmm. head. So very, very light in comparison to the mallets you're seeing here. So how light do I go? Well, I'm sort of, I'm thinking about two pounds. Really? Um, so these mallets are about three pounds, aren't they? Or no, two, the two, two ten would be a normal mallet. Really? For a, okay. for a pidcock sort of a bit trimmer. Than that. Um, anyway. Mm -hmm. So two ten would be a standardish. Um, so yeah, they can go down two to two, two two, and the the heads are very light. So they don't have any technical advancements in the shafts. We have, you know, foam and light carbon fibre shafts. Mm -hmm. They have wooden shafts, so they're mm -hmm. comparatively heavy. But the head itself is very light. Sometimes they even bore holes through the head to to lighten it further. And the concept with that, very much like golf. And in the tennis, to some degree, where you're getting a lighter racket, is that you can move the head faster. Yes. Okay. And if the head's moving faster, the ball moves faster. Yeah. But it creates a much faster swing as well. This beautiful slow rhythm that I was mentioning yesterday of slow tempo becomes far more difficult and they become a lot more thrashy. And I always think the Egyptian players are less consistent at hitting the ball straight than people using these modern mallets with the good technology. So if you're looking for someone to hit a five yarder, I'd rather get an AC player with a modern mallet than an Egyptian player who will maybe eight times out of 10 smash it 40, 50, 60 yards away, yes. but might miss it or flick it occasionally. Yeah. So anyway, Back to Mark, who has clearly got this brake under control. And one well, of the again, things blue, blue slightly on the east side of hoop six rather than the west. Yeah. And yep. why do we care about that? Well, it's all about um, making shots easier, isn't it? It is. It's just a fraction easier if it's on the west side. Um, Mark will be sending red to two back. Yeah. And one of the reasons we do that is it's actually quite close to hoop five so you can send it out more accurately from here than maybe after hoop six sending it out from further away yeah. and he'll make sure he gets a good rush on black as well up to our side of the blue he's actually gone the other side of black and i thought he was going to go the far side um so again probably hit this on the yeah, he's just come our side of the peg, so he's okay again. But perfectly good two-back pioneer. Black will go to one back. And I think we'll see Mark make a diagonal spread. Well, yesterday he made um, the, the uh, more standard leave, or at least tried to. Was he break down at the time? Oh, that's a good question. It does make well, a difference. Well, he made a... Well, no, in game five, he wasn't break down. And that was a bad Mormon standard leave he made in the fifth game. He well, left the, the ball at hoop two the open. The ball at hoop two was not on the wire of a hoop. It was actually open. He didn't think it was, but Robbie said it was absolutely definitely open. Yeah. Um... So, okay, well, let's assume he's going to do the same again. That means he's going to leave black and blue up at hoop seven, rather than having one of them as a pivot. 
and you can you can leave either black or blue in the position at hoop two, uh, which is a, just a little bit um, southwest of hoop two, so you can't hit it from bebop. Yeah, it's hidden, hidden from bebop. And it looks like he's choosing to probably have black as that ball. No, no, he's he's just approached it and not bothered with black. This isn't tight to me. <laughs> I'm not. See, if I get to that position, I'm probably going to go back and have... Well, he's having a, he's having a new standard leave. He's having a there. new standard leave. Okay. <clears throat> the problem with doing this is, if you don't get a rush out of two-back, you end up playing a big role from two-back to three-back, because you've left a ball behind. Yes. And it, it is easy to get a rush out of two-back, don't get me wrong, but sometimes we don't do it. Would you... Be happy with blue there. Blue looks Blue's quite a long way in the lawn to me. And it's a bit far north. Well, I want it two yards further south. Well, it's the shortest shot at the moment, isn't and it? And he's going to remain the shortest shot if he makes the rest of the turn correct. Yeah. Um, and we've, we've already said that the lawn's easy. When you're walking onto the lawn about to take your lift shot on an easy lawn against a strong player, the first thought in your mind is, what is the shortest shot? Absolutely. Yep. Um, black at blue from B-Bulk is at the moment going to be the shortest shot and Mark isn't going to go and tidy that up that is him saying that's where it is yeah. I've decided that's good lovely croquet stroke sending yeah. out quite important to get a good shot there because he wants black in the sort of mirror image position he was trying to put blue in yes so northeast of hoop 9 hidden from A-Bulk yeah and he's going to be laying up northeast of hoop four isn't he yeah. on, the, on the boundary so he doesn't want uh, black to be able to hit either of his balls so black will be tight to the hoop so he's got a rush over just has to half ball it that avoids playing a big roll over and red will be put out as, as, as an escape ball that he can hit after positioning the black so as you said he's not going to move blue again how long do you think it is, Keith? Well, what's it going to be? 12 or 13? I was going to say I think it's 14. But okay. 14 well, is a really short shot at this level. You really want to be at least 16 as a minimum. Yeah. Um, I always rush that somewhere bad. He can't now place that directly into the position we mentioned, wild from a bulk. Yeah. So he's going to have to do it after the hoop. And if you get your touch wrong, you can leave it open. And you then you, you haven't got any time to correct it. So now has to just nudge the black ball. Probably only moving it, what, two and a half balls? Would you try and reach the wire? No. You would no. deliberately try and leave it short. Yeah, I'm going to pick a spot and try and hit that spot. And okay. you've probably got oh, at least a third of a ball error either side, and it's still okay. Yeah. But I, I don't want to be in this position to start with. Now that's not gone in the right place. No, it, it took a little dive to the right as we're looking at it, so that's to the west yeah. in croquet lawn terms. So we know blue is now going to be able to hit probably about half of that from a bulk. It's a lot smaller target than black at blue though, isn't it? Yeah, the danger being that if he lays up about where red is now, he might have half of black and the whole of red. Yeah. So Mark now needs to go to the end of A-Bulk and look at what the bad places are well, to lay up. Yeah, you say that, but I don't think he is. Not yet, anyway. And the other option is you just don't bother and you roll miles north, knowing that that isn't a double. Yeah. Um, OK, so he's off to the end of A-Bulk. So James is going to walk on the lawn uh, with some options. Black at blue. Yeah. Blue at black. I 
can be quite good though, from Mark's point of view. Yeah, getting your parents to think. Yeah. Is, all, is always good. Because there's always a chance doubt. you end up going, should I be doing the other thing? <laughs> Takes a good mental discipline to look at all the options, then choose one and then realise that actually that was the only option. Yeah, once I'd chosen an option, I was normally just so confident that I'd got it right. That yeah. I was able just to focus on the next shot. Um, but yeah, you are going to spend a little bit of time thinking about this. You're certainly going to walk to the end of A-Bulk and say, have I got 40%, 50%, 60% or 70% of this ball to shoot at? And if it's erring up towards 70%, it's probably the shortest shot. Well. And then you're going to say, is there anything in the background I can hit if I miss? I, what do you think? I, I don't think blue can hit the full face of black. I think it's probably think it's close to that. It's close to that. Okay. Um, but he's going far enough north here that red won't be in the background of the target. Yeah. Um, and I can't call what James is going to do. I think James likes shooting at interesting targets like black. I think okay. he finds it just naturally attractive. Yeah. And he might be thinking things like, if I hit the wire, I might bounce into third corner and it's a bit, bit defensive. You know, silly things like that. Um, whereas he knows if he shoots black at blue, that is just a pure, can I hit it straight shot. Yeah. Nothing good is going to happen if he misses. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm not going to be overly surprised if he plays blue at black. But equally, I could see him being really defensive and lifting black and taking the long lift shot well he's got to take a view hasn't he about how well mark's playing and we saw that bevel early we on we did yeah um has he played sufficiently dodgily to justify taking a really long lift shot when you've been offered multiple other options yeah, I mean, I'd... now that's pointing a long way south. I think James can make a double of that from close to in front of hoop one. So he's just put another three or four different options in his in his mind. That's quite a long shot, though. It's a double, though. Is it? Is it a double? I, Where do you think yeah, that's pointing? I is think it that's pointing, that's pointing it straight across. At at if not south of hoop one. Mm, do you? From here, that's oh. that's where it looks like. I'll be amazed if James doesn't wander over and look at that angle. Yeah. There's a lot for James to consider here. Well, he'll first of all check to see whether he can hit one of these balls as it lies. <coughs> so this is the <laughs> has blue got a target of black and red. And I don't no. think it has. He's got a bit of black. It's got him thinking though. Yeah. He clearly thinks it's, it's, it's an option. But I think he's going to go and look at some other options. Oh, oh is he oh, not going hello, hello. The natural next place would to go would have been to walk towards would, corner one yes. and look at the double. Um, I think the decision's been made. I'm not sure. I'm not sure it has. Oh, it has. oh, okay. So that's an indication of does black rush to hoop one? Yes. So if black's just in the front of the jaws black might not rush to hoop one very difficult to see from where we are so on these do you go red or yellow sorry what is that do you shoot is it red going, is he going at red or yellow definitely yeah. red Yeah, shot. Good shot. I was about to say, I'll go out and have a look at what the double target from corner one was, but I will never know now. No. But, um, but the reason I think you have to go at red there is it just makes your pickup so much easier. Um, and particularly in this case where 
Black might rush through hoop four. Um, you, if you miss yellow from corner three, you could rush black through hoop four to almost where blue had missed to. Yes. Um, yeah. So we've been told by Ian Vincent that black doesn't rush to hoop one. Right. So that's why he's taken the shot. Okay. I think so James. How is, how is James going to get a rush to hoop one then? He's going to ignore black and just play a good croquet stroke and rush yellow to hoop one. Okay. Um, I thought there was an argument for sending red in the lawn getting to the west of black and maybe bouncing black off a wire towards, towards yellow. Towards yellow, yeah. Um, but he's played a lovely croquet stroke. Yeah, and he's played a fantastic rush. Yeah. Um, so he should be away here. And this is now bringing us back to where we were 20 minutes ago, where we are saying, let's hope we get some lift shots hit. Yes. Particularly by James, because yeah. James is the one that has a multitude of options as to what he might do if he hits the well, lift. If he if he gets a nice rush here, which he has, then he's got a, a TPO winking at him, hasn't he? Yeah. So if he, if he wants it, yellow's going to be rush he's short of red. Black. He won't go near black. Can't rush it anywhere. Um, and this is a pretty natural way to pioneer hoop three and get a rush to hoop two. Yeah. So yellow is the four back ball for Mark. Yeah. And sending it to hoop three puts it straight at its hoop, ready to start the TPO. And a TPO is triple peel on the opponent. So potentially peeling yellow through its last three hoops and pegging it out. Now, to do you think he, he had a go at the peel? I think he the, definitely yes, had a go yes. at the peel there. Uh, I think I, I would do the same. Why not? This Why is not? a weak crush. That's not quite as good as he would have hoped. He'll probably send red quite deep here and run it off the boundary yeah. with, with power. And then after the TPO, we'd normally see a two ball against one ball game. So we'd normally see black and blue against red. Again, you never quite know with James. Because the other option is you can peg two balls out and we might just have a straightforward black v red. 1v1 yeah. game yeah which would be fascinating yes but i don't think he'll be doing that i think he'll be trying to put the extra pressure on mark um well i had a game earlier in the tournament a single game in the the swiss part of the uh, tournament before the knockout and james did a tpo and did peg two balls out now i don't actually know what the other clips before at the time but um, Mark ended up winning that one right okay so that'll that'll probably indicate you'll be leaving three balls on and this is almost the perfect place to approach from yeah I think it's pretty clear he's going for the TPO now that was a bit needless I would have said just makes this peel more difficult. What do you think? I think he'll play it with a straight stop shot. Okay. And no, he isn't. He's playing with pull. On a TPO, I like playing with straight stop shots. Sure. That, that one. And it, he's got a better rush than he would have done now. But I don't think he needed a particularly good rush. He could have just had something pointing middle of the boundary, peg high, and it would have been good enough. Um, so almost sort of four yards away from where he has rushed it to. Yeah. And he, he wouldn't have compromised the peel by, because he played it at an angle, he had what we call to adjust for pull. Because yeah. as you hit across the ball, the yellow will move towards the direction that the mallet's striking. Whereas yes. if you're striking towards the hoop, the yellow just goes towards the hoop. It's something you have to allow for on split croquet it is. strokes, isn't it? It is. But he's, he, he's nearly he's nearly got in another situation at hoop four, but it's obvious this time that he can just place blue on the playing side of black. He did have a look to check though. So he'd be wanting to um, rush black back towards corner three, wouldn't he? He will. Um, I think he may be able to do that because he's looking at placing his ball at quite an angle 
So to get, he wants to get black to the east and probably hold his ball in the jaws. In the jaws. Ooh. If that's through, he yeah, needs calling a referee. Again, anything that your opponent might be upset about later on, saying, hold on, I thought that ball might have gone through. And James wants it not to be through. And his opponent wants it to be through. Oh, that didn't take long. No, but it's polite, isn't it? It is. And yes. we're in an Open Championship final. And I think I mentioned yesterday, you don't want to walk off the lawn having just won the Opens and the spectator come up to you and say, are you sure that ball was in the right <laughs> place? Um, so that's all been done nicely. He's rushed black up. Um, and He's again, not rushed it as far as he rushed the equivalent ball in the previous triple peel, has he? Correct. So he's a bit shorter space here, I think. And he's got a rush pointing at hoop three. So not perfect. No. Could rush it either side. I'd rush it to our side. Yeah. The yeah. east, which is what he's done. And the reason that's our preferred choice is because red's that side of the lawn. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and if red had been the other side of the lawn, we might have rushed it back down to hoop one again. Yeah. But actually playing the shot from here is very easy. Nothing should be going wrong. You don't have to make sure you definitely get past the ball. It's just, you're going to be in an okay position. So the peely is yellow, and that's gone up to hoop six, ready to be peeled through penultimate, hoop 11. And he's got a beautiful rush on red. He has. The only thing you will have to remember at hoop six is which ball is peeling. Correct. Naturally, we'd always be peeling our partner ball. Usually, yeah. It would be a very bad error to make, but... Um, Quite amusing. Because he, oh, well. Knowing James, he could still afford to peel black yeah. through Penalt <laughs> and still easily finish his TPO. Yes. I don't think he'll make that mistake, though. Okay, so this time red has gone north of one back, which it didn't do the previous turn. So he does need a rush back to the north boundary on black yeah. after the peel. Yeah. Again, you don't want to rush yellow dead straight. We've been mentioning how good it is to approach from dead straight. But here you've got to get the hoop out of the way to be able to get yellow directly behind it. We don't want to have to peel yellow through hoop six ever. So you don't fancy doing that? No. 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 You, you look uh, pretty silly when yellow sticks in the jaws, don't you? Yeah. Now how far would you try and peel the yellow here, Keith? Well, so I'd be using a stop shot, so yellow goes as, as far as it goes. I like that. You're happy with that? Yeah, in fact I'm very happy with that, provided I can play this rush. Right, it is important to get this off the north boundary, yeah. give yourself the room, and that's enough room for it's James. enough room for just, James. Just, yeah. I think. You think just? Yeah, I think um, he'll be fine. So again, I think, you know, in the, from this position, James will be looking to get black sufficiently far south that he can peel yellow going to two back. Well, and, and this time he has got yellow quite close to Rover, hasn't he? Yeah. It's a pretty good black. It's a bit, well... Mm. Trying to get a rush out of the hoop towards the yellow ball. Um, needs a good hoop shot to achieve that here. Well, that's a good hoop shot. Very good. And again, you, you have to admire the fluency. Yes. Now this to me looks as though he definitely hasn't got enough room to Oh, I think we need, to need back. another couple hundred on this thing. <laughs> I need to move up to my... I'm hoping to be a thousand up by the well, end of this. Well, you turn. see, he hasn't got that to three back. I think he'll be happy with that. That's just a nice ball to peel Rover to if he doesn't yeah, get it now. I think I'm 
getting some of my money back now. Well, here, I'm not sure I'm taking on the peel. Well, why would you? If you if, if because of where black is, if black was two feet from the hoop, yeah, you've got enough angle to to do it. And he's just plonked that on a wire. And that's sort of where you don't want it. No. So if you don't get a rush out of two back now, it's going to become very difficult. And if you do get a rush out of two back, there's still an element of difficulty. Absolutely, because he, he wants to peel yellow. He does, well, he certainly doesn't want to be left with peeling yellow as he's making Rover. No. But perhaps we ought to um, say, after he's peeled yellow through Rover, one of the things James often does um, is peel red through hoop one. Yes. Um, so if he does get the peel, perhaps we might see him rush red over to hoop one and leave it there. And we can talk to the viewers about why he's doing that once we've got this Rover peel out of the way. That's a super shot. It's a it? pretty good shot, that. He's got probably a quarter of a ball to hit at two feet. Lovely. Yeah. Excellent Very shot. Very good. And so. he's got a good black, good black at four back. So he hasn't got the, quite the same issues that he had in the, the previous game. No. Um, so yellow's going to hopefully go through here. Yeah. And get a rush on red three back. And after that, we mentioned he may try and peel red through hoop one. And, w and when would he do that? I I'm guessing he would do it on his way to Grover. Well, that's the natural way, but knowing James, I think he's going to try and rush red over in front of hoop one after three back and right. have a go early. Okay. Uh, and explain to the viewers, Keith, why having peeled yellow through its last three hoops and he's going to okay. peg it out, why bother giving red a point? Well... It might sound as though you'll you make it easier, but actually, to an extent, you, you make it more difficult because Mark will only have the red ball. And if he's still for hoop one, or indeed, if he's for, say, another odd number two, like hoop three, he might get a, the, the opportunity to get his ball in front of the hoop and have the two opponent balls somewhere uh, the other side of that hoop so not close to each other uh, and not not with an easy shot on his ball potentially but it's, wired from his ball well one of them potentially wired yes certainly um, and that would be what we call a squeeze and, and the, the logic of that is that James would be able to move one of his balls um, and put it in a corner say well out of the way but Mark would then be able to run the hoop and use the ball that James has not moved yeah if however you were for an even number hoop such as hoop two or hoop four uh, that option isn't available to Mark yeah so although and you can see from the, where James has put red that he certainly is planning to peel red through hoop one at some point um, although he's given Mark an extra point it actually puts James in a, in a better position. So a tactically stronger position. Yes. Slightly poor croquet stroke there. Yeah, he's not got the rush on black that he would have wanted. Another approach from the side. Again, this is further away than he was last time. Just slightly. Almost, oh, right, this time he's... What's he doing here? And for those people who got to watch that shot straight on, you would have seen he aimed the mallet down the line he was going to hit it, and then he hit it down that line, yeah. and the mallet stayed on that line. Yes. And I've been talking to a lot of people recently about their mallet pointing where the ball ends up going after the croquet stroke. Okay. And if you're going to do that and basically not swing in a straight line from the start to the finish of the swing, you're going to end up with an inconsistency yeah. in your direction of where the striker's ball goes. Yeah. So I, I really want to encourage everyone to 
line up their croquet strokes, pick that half point and then commit to that half point. And there's no point in the mallet sort of twisting and pointing where the mallet goes to, where the ball goes to. The ball will get there naturally. Your mallet doesn't have to follow it. No. Um, so lovely to, to watch that. And he, again, he played a wide angle croquet stroke. And yes. He just let the mallet do the work. He didn't have to do anything about hitting the ball. He just had to let the mallet do the work and the balls just magically moved apart. Uh, very nice to watch, uh, allowing the angle to help you rather than having to play rolls all the time. Um, so so yellow, yellow's going to the pack because ye yellow's been peeled through all its hoops. So he just needs to remember that he's got to peg it out. So he's got that at the peg ready. Now, is he trying to rush peel yeah, here? Yeah, he's definitely rush peeling here. Got to play a decent shot. Can't afford to get this badly wrong. Just about good enough. That's fine. And now we can send that behind Rover. Um, basically, just in case anything goes wrong at Rover and he needs to run it by five yards. Um, he could just get a rush on black to a corner directly. And which corners is he looking at here? Right, well, again, he, he, he will be... Right, so we need to explain, don't we, that... Um, James this turn has made one back and four back and he's done it before his partner ball has conceded any lifts so as well as having the option of a lift Mark will have the option of taking croquet straight away from that, one of James's balls that's called a contact it's called a contact yes so he so can lift he, his ball and actually place it straight away as though you had rocated it yeah so quite a big advantage it, it is a big advantage so to defend against that James is going to leave uh, his two balls well away from Mark's hoop which is now hoop two so hoop four corner four is obviously the furthest you can get away from it yeah and you'll probably put his other ball in either one or three won't he I'm expecting corner three okay um because Mark, <coughs> Mark can, uh, in principle at least, try and try and get a break, can't he? Yeah. I mean, if it, say the balls were in corners three and four, he could take croquet in corner four. Yep. He could do a big roll at the lawn, sending black to hoop three. Yep. Hit uh, blue in corner three. Yep. Uh, and then do a big roll across lawn to try and get position at hoop two yep. and if that works and he runs hoop two and can roque blue again then uh, he would get a three ball break and it should be all over and it and you yeah at but this level it should be all over they are very very big shots they're to very play. big croquet strokes um, things can go wrong um, but it is a chance yeah. and equally if if the balls are in corners one and four um, I think people tend to avoid that because you can play a, a massive square split shot from corner four, yep. getting black similarly up to hoop three. three, hit the blue, hopefully hit blue in corner one, and then you're actually doing a big, a big roll up the lawn, but you are coming up the line of hoop two. So even if you're five yards short, you've still got to go at hoop two. Yeah. Which, yeah. So this is why corner three is preferred. Yeah. The, the downside of having the balls this way round, uh, which I don't think we've mentioned, is on all of those um, suggested lines of play, and I think we're going to see Mark do the first one you mentioned, of take yeah. croquet from black, roll black to hoop three, try and hit blue, roll up to hoop two, is that if Mark then fails hoop two, he's failed it off the peg ball. Yes. So he's not giving a finishing turn away. He yeah. knows he's going to get another shot. Yeah. So all of these lines of play have an element of safety involved with Mark. So even here, if the roll went wrong and red went off the lawn, or the roll was short and he missed blue, yeah. he's going to get another shot. Yeah. It's a fantastic croquet stroke. That is. Just yeah, super, very good. super. Yeah. Kept black inside that rectangle we mentioned. It did, yeah. Got a very short roquet. That's the key thing, isn't it? He's got an easy roquet on blue. 
much. He tried didn't, to pretend that he was going to mess. Yeah, didn't didn't look as confident as that. Um, yes, it's interesting. I once had a game with against the uh, the great Robert Fulford, um, and he was he TPO'd me and he peeled me my other ball through hoop one. Then went to great lengths to get a, a dolly rush on his hoop one ball into corner three. Correct. And, well, that is the right play. But you've got to be really good to do it. You've got to be very good to do it. This looks good. This and looks I asked good. him afterwards, why, why, is he do, why, is, why oh. did you do that? Oh. It's a round of applause from the crowd. It's fractionally, fractionally long. I think this is possibly unrunnable. I think this is definitely runnable. You think it's definitely, definitely runnable? Definitely runnable. It's not easy. That looks difficult to me. So... One of the things we look at is, where is he, is he standing in regards to the end of B bolt? And to me, he's standing inside the end of B bolt, which makes it under 45 degrees. So I think it's a 40 degree hoop, and he's going to smash this. Yeah, okay. And one of the things I'm going to immediately point out is there's a chance he can fail this to black if he goes hard. Oh, that might have bounced back wired from blue. Well, it's bounced back in a worse position from the point of view of trying to run it I think that's not as important I think the important thing is to get another shot well true um, if blue can't hit red then it's I think very blue, difficult blue will James. go blue will just go to a corner though sure but then you can just hit black and approach hoop two off blue again yeah okay so there's nothing wrong at all with red shooting at black. No, it's interesting. He immediately went to corner one. It's his Either corner. But from the point of view of defending against Mark yes. hitting black and yeah. then having a go at hoop two, you'd, you'd pick corner four, wouldn't you? You would pick corner four. I think one of the things it might say, which would surprise me, is if red shoots at black, I'm going to pick you off and finish. Ah, okay. Now Mark's right. looking at his hoop, which still looks angled, about the same angle as he had before. Well, I, I think it might be slightly worse. But it's only 15 inches away. True. Um, the idea, I guess, might be that if he runs it, he can either hit black and try and two ball break round, or if he runs it by far enough, he's got the choice of shooting at blue for a laid finish. Blue's the hoop one ball. Yeah. Though. No, blue's the peg ball. Oh, sorry, blue's the peg ball. Beg your pardon, of course it is. So if he runs this by about two yards, oh, yeah. he might be able to hit blue in corner one. Oh, good, yeah. And that okay. hoop wobbled a bit, didn't it? Yeah. So it shows that they don't stand up very long once they've been thrashed at once. Yeah. But this is a nice positive line of play. He can afford to take this shot knowing it's the peg ball. Yes. If he hits, he'll probably win. And if he loses, James has got to play... An interesting role, making sure blue doesn't go into the peg. Well, let's going not get ahead of ourselves. Let's see how this goes. That looks Close. like he's no. Missed. He's walked to three, three yeah. put his clip there. Yeah. But in many ways, you could view it as a positive turn for Mark because he's got into an odd hoop. Yes. So the squeeze that you mentioned earlier yeah. might become available as the game progresses. Potentially, yeah. And a squeeze for hoop three is more powerful than a squeeze for hoop one. Oh, go on. Because if you run hoop one and hit a ball near hoop two, you've got two ball through two, three, and four, which are all a long way away from each other. Okay. Whereas if you run hoop three and hit a ball near corner four, once you've made hoop four, you've got the old short distance, four to five, five to six, six to seven, by which time you're coming around to the third ball and you can yeah. pick that up. Indeed, yeah. So okay. it's actually easier <clears throat> to finish from hoop three due to those short distances in the middle, rather than one having to make two, then all the way to three, then all the way to four, before you get the easy step strip. So, I did mention the right, key well, thing is blue misses the peg. Yes. Oh, he's bevelled it into the hoop, joining red up with black, giving red a rush to hoop three. Well, that's um, that's a yes, that's an absolute disaster. 
Now, this is quite a fascinating decision because blue might be able to go through hoop one to the north boundary, but that is exactly where red's rush is pointing. Yeah. So it can't go there. It might not be able to get fully back to corner one. Well, but would you ever consider putting it in the draws of hoop one? Well, <laughs> no, I don't think I would. I don't think I would. You can't go up there. That's where Red's rush is pointing. You have to go back to corner one. Yeah. Or as near as you can get, yeah. I think. And the reason we both hate putting it in the hoop one is it, it initially looked quite good because if you put it in the drawers of hoop one, it doesn't rush to hoop four or hoop five yeah. or hoop six. Yeah. But if something goes wrong with this little two ball break that Mark's going to play, he can almost just lag to it. Yeah. Saying, well, Either you've got to move that ball, or I've got a three yarder at it, or I'm going to have a maybe 15 yarder at the other ball that's floating around the lawn. So both of them are still in play. Yeah. Um, so I think James well, is right. It, or I, I was actually thinking it's it's still a potential pioneer for hoop five, and and hoop seven and hoop eight. Yeah. So you know, there's lots of good reasons for not leaving it there. He is going. A l oh, is he trying to? He's trying to bounce it off the wire to corner one. Okay. This is risky. Yeah. It's a really risky shot. Most people wouldn't even think of it, though, would they? No. That's in lawn. That's awful. That yeah. ball had to go off the lawn. Yeah. Okay. Well, so this is a big chance. This, he should finish from here. Well, he's. This this stroke, he's not pointing directly at hoop three, is he? So, mm. okay, he's so hit that pretty centrally. Wide angle croquet stroke, yeah. making sure you get a rush to corner one. Yeah. If you get a rush to hoop four, it's not a disaster. No, no, not at all. But any player who plays this and black finishes east of the line of three and four, <laughs> I despair. And you see it all the time, don't you? You do see it all the time. And one of the reasons you see it is... I, I well, haven't well, seen Black very far there. That's not far enough. There are two reasons you, you see it go east. One is that people don't think about what they're doing. Uh, and the other one is that they forget about the pull. Oh, what oh. a shot. What a shot. Just got that nice amount of wire to hold for... This is pointing about nine yards north of corner one. Yeah, this, this could be. And he's cut it as well. Mr. Peg, Mr. Mr. Peg. Peg. That's fine. That's good. And that sort of shot, I think Mark's confidence is a little bit higher than it might have been a year ago because he's played a bit more GC. Okay. And, and these three and four yarders that we might look at as hit-ins yeah. suddenly become rushes. Yeah. So... He's looked more confident, generally, at longer hoops and longer rokays. Um, and again, for anyone just wanting to sharpen their AC game, um, play a bit of GC. You'll suddenly find shots that you thought were rokays turn into rushes. So, just an easy takeoff. No need to do anything with the black. All his focus is on getting a dolly rush to hoop four. Yeah, so this, at this stage, you know, thinking, I've got, just got to make four. Yeah. And then it's game over. So it's a cut rush, but it's yeah. a very short cut rush. Yeah. I prefer having this than a longer, slightly straighter Ooh. one. Okay. Yeah. Most it's, of the way. Yeah, not bad. Went quite close to black. <coughs> Again, very similar to where he approached hoop three from and and you would punt i'll be definitely punting blue somewhere deep and running the hoop hard and running the hoop hard yeah and i would to be honest i'd be thinking as long as i can hit blue That's after right. running the hoop yeah i can play the croquet stroke yeah. blanks i'm not I'm not stressing about getting a rush on blue west yeah. Now red's very, uh, very good there, all the way through to the boundary. And uh, sometimes it just takes that little bit of um, stress out of you as well, hitting a ball hard. <laughs> you can just let your shoulders down and just... So they tell me, yeah. Chris, so they tell me. It's not my natural game, but so they tell me. 
Yeah, no, he's backing himself to be able to play this croquet straight and get a rush on black and pioneer hoop six. Yeah, and again, anywhere... And this is his game. Correct, this is an easy croquet. We would both regard this as straightforward. We would always have red travelling south of black. This one does not need the bevel no. to be employed. <laughs> <laughs> does it? Indeed. Um, this is absolutely the one time you want a clean hit. And once you've got it though, that really should be game over. Has he got it? Has he got the pace? Looks good. Oh, eyes hit the pike. Well, so, red's perfect. Red is fabulous. Yeah. Um, and blue is adequate. It he is. didn't have the angle to send it to hoop six and get behind. Um, no, blue. that would have been going um, quite a bit west, wouldn't it? Um, but he's done the right thing and he's focused on the striker's ball and he said, look, blue somewhere at the lawn yeah. is still winning. If it had glued on the south southern side well, of the that peg, would have been harsh. It would have been it? very unlucky. Yeah. But he's rushed to within a couple of feet of hoop five. This is bread and butter. Um, the one back pioneer again on a three ball break should be sent south. Yeah. We don't want a ball at one back. We want to send it a little bit south and just give yourself that room if you don't get a good rush out of hoop six that you can still get a two back pioneer and you're sending the two back pioneer from closer to two back which yeah. is another advantage yeah but you've just got that sort of i was picking up the break i'm now picking it up again feeling That's gone further north than I think it should be. You haven't got a good it hoop has. six pan here, yeah, yeah. so you're not guaranteed to get a rush out of it. He's played a lovely rush to it. That's yeah, pretty much straight in front, giving him plenty of room to put blue north and get a rush to the north boundary. But again, I've seen people play this shot and then grovel through the hoop by two feet and have to hit black instead of blue. Mm, that is a lovely approach. He's, he's in full control now. Very, very nice. Yeah. It should just be a matter of keeping his concentration yep. now. So, you am going to ask you a question. Um, Mark failed hoop two, and James fairly quickly played to corner one, yeah. which you questioned as, was it right? I did. Should he have gone and looked at corner one as to how difficult the croquet stroke might be if Mark ran the hoop and missed him? Because he had to miss the peg and he had to miss hoop one. Yes, that's and true. And there was a quite a good gap going to the red ball, but clearly it wasn't big enough. Was that's this okay. That's good. It's good blue. Yep, no, red's fine. So should he have gone down and had a look and said, I might have to play this in a... In a well, would you even need to have a look? I mean, yes, you could go and have a look. But the... Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? Because Mark could potentially have run the hoop and shot at blue in corner four. And certainly the croquet stroke from there is a, would have been a lot easier. Yep. Yep. A little bit further away, corner four. Um... So other options for blue would have been on the south boundary in front of hoop one. So you couldn't shoot it after running hoop two. But then if you hit black, it's more easy to attack that ball than if it were in corner one. Yeah. Um, so not an easy choice. Uh, I, I don't think I'm saying James is wrong to go to corner one. No. Uh, it's probably more he just played a really <coughs> bad croquet stroke. Yeah. And Mark's played a nice turn. What it goes to show though is, is that the, the TPO doesn't win you the game. No. Does it? No, you've got to be a strong croquet player afterwards. Yeah. And all the stats that they produce show the people who win the most TPO games are the best players in the world yeah. because they can play the peg down ending right. as well. Strange that, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's, um, it's good to know. It is good, to, good know to know because I, I think, well, certainly when I started playing, there was a feeling that if you were left with just one ball, to play with you're in a really weak position and provided the two balls didn't do anything horrendously bad uh, they would win yep 
um, but as I think players have got better and they've got more more aware as well of what, of what the, the possibilities are and the standard of shooting and hoop running is yes, better yes yes all of that um, down to better mallets yeah yeah better balls yep. um, now we see even things up quite considerably mm, I think that's okay I think that's okay. Yeah. Should be able to get a rush out of three back. Every time you don't get a rush on a three ball break, you just end up playing a bigger croquet stroke and the striker's ball has to move. Instead of moving three to four yards, it yeah. has to move 12 to 13 yards. Yeah. And it just. And if it needs to move those 12 and 13 yards to actually get a good rush on another ball, yeah. as it will do or would do here. Um, it just puts the break at risk. Yep. That's a bit, a bit far. You can chip it a bit further west to put the rush line, to improve the rush line. Yes. Um, but you can't rush it sort of north of the peg, I don't think. Oh, maybe you can. Well. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, that's not bad actually, yeah. is it? Yeah, that's okay. <clears throat> we've been mentioning some of the things that these balls make more difficult we should probably also mention that this next shot they make make a lot easier so this sort of pass roll sending black to penult and blue to get a rush on red is much easier with these balls it is as long as you remember that it's much easier short yeah you see these, these Red was fine, maybe a tad mm. short. Both, both, both not good. I'm, um, I'm wanting that yeah. back. You're wanting it back, okay. Well, you've got high standards, Chris. Uh, I'm going to remind you that I watched you win the men's championship in 2005, and there was a three ball ending. Um, and your opponent started his three ball break had a three ball break it just started to unravel and and it eventually broke down around six or one back and you played a couple of nice croquet strokes and a rush and made hoot one and I just thought well this game's over and it was and the, the break never looked like being in trouble and um. To be fair, that's due to 20 years of breaking down on bad <laughs> breaks. You eventually learn that you need to do it, do it better, um, or else you don't win championships. No. Um, but yeah, but yeah, Mark's got lovely croquet strokes. James has got lovely croquet strokes. These are both players with, um, well, Mark certainly over 40 years experience. Yes. And James coming <clears throat> up to that level. Um, James started as a child, really. Which is yes, probably... he used to he used to potter around at this club. His his father Peter was a was a member. Peter Deeth being long time treasurer of the Croquet Association. Yeah, I mean, one of the reasons he plays with this extraordinary long mallet. It's not just the fact he's tall. It's that from the first time he picked up a mallet, it was almost as tall as he was. <laughs> yes. So he sort of, you know, always had a massive mallet. Um. <clears throat> so Mark here actually has a, a slight advantage over James in that he just needs to make Rover and, and peg out Red. Yeah. Doesn't have to worry about pegging out Partner as well. Now I said at the start of turn Mark should finish and you quite rightly highlighted that actually it wasn't an easy finish. Um, but it's nice to see him be able to just come and switch on 
and produce that level of perform. Well, absolutely. I think um, Team Avery will be very happy with how yeah. this turn's gone. Yeah. Uh, very good for the neutrals, game all. Uh, absolutely, yeah. This is, um, I think, probably only the second All England final for about 13 years. There We've was one in 2018. Mormon Birch. Mormon Birch. And I don't yeah. think there's been another one since 2009. Right. Yes, and, and okay. Then arguably that wasn't one because I didn't turn up. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, really nice to see the English players starting to improve. Uh, these are both people who've been playing some donkey's years, but they are still both getting better, I believe. Yes, well, I um, think Ma Mark's uh, now got a, a trimmer. Yeah, Mark. absolutely. Um, that just gives him bit more confidence with his single ball strokes yeah and he still managed to retain his his excellent croquet strokes um, obviously both these players members of the winning England Robertson Shield team yes, in November uh, wearing their shirts from um, that event so first English win since 2010 yeah. when you played I did play in 2010 Yes. So, um, been a sort of barren period for England, really. Um, not much success in many World Championships. Stephen won the 2016 AC Worlds. He uh, did, you yes. Know, um, what was he then, 62? 62, 63, that sort of age. Yeah, um, very good achievement. A, a, a phenomenal achievement. Um, and the fact that he's still playing now, I think he's 70 later this year. Yes. Um, uh, still playing to an enormously high standard at both codes of the game. Yeah. Um, and yeah, good for you know the youngsters coming through. We've seen Aston Wade here this week. Um, what I think you need to to you need a good group of youngsters coming through, but you also need role models. You do for them. You do. And uh, yeah, one of the things I was meaning to say in this commentary is uh, we are have a final uh, between two of the uh, most well-liked players in the game. Absolutely, um, yes. Everyone yes. loves James because he just plays the game. He just you know, doesn't worry, he just gets on with it. He does all sorts of entertaining things yeah. when he's playing in, you know... Uh, main events, never mind consolation events. Well, but... I've seen James do an octuple peel. Yeah. And he did it on the front lawn at Cheltenham. Around about tea time, loved it. Loved it. Yeah. Loved it. Big crowd, yeah. and he finished with a, a straight six tuple. Would you believe? Wonderful. Just, just great to watch. And I'm certainly someone who you could criticise for taking the game too seriously. Right. Um, and James, you certainly would never say that. He just plays for his enjoyment, and yeah, uh, you, you certainly could never criticise that. And he doesn't care about his grade. No, nope. like a lot of people do. Nope. No. Nope. Just... Um, whereas Mark, one of the easiest guys to get on with, you could wish. The, the, the best teams I've had have had, you know, people like Mark Avery and Toby Garrison, and you know, people yeah. who you can just talk to anyone, just relaxed. You're immediately put at ease when you talk to them. Lovely guys. Um, so yeah, fantastic to have them in the final. Uh, the fact that they're both beautiful, fluent, fast players, and uh, just a delight to comment on. Now, how long do you think this break is going to be? Well, it could be a lunch break. Have or you any idea what be... the time is? I don't, actually. We'll just have a... Well, just it's only past 10 12. past 12, so... So, lunch is normally 12.30. Right. Um, James is still standing near the clubhouse. So it might just be a quick comfort break before the third. Um, yeah, I think they're coming back out again. Here we go, mallets in hand, and it's James's toss, isn't it? We can expect we a think super so. shot. Yes, yeah, James's toss. So There's no reason not to have a super shot. Will here. we have another super shot? I would expect. 
Uh, again, one of the things you mentioned is potentially a tactical error yesterday from Ridge. Didn't have his super shots. James went around I was surprised by turn. that. I was surprised that Reg didn't play super shot. I didn't actually get the chance to ask him why he didn't. I'm guessing because he wasn't shooting very well. Did Robbie use super shots? Robbie... He certainly didn't in the fifth game, did he? Because Mark was using his corner four reply. Yeah, yeah, Robbie went eight yards to nine yards north of corner four first game. Right. And Mark went north the corner. And interestingly, in the fifth game, Robbie changed and he played what we might normally call an anti-duffer. Right. So a ball eight, nine, ten yards north of the corner, corner four, and a couple of yards in lawn. Did he? Right. And uh, rather than being an anti-duffer, I think it was an anti just north of corner four ball. Because Mark went just north the corner. He did, four, yes. And I think Robbie's plan was hit that and, and go round. And go round. Yeah. Whereas he missed it. Yeah. And Mark went round for yeah. the turn. Yeah. And the key, you know, you, Robbie just didn't shoot anywhere near as well, really, throughout the knockout as he had been doing um, with Reggie's mallet and the uh, golf croquet. So Mark's dribbling at this and he's missed again. Yeah. Okay. This time he's hit the peg and that'll be a perfect double from anywhere on a bolt. Well, from uh, somewhere. Two places. Two places. Two places on eight ball. That will be a perfect double for. Probably about in front of hoop one, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, whether James goes softly, mid-pace or hard, is just a personal preference here. The lawn's not hilly enough to justify needing to shoot hard. He just wants to hit yeah. straight yeah. at whatever pace that is going to be. You're not desperate to rush red off the north boundary either. No, you're not. Um, no. So I think we'll see a mid pace. He won't mind it going to bulk if he misses. No. Hmm? That's very, very gentle. He's is missed it? That one. Missed everything. No, he's missed everything. So mm. you have got a triple target, potentially from B bulk, potentially from A bulk. You, you, unless you have a perfect target here, you have to wander to B-Bolt to look at what the options are. Your ideal world is to have the front ball, blue, in the middle, and red and black either side, okay. isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Or, looking at it the other way, to have the front ball from B-Bolt, black, in the middle, yeah. and blue and red either side. Yeah. So, what's he doing? This, what's this? This doesn't look. Yeah, I think it's another two feet that way to get a double, isn't it? You'd think so. That's where James yeah. went from, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and he hasn't gone to B bulk. This isn't a double. Is it? Well, you have to make a double, don't you? You, you have, have to. You have to make a double, yeah. and this isn't a double. Well, it doesn't look like it is, but maybe we've just got a dodgy angle. But anyway, we'll never know again. We'll never know again. No. I wanted that to miss by nothing on the left, <laughs> and see what happened. Uh, we've probably just got a bad angle here. Yeah. Let's let's give Mark credit for understanding he needs a double. Um, so. From again the neutrals point of view this is the person we want to go around first because if james does hit yeah we've got all these options again yeah and the tpo didn't work might you do another tpo well he may just think well it didn't work because of some random act of god that couldn't possibly happen again but he might then forget that actually Mark almost finished off the contact. Yep. Yep. A lovely example of the stop shot there. You saw the mallet being grounded as it went through. That's not a great rush. No. Turned into a lovely day, about 23 degrees. Plenty of sunshine. No sign of rain at the moment. No. 
and this is the shot to pick up the brake. Yeah, this is the one that really matters. Um, it's pretty good. It's not bad. Again, I might have been tempted to send red further. Just so I don't have that happen. I always like, if I've got a longer approach, I do like to send the reception ball deeper on those, on the odd number hoops. Partly because I can hit the hoop shot harder. Yep. Which I feel gives me, I mean, deeper means I've got more chance of getting a forward rush. Yep. And also, if I don't get the forward rush, I'm, actually, I'm further up, I'm nearer the, the balls that I'm going to. So a shorter croquet stroke following. Yeah, potentially. Hope, well, potentially. I mean, sometimes, you know, you absolutely sail through and you end up having to hit black, but, yep. you know, so be it. Well, clearly Mark doesn't mind having Pioneers very close to hoops. Now he'll be looking to rush back after hoop two and send blue is a better, a black is a better hoop four Pioneer. Oh sure, yeah. And if he, and then he'll be rushing red pretty close to blue or somewhere where he doesn't need to move yellow very far. Yeah, I suppose things to look for in this break is he's already shown a, a likelihood to make an MSL. If, yeah. he, if he doesn't get that ball on hoop two, is he going to leave as sloppy a ball as he did in that previous game? Well, yeah. And so on lawn seven, we've got the uh, final of the plate, which is uh, between Kevin Beard from Australia and Samir Patel from England. Um, and that's a best of three. So we'll, we'll get you a score update at some stage later on today in that. I think Kevin's just gone round and made a nice new standard leave. So well done to him. Now I've just noticed, Chris, that um, we've got a couple of spectators have turned up. Nigel and Amanda Hames Keward, who I believe are members at Cheltenham now. James is using Nigel's mallet at the oh, moment. Oh, fantastic. That's great. So, yeah. And just sitting along from them are Richard and Michelle White, and Richard is the person who's mended James's old mallet. And Fine. James has already said he's intending to use his replacement, I know, not his mended mallet, yeah. um, at the Worlds. So right. he's going to stick with this until after the Worlds. I think that's a good decision. Um, he seems very comfortable with it now. Yeah, he seems to be playing very nicely with it. So Mark just rushing red back to the north boundary so he can send it all the way back. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't get the chance to send black to four. Just over rushed it. I think Nottingham have shown that, um, you know, with just a little bit of nice weather, these lawns would have been really very, very pleasant to play on, uh, with some challenging patches, firm hoops, and um, that it's a genuine um, good location to hold an Open Championship. Uh, it's nice to have it rotating around the country. Um, yes, it's the first time it's been at Nottingham. Uh, looking back at the records, and it was held at Roehampton for many years and then it moved to Hurlingham and it's only in recent years that we've sort of swapped between places like Hurlingham, um, Roehampton, um, sorry Surbiton and Cheltenham. Yes. And Has I it think ever been to Budley Salterton? I'm not sure the Open Or has. Southwick? I don't think it has. No. Southwick holds the GC Opens doesn't it? It does. Is that a permanent fixture there? It is a permanent fixture. You do sort of need 10 lawns, so there aren't many venues that can hold that. Right. Um, and um, Southwick have done a fabulous job over the last, um, you know, five or six years, relaying their lawns now much better 
um, and they've really bid for a whole host of world championships helped us out after covid when new zealand couldn't host yeah and held a couple of very very well managed tournaments um gc worlds back to back well they're holding uh, the qualifier for the association croquet world championship starting tomorrow starting tomorrow that's got 24 people in it i think playing for five places it's five places is five it? at the okay. moment mm-hmm. um so good luck to everyone having a go there i hope you have an enjoyable event um and look forward to seeing some of you at uh, the worlds well at least five at least five yeah uh, we've got some uh, players over from New Zealand having a go there. So, Are they? Oh, that's good. Um, I know um, Barbara Murray's there. Oh, yeah. Um, Bonnie Johnston and her husband, Kerry, I think, are both playing. Um, and Graham Fisher as well. So, yeah, really great to see them come over. And I know Ewan Burridge was a late entry to yeah. the qualifiers, one of your top GC boys isn't he Chris he is very talented player and uh, really good to see him playing a bit of AC um, I say he's bound to help both forms of the game um, so his positional plays become better over the past 12 months and um, certainly AC helps you focus on the little things it's not yes. all about playing big shots well I, I try and, and try and tell people that I coach that uh, attention to detail is important. Yeah, doing the easy things well. Yes. Um, I used to try and tell myself that, okay, if I'm playing well, there's nothing that I can't do, but equally, there's nothing so easy that I can't muck it up. Absolutely, yeah. So Mark, not doing the early two-back pioneer that we saw, and the reason for that is he's got two enemy balls at hoop five, yeah. so he would have had to send an enemy ball to yeah. two-back. And when we're coaching people, we, we always say, try and get your partner ball to two-back. Yeah. And one of the reasons for that is you don't want to be making the last hoop if you turn That's off right. your partner if ball. That's right. If it's at two-back, it can't be at three-back. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and, yeah. and also people perhaps will notice that these these players don't adhere to the standard full ball break pattern of put a pie, make a hoop, put a pioneer out, go to the pivot, the pivot stays as a pivot and so on. Yeah, and I coach really people from a beginner stage not to play star star what we call star four ball breaks where the pivot stays at the peg. Yeah. The pivot needs to be a roamer. And it can be swapped. Can't it, it can. It, it can. It's done all the same ball. So now partner will go to two back. He'll rush black up to blue, and he'll go for this new, more standard leave again, trying to get one of blue and black <laughs> wired from the end of B bulk, which he failed to do in the last game. So, so why is it called the Morm standard leave? Well, it was it was done before. David Morm. It was done probably in the early 70s by you know people like Nigel Aspinall and uh, the great players then. But uh, David Morm did it every time he played, so it, it was his leave of choice. And no one else really was doing it every single game. Most people were doing diagonal spreads or new standard leaves or old standard leaves. And oh, Dave just what's the uh, what's the perceived advantage of it? Well, he's got multiple advantages. Um, one of the advantages is if they lift the ball at hoop four, which is the most defensive ball they can lift and shoot from third corner. Okay. If they hit the lift in the middle, yeah. then normally you would be taking off or playing a croquet stroke, trying to get a rush on the other ball to the ball on the other side of the lawn yeah. or hoop one. Mm-hmm. So you, you'd probably be moving your ball 11 yards up to try and get a rush either to that ball or to hoop one. Yeah. Now, when you get a good at MSL ball, which is on the left-hand wire of hoop two, that ball doesn't rush to hoop one anymore. No. So when you're playing the 11-yard croquet stroke, moving your ball 11 yards, now you've only got one target. Yeah. You can only get a rush to hoop one. So that makes it more difficult to pick up a break mm-hmm. if you hit in. Okay. So that's a sort of defensive that's option. A defensive option. 
from a positive point of view, you can leave your rush to hoot one, mm -hmm. make hoot one off partner. Firstly, if you fail hoot one, well, you haven't failed it off the opponent ball. Right. Um, if you make hoot one, it immediately goes to hoop three. So you have put a ball on a wire. Yeah. And when you're playing the croquet stroke going to it, mm. and you finish four yards away from it, being able to hit it, knowing it's going to stay near the hoop, can yes, be very okay. advantageous. That's, that's a, yes, that's a big advantage. And off, I was just thinking, if you, if, you having, if you haven't touched it, you've just gone straight to hoop one. Yep. Don't you need to make sure blue's got a, yeah. a shot? Yeah, so the perfect position for blue is fractionally off the left-hand wire of hoop two. Mm -hmm. So it's got an open shot on a ball in corner four. Right. right. And that's quite difficult to get, but very achievable. I would say I would be getting that eight out of ten. It's worth checking. Absolutely, you should yeah, always got that. check that. And yeah. remember, the lift isn't decided on your mallet. It's decided no. on your opponent's mallet. So we're, t we're talking about a wiring lift here, aren't we? We are. So We're talking about failing hoot one, and next turn, the opponent comes on and asks for a wiring lift with blue, which can't get to your two balls down at hoot one, but yeah. can, hopefully, hit partner in corner four, which has missed from corner three. Um, so getting that ball right is is quite handy, um, and often when you've hit, when you've made hoop one, you've croqueted partner to hoop three, and you've hit it on the wire, yeah. you're often approaching from inches, Yes. and then you can get a rushed corner four, okay. and really attack that ball and bring it out for a standard triple. Right. Um, if you rush into the corner... You've got a cannon. It's easy. Yeah. Um, what if you rush near the corner? You've got options as to okay. your lines of play then. Yeah. But anyway, Mark We're seems to have done a much better yeah. job with this blue up at hoop two. Yeah, blue's, I think... Definitely wired from Bebog. Yeah. He's got a nice rush over from two back to three back to be able to position black in the sort of mirror image position, wired from a bulk. And this is all tidy. Yes. So much better than that first break with the bevel and the dodgy <laughs> dodgy ball at hoop two. Yeah. And then the well, open I'd, ball I'd, at hoop I'd, four. I'd, like Mark, probably, had already forgotten about the bevel. Right. Well, that's the sign of a good player, isn't it? Yes. Um, I think uh, you always tell me when you uh, listen to Jack Nicklaus being interviewed <laughs> about his 17 major titles and yeah jack someone... nicholas apparently claimed that he'd never missed never three putties or never missed from under three feet on the last green of any tournament ever um and somebody in the audience um when he took questions at the end he, this chap sprang up and said well you said this but i, I watched you three putts on the last green of some tournament a few weeks ago and Jack Nicholas just said no I'm sorry you're wrong <laughs> so yeah Jack um, also um, was interviewed and was talking about his 17 majors and they're going through them and the commentator mentioned one of the many many like 11 or 12 tournaments where Jack had actually come second and Jack again said uh, I can't remember anything about that. No. <laughs> yeah. So, had to move black a couple of balls there, which isn't ideal, but he's played it very well. And now we'll be um, getting a rush on red. It's probably level with hoop five or a yard north of hoop five. And he'll leave a rush again pointing at hoop one. Yeah. So last game, we thought, or I thought certainly, there was a double to be had from near corner one. So I'm actually going to leave the commentary box for a few seconds and I'm going to wander out after okay. he's played his last few shots yes. and have a look at where this rush is pointing. Okay. So yes, with the, the Morm standard leave, as Chris was saying, you would, I would expect um, Mark to, to leave a rush well, maybe not, it won't be pointing at hoop one, um, but it might be pointing straight across the lawn from east to west. And that would be something that he can do a cut rush 
two hoot one. So he's just positioning red. He's checking that he's not going to put it somewhere where black can hit it. Remembering that James will have a lift. Right, so he's got one more shot. Chris is poised to go and have a look at where this rush is pointing. It's looking to me like it's going to be pointing pretty much straight across the lawn. So we'll get the uh, Get the feedback from Chris in a moment. So Mark's made nine hoops. And just to remind everyone, because he's made one back in that turn, James has got a lift, or the option of a lift, with either blue or black, as well as playing the balls as they lie. And here comes Chris back again. So, what's the news, Chris? Well, again, I think we are at a deceptive angle, because from here, I think it does look like it's pointing close to hoop one whereas actually in reality it's pointing two yards north of hoop five okay so it's actually so it's more or less straight across the lawn yeah is it? Okay. yeah yeah if anything is that not a standard thing for a warm warm leave yeah you can even leave it a fraction further you know more at hoop five okay. this is actually a genuine cut to the hoop right um so it was clearly just a deceptive angle we were at in game one okay Oh, I'm sorry, game two, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, that would have hit red had it been on the boundary. Right. They're quite interesting, just a couple of inches off the boundary. Wasn't deliberate. But I've certainly seen people like Stephen Mulliner deliberately leave a ball a couple of inches off the boundary because okay. it's a different shot. Right. Um, so this rush isn't as easy as it looks. Um, it's pointing, I say, a couple of yards north of hoop five and he needs to hit it three-quarter ball. Right. And he's and hit more of it. Oh, lucky to miss hoop five, that. Yeah. Well, he could have flicked and ended up going near a hoop one mm. or he could have landed right on the wire and not gone anywhere yeah so this is now one of the stages where blue being able to hit corner four is important yes if you take off to hoop one and you blob it you don't want blue to walk on the lawn and say can i have a wiring lift no you don't we can't really tell from here no and the viewers might be thinking well it's pretty obvious Yep. But we don't actually have access to what they're seeing, do we? No, no. Just looking at the lawn from near corner three. Oh, and that is... And that is on mm. the line with the corner. That is... No, he's not running that. And I think that I don't is care really who difficult. It is. He's not running that. I think it is runnable. <laughs> I think I want to run it in the air. And it's a low percentage. Yeah. It's, and you don't want to bounce off to black. Like, mm, OK, well, he avoided that. We will find out now. We will definitely find out. Whether. I think blue's fine. I think it's well away from the hoop. I, I think so too. Um, but that was definitely a chance for Mark. And, well, a clear error. Um, we'd be expecting him to win most of the time from there. And, um, yeah. Errors make the games more interesting. Yes, they do. And I certainly very keen on James hitting this and doing something interesting. <laughs> oh, well it's so far I feel well that he can have a go at yellow. Right. <clears throat> and I'd, to be honest, I'm expecting him to hit this. Really? Well, 
That's why they don't pay me the big bucks, Chris. Yeah, well, I'd have been laying it as odds against in my professional capacity. Okay, of course you would. I just um, had an inkling that that's when I'm playing James, he hits those. Ah, right. Now, this is this is. I think this is aggressive. Two or three years ago, oh. Mark might not have taken this. No. And he He's would probably him. wishes he hadn't. Um, I, I like the positive line of play. I think it's a good line of play. I think he should hit that most of the time. Um, mm, but that's, um, that's certainly a that's a sickener. A scrappy period in the game. Should James go and get blackout straight away here? I wouldn't. Would you? Some it's a massive croquet stroke from corner four. Well, if he's going to TPO... You, you really do want to... Well, he's going to TPO. He's not, he's not obliged to do that, though, is he? And, it, and he, would, he would be able to play the role from corner four going to red now. Yeah. So in answer to your question, no, I wouldn't. I right. was trying to play devil's advocate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, you had me worried, though. Um, I know you're good at croquet strokes, but... No, I'm completely happy with the croquet stroke, Keith. It's the four yarder I might have to <laughs> take off to it. Right. Um, <laughs> so James has got to yet another one of these dodgy oh, positions. I thought he'd got in the jaws, but obviously not. And he's got to okay. take off from the wrong side of it, probably moving it away from behind the hoop so yeah. he can run it. Yeah. And he's played it nicely. But he's going to have a bigger croquet stroke he's to play. Have a, yeah. Oh, so this will be more or less on the south boundary by the time we set this. Okay, not as far. Uh, a pegs in play a bit, maybe? Yeah. I don't think he's looking at black though, is he? No, no. Again, one of the beauties a couple of days ago playing on lawn seven was this fast patch between six and three. And shots like this, where you were sending balls out from a long way away, um, would hit the fast patch. Yeah. And yeah, you, know, you had to be really careful with them. Yeah. That is a wonderful croquet stroke. Yeah, very good. Get some round of applause. It good. was fabulous. And he'll be looking to rush back to corner <laughs> four after hoop two. So one of the things I was going to say um, after we were talking about you fancying James hitting that shot yes. and then subsequently Mark missing is if you had to say what the weakness of these two players was it would be that neither of them are the most consistent shots. Okay. Uh, wonderful croquet strokes we've seen. Um, both capable of peeling very easily but they have patches where they don't shoot very well. Yeah. Now, and it, you can talk about now the options. This is very similar to the, the scenario Mark might have got in. Um, uh, and I think had he made hoot one. Yeah, the choices James ha has here is he could a croquet red to hoot four, yeah, just going to black, yeah, and then roll black up here. Okay, uh, or. He's got no need to TPO. He doesn't have to TPO. He could just get a hoop four pan here and take off from black oh, to yellow. I think he wants to. I think um, he wants to TPO. And yellow is not in a good position to go to with a roll. No. If you finish short, mm. you can be crosswired from it. Yeah. If you go a long way long, you could go off the north boundary. Yeah. So this is the choice. It's and a he's take doing off. a takeoff. So okay. this is not a TPO now. No. Is it going to be a one-back leave? I think it might be a one-back leave now. What do you think? I'm expecting a one-back leave, and then I'm expecting a TPO. A TPO right. This has gone wide, and it's a good length. Very good shot. Yeah. Excellent. And a wise line of play. Mm. No need to play that. Big roll. Go to one back. Let Mark have a 35 yarder. I suppose one thing we should be saying here is um, 
the one back leave will be marked crosswired at hoop one. So red and yellow either side of hoop one. Yeah. And yellow will be closer to corner one. And red will be on the opposite side. Sorry. The other but, way but around. The other way the, around. The red will be towards Mark corner one. Mark wants to play red. Yeah. So that will be given the much longer shot. Yeah, the longer shot. Yeah. But equally, you can't just crosswire them north-south. Because by putting red south of the hoop, you're putting it in front of its hoop. Yeah. So you do want to be wiring at least on the line of the corner, yeah. if not wider. Yeah. That's a nice takeoff. Very nice. And then looking further forward, if we are correct about this one back leave followed by a TPO, then we've got the question, if he completes the TPO, does he leave three balls on like the last game? Or does he turn it into a two ball game, one back V1, or maybe even get a peel on partner and well, turn it into two back I've, V1? I've seen James do, well I have seen James do three peels on partner and the TPO. Well, I did something that I think is better than three peels on partner and a TPO, which is, I had a TPO with two peels on partner mm -hmm. and George did in three back. Oh, nice. And still lost the game to Pete Landry. <laughs> well. So, we should perhaps just to dot the I's and cross the T's point out that if James only makes six hoops um, and stops before one back um, he won't concede a lift no and that's why he can afford to to lay up um, putting one of Mark's balls quite close to the A bulk and he will be laying up close to the B bulk in third corner well in B bulk in third corner and he's already starting to put yellow in approximately the position yeah. where it will finish. It will finish a bit further. So red, when it's wired from it, won't be able to run hoop one. Now this is interesting. This is interesting. He's going to be taking off from yellow to red. He is. And red's not perfect, is it? Red's a bit too far east. It is. Okay. Slightly unusual place to put the black there. You'd probably have it a bit shorter. I guess he's making sure it's not in the way of his takeoff to red. Yeah. So you want control out of this. You don't want to be having to roll red down. No, exactly. From no. hoop six to near corner one. No. Um, you just want to have a rush. Uh, which is actually why my preference is to. is to rush one of the balls after hoop five north of red. It's the same principle of to just moving the striker's ball a shorter distance, you get more, more likely to get control out of hoop six. It is, and I agree entirely with that. Um, lovely, lovely takeoff again, perfect takeoff. Yeah. Um, so he hasn't had any problems due to that line of play. No, but that's interesting there, you see, I wouldn't necessarily have put red as far, but anyway, I'm starting to sound a bit nitpicking, Chris. Well, we shouldn't be doing that, should we? When you're looking at players who are making it look as easy as they, well, certainly had been doing for the first two games, you have to try and look at ways of improvement. Um, and, oh yeah, I think one of the things I mentioned was I was surprised that the rush was pointing quite as far north when Mark laid his leave. Yes. And he didn't play a and very good rush. No. And he very didn't play a very good takeoff. No. And he didn't run the hoop. And he didn't make hoop one. Um, yeah. So maybe if that rush had been a little bit further south. Well, then. James has deliberately played the open cannon there for almost crowd entertainment. Yes. Um, 
He's well, he entertained it. himself yeah, as exactly. well, to be fair. He's played it perfectly. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. He's got the wire immediately with one shot. He doesn't need to move I'm, the I'm, yellow. I'm guessing that you, like me, wouldn't have thought of doing that. And certainly wouldn't have done it, even if we'd thought of it. Well, I might have done if the other option had been having to hit yellow away from a wired position. Well, okay. Yeah. So, you know, I might not have done it as quickly as James did it. Yeah. But I, I would certainly have had it in my mind if I was so close that I had to go away from it. I think it was possible to go the far side of it and rush it back I along the wired line. I thought, anyway. Um, so you just play a little takeoff, leaving yellow wired from red and get a rush on black to corner three. And that's a rush to one back, isn't it? Is that the, the theory the of you should always get a rush to one Always get a rush to one back, yes. Um, I have to admit, even I don't follow that on the basis if they're wired to start with, they're going to stay wired. If I was playing on a fast lawn, I might. Um, sort of bad things can happen, like you <laughs> rush it bad in things can happen, onto so. the front of hoop six. Yeah. Yeah, you've got a rush pointing at one back and suddenly try and cut it. And it suddenly it's on the wire of hoop six. Yeah. And you can't get anywhere near the north boundary, never mind corner three. Uh, anyway, he's coped with that. Black's going to move towards corner three. And uh, we should probably mention that there are a couple of options for blue. Um, blue can be left um, leaving black a rush to hoop two. Or he could roll black a bit further south and put blue a couple of feet behind four back, wired from red and yellow, mm. to give himself the space to get balls out and peel one back before hoop two. Yeah. So that's okay. the Fulford option. Fulford was the first person to invent that leave to generate the space. Um, and peeling one back before hoop two makes a big difference in terms of most people's completion success on right. sex tuples. James, I would think, will play the old-fashioned. He'll just leave a rush to heap two. Yeah. And we think he's going to do a TPO. And we think he's going to do a TPO, so why not? Um, got to make sure that one of these balls is open for each of the other balls, or else there'd be a wiring left. Yeah, that would be a bad mistake to make. Oh, it's coming down to have a look. I think the concern is probably yellow, do you think? Yellow looks quite close to it. It probably isn't. Ah, well, it could but be. To, to my eyesight, for this distance, it looks quite close. Oh, he's checking red, OK. I'll, um, uh, I think on the basis of his checking, then I can probably go and have a look myself. Not giving any extra information. OK. So James is actually telling Chris um, what the situation is. James, one of these players who doesn't mind interacting with uh, third parties while he's in play. So James was talking to you there, what, what was he saying? Well, as anyone who knows me well will know, I haven't got the faintest clue because I'm deaf. Right. But I think he said he didn't get black far enough and black is wired from red. Because uh, I can tell okay. you that black is wired from red. Right, okay. So red is open on blue. Right. And yellow is definitely open on black. And so Mark, Mark's playing with his hoop one ball. Yeah, so it's a longer shot, but it's still the right shot to take. Yeah. And he's having a shot at blue. Hit it reasonably nicely. And it's close, he's close, close. Oh! Well, he thought he had that, but yeah, judging by his reaction. Yeah, he can't believe it, can he? Can't believe it. Um, well, that had he hit it, that, that should have been game over, shouldn't it? It should have. Fairly... Yeah. Give it... And those shots are probably hit about 15% of the time. Yeah. That would be my rough estimate for it. Um, so now, about one in seven. 
Yeah, James is walking off and I think this is either a drinks or a lunch break. Um, James would normally be straight on again. Yeah. It might be a comfort break. Okay, um, well, hopefully um, we'll get to find out, Chris. Otherwise, commentating on an empty... Oh no, here he comes. Yeah, he's back out again. Back out. Yeah. So, could be a sex tuple. Could be a TPO. Well, might be starting off as a sex tuple and turning into a TPO mm. if it doesn't go well. Um, Maybe both. Uh, that that would be, I think. Uh, I think Paul, James Paul, has got over that sort of thing. Paul Hans had a TPO and a quad, didn't he? Yes, that's he probably did, yes. the the best multi peeling turn. Um, and that was probably in the late seventies, early eighties. Yeah. Uh, wonderful player, Paul. Um, All right. So, well, this is. I either way, there's no harm in at least trying to get this peel now, is there? And either way, there's no harm in trying to get the yellow peeled through four back after hoop one. Well, that too. Yeah. Well. He's rushed it quite a long way north it's and it's too far. It's travelling, yeah. So that's not even a good hoop two part here now, is it? No. Thank you very much to Rachel for our refreshments. So taking off to yellow and he'll want to rush out to hoop one here. Yes. And he'll be rushing to four back, won't he? Yep. Yeah, it's travelling a bit, this. Yeah, just probably gone a yard too far. Yeah, I'm not sure which side of the hoop is going to rush this. He might be able to cut it to in front of the hoop, or he might decide to rush it to the far side. No, he's done well. He's cut it in front, I think. Um, and again... Well, this looks ideal. He's approaching from in front. He can send yellow... Oh, not far yeah, enough. to the east side, well, no. <laughs> I'm not sure he's got that, has he? I think he has got it. Oh, oh very good. He's overhit the rush. And down the wrong line. But only just. Yeah, oh, it's a good effort. Yeah. It's a good effort. I'm very impressive to get the rush out of the hoop from there. How many players in the tournament would have run that? Well, how many players in the world would even have attempted yeah. to do that? Yeah. Um, so interesting here, this is a deliberate attempt, I think, to put this into a rush peelable position. Yeah, it could be. Because why else would he put it outside the hoop? Yeah. And if yeah. you can rush peel it, it just improves the tempo of the peeling turn to potentially allow more peels on the one-back ball. Well, I, I think we're going to see a, a peel on the one-back ball now. Straight we? away, you think? Don't you? I think that's why red's, red's being rushed there. It depends on where yellow's finished. If you can rush peel yellow, yeah. then red can go as you hoop four pound here. Yeah. If you can't rush peel yellow, then you have to peel yellow going to wherever blue finishes. Well, this is looking like the setup for the start of a sex table. Yeah, but it's clearly with both in mind because yeah, of yeah. where he's put yellow. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so it's intelligent play. Like it. Um, should be a really entertaining turn to watch. Yes. I mean, you know. Yes. It's a super player playing a, a challenging turn, and it's really what makes the game so so much fun. Um, I so think most players wouldn't even think of putting yellow there. Absolutely, yeah. So, I think to be critical, he's done poorly to have to peel at an angle from this far. Yeah. Well, he wasn't happy, was he, with the approach? No. Um, Jawsing this is still fine. 
you know, you can still... Well, James is a pretty good peeler too, so I'm expecting this to come through. Nice to see him go back a few times and just, you know, tidy it up rather than slapping it down. Yeah. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. It's not gone sufficiently far through for him to go, right, I'm all out sex tuple now. No. It could be um, an escape ball for a fallback peel if you wanted it to be. It could be. He's gone very tight here. Even for James, that's too tight. Yeah. So I think this is going to be a not a great hoop four pan here. That is. He's looking at the rush peel. He has to prioritise the rush peel here, I think. Even if red only finishes nine yards north of hoop four. Let's see how good this stop shot actually is. And we'll get a good measure on it because we'll side on to it. Um, so it's, mm. I would say black's three balls too far. Yeah, well. A very good line he put black down. That's bad. Yeah. So that now he, one of his best. he has to approach the hoop putting yellow behind the hoop and then hit yellow and peel it going to blue. Yes, and that will be the plan. The it? key with blue there is you have to get past it. Yeah. As long as you get the distance right, you can't be crosswired from it. Yeah. So past it is really important. He's put yellow quite deep yeah. with the plan of running it past it and rushing it back. And he's done that very nicely, really good. So he should be peeling from pretty close to the hoop. Yeah. Oh no, he's given up. Oh. So this is all out sex tuple yeah. now. Oh, okay. Um, well, that de decision was made pretty quickly, wasn't it? I think that's a mistake. Hmm. Um, well, having got one peel so early on on blue, the yeah. TPA becomes more attractive. Absolutely, before. that's my view entirely. <coughs> uh, it should easily get to three back. Yeah. Easily. Um, I didn't think the peel going to blue was difficult. This looks this this black this 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 Is he okay? I don't know. I think he might be a ball short. I think he might be fine. Absolutely it's not a rush. Fine. You know, I want thing I said it you had to get past that line. Um anyway, it's a different shot now, isn't it? You're trying to get a rush on blue two back. You're on a sex tuple now, not a TPO. So completely different. Yeah, he's actually played the shot brilliantly. He has. I mean, it wouldn't have done any harm to go beyond it and rush blue back over here and, and croak it, it down. Croak it down there, no. would it? In fact, it would have been <coughs> better. Well, indeed. Um, but this is a nice position for Sex Tuple. He's going to be peeling two back before five. I think it's a mistake. Um, I think the the TPO with the two peels that he was likely to get was much stronger. Two balls off. Um, well, we'll see. And that's too far. Yeah. We saw Reg on the sex tuple yesterday. It started to be, you know, one shot was slightly wrong, the yeah. next shot was slightly wrong. Yeah. yeah. And then he failed to hit five from nowhere. Yeah. Um, this is your classic. Half the people in the world are going to be thinking, I've got a cut rush from nine yards to hoop four, off the hoop one ball, with yeah. two balls at hoop one. Yeah. And that's the only thing that's going to be in their mind as yeah. they're playing the shot. Um, so he's got a roll up from five yards. Well, red's, red's going deep, I think. Yep. Red's going deep, and then it'll be smashed through. <clears throat> But all these things become much, the details here become more important, don't they? Because you're doing a sex tuple. Yeah. So he's got red deep, but he's got a longer hoop than he'd want. That black moved the ball right. And it was under hit as well. Yeah. That's failed. 
luck heel is to a spot where red probably yeah, isn't going to play. Red, probably red's not going to play. Um, I think yellow will just play and make a leave. No hoops. Yeah. Um, again, I, one of the things that I think I was good at, because I wasn't good at several things, but one of the things I think I was good at was making the right decision. Mm. And I think yesterday, you know, I said Reg was 50-55% on his sex tuple and that made it the wrong thing to do. And well, again, we if, both you, looked, if you remember, so your co-commentator was expecting him to do a TPA. Yes. Yeah, well, Reg doesn't TPA. And uh, from that position, James had played a whole load of really good shots. And even after the bad shot of not rush peeling four back. Hmm. But he still had the TPO option. He played a lovely of, approach. Because of where blue was. Yeah. Could yeah. could run past it, as he did. Could have cut it back. And all he's got to do is a thick takeoff, getting past that ball. And he's, he's in great position again. Um... He's actually quite lucky here, isn't he? I mean, if you're failing four, to fail it to somewhere where red can't hit you is a great result. Great result. This position, where you're going to play a ball and not make any points, is one of the things I think people don't spend enough care over. No. I'm already looking at this and going, I can rush blue off the lawn. Mm -hmm. I can play a big, wide croquet stroke, sending it past hoop two, mm -hmm. going to black. Mm -hmm. I can peel black or mm -hmm. hit it into the hoop, Okay, whichever works. Croquet it back a yard the other side of hoop four and lay up in fourth corner wide from it. And the only shot black's got is at blue near corner two. The only shot blue's got is back down here. Gives yeah. you the world. Nice distances involved. There's no cunning wire that's easily available at hoop one that I can see. No. That doesn't give no, a that's... shortest shot. Yeah. But this sort of cross wire at hoop four will give a long shot. It's, it's yeah. It's not bound to get it though, is he? You should be. It's massive. No, I mean when he come once he's roquet blue and played the croquet stroke, he's not guaranteed to peel black on the roquet, is he? Well, I don't think. Yeah, that doesn't really matter. You can just move black to a non-hoop running position, and you've got a huge wire. Mm. Well, he's taking his time thinking about it. It's good. It's good. Other things to potentially think about are laying up in corner two is a good area for you to lay up in. It's behind the two back balls break. It's sort of behind ish the four hoop four balls break, and it's ahead of your break. Yeah. So maybe hoop two is an option you can consider. Um. You could potentially put blue to a position where it's going to be wired from black on the south boundary behind red. So they're cross wired across hoop one. Okay. Take off the yeah, black, yeah. rush, peel it. They're cross wired and then rush to corner two. Um, that's a bit close to blue for my liking. I'd go to corner three. But you've still got quite a handy, you would leave a rush to corner four quite a strong leave that yeah certainly looking at this position for the wire if you're not going to play my original line of play is, is strong it's not as big a wire as the one at hoop four that I was mentioning earlier but still knowing where black will rush to off the south boundary and making sure blue is wired from that area is a, is a good thing to be thinking about Again, we're assuming this black does rush peel quite easily. Yeah, I'm, I'm not convinced, but I don't think it does if it's smack on the wire, on the right hand wire as we look at it. Well, I don't think it is, I think it's just bounced back in front. 
Um, I'm pretty confident that all this turn has been about what lead he's making rather than is Greg going to shoot at Oh, back. sure. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, yeah, 100%. I suppose another option is you can rush blue off the boundary, go to red, and roll to corner three. I was just looking at that. And I hate yeah. that line of play. Just leave, leave black. I hate it. Anything involving rolling red to corner three, you yeah. just leave it in the middle of the lawn. Mm. You know, playing a 33 yard roll well is so difficult. And you well, leave. It doesn't, do you think it has to get all the way to corner three? I mean, it's. I certainly can't finish level with hoop three, that's just rubbish. I just think it's you've got so many good lines of play here. If you end up doing that, it's bad. Oh, oh, where's this going? I really am worried that he's played the first shot of his turn and hasn't decided what he's going to do. Well, I thought after that length of wait, we would have had a de definitive, I am going to do this. Is he going to, he's going to black here, Going to black, yeah. going to black, yeah. And he should be trying to get this wired spot that I've mentioned through mm, who won to yeah. the south boundary. He's going to red. I hate that. I, I can't. I can't see a good line of play. If you go to red, all you're doing is stopping it to a corner three, going to black. And I don't like that at all. You're not. You're not tempted by just leaving black. Well, you think it's hard on the wire? Oh, oh you. you we're just well, it rushes it. to who one. Let's, let's assume it rushes to who won. I think, and, and, I, and I don't mind, and you know, well, I say I don't mind. But you'd be going, well, you can have who four. Yeah. And then, and then what are you going to do? Well, my first Are you going step, to shoot at blue? Step one, if it runs hoop four, yeah. I don't want to leave a 26 yarder. Okay. So that, that, that makes it not strong enough. Fine. Step two, I don't want to play a croquet stroke moving red from the south boundary to near corner three. Okay. So, there's lots of reasons I think this is weak. Now, we may find that black's hard on the wire and he can lay it where he is, in which case it's fine. Yeah. If, it, if black can't run the hoop, then I have no problem with this. I just don't think it is. It's not wired from blue, though. It, it, yeah, but it's got the hoop sort of by its side. It's sort of psychologically hampered. I can cope with that. Um, well, it's pretty critical to know uh, whether black runs. Doesn't it? Well, we're I about mean, to find out, aren't well, we? It seems I'm to be going towards sure black. Runs. Okay, so thanks very much to Rich Waterman, who who said it just rushes to hoop one, mm. and it's just runnable as well. Right. So, so it's, it's it has to be moved. It's coming out of the hoop. Okay. One of the things about this leave, because he's just going to rush it up to corner three or yeah. that sort of area and go back to partner, and it's a nothing he sort of leave from my position. It, it hasn't utilised any of the good possibilities. 
Do you want to try and encourage James to play his hoop four ball or his two back ball? Well, that's a good question. Because I want him playing his hoop four ball. I don't want him making oh. <coughs> two points with his two back ball and just having a t TP afterwards from a very strong leave. Um, whereas this one is encouraging him to play his two back ball. He is. So yeah. I don't like it from that perspective as well. So yeah, I've, I've. It's just not very good, this leave. Last shot, I was obviously now going to be going back to partner from 25 Miles yards away. away. Yeah. Um, well, maybe. I mean, you can do a. You could just. Hmm, you could do a thinnish takeoff, can they? Just get black uh, out of the hoop and go back. Again, calling a referee on the basis that if he were to hit a bevel, it would be a fault. Yeah. Because he has to use special care and attention due to the presence of a hoop. So how far is black going, do you think? I think black should be going about four inches. Mm. That would be my optimal level. Now he looks to me as though he might be considering trying to get it over towards hoop two. That would be far too close to blue for yeah. my liking. Well, I say that, I mean, if, on your... Th well, OK, he's not doing it. Oh, he sent it a long way. Yeah. Because he could have taken off from the other side. If yes. he was doing what you wanted to do. Yeah, which would have been better. Um, fundamentally, I think, from that position, there's a lot to be said for moving it up here and not leaving yourself a rush. No, not leaving Red or Rush anywhere. Mm -hmm. If James corners, well, you can try and make a better leave than the horrible one you've just made. You know, blue blue at black is too short. Blue at red's too short. There's too many short shots here. Um, remember, it's a non-lift leave. Um, I gave the New Zealand team a, a, a rule of thumb for yeah. a non-lift leave. I said, if you make a non-lift leave, None of the balls should be inside the rectangle yeah. unless they're wired. Right. That's a good rule. Uh, I think it's a good rule. And black is inside the rectangle. So that's a lunch bell. So the players might have lunch at any stage. Um, I think yellow going off there is safe. And there's no double for blue there. Uh, but because red has got a rush towards the area of hoop one, yeah. Um, James has no possibility of cornering. No. Whereas I would have given him a chance to corner by not leaving a rush. Okay. <clears throat> um, On the flip side of that, um, James has to hit. No, on the flip side of that, James can shoot blue at black, and if he misses, Mark has the sweaty cut rush to hoop well, one, okay, approach from well. five yards mm. away. And okay, if he makes it, he's probably won. Yeah. But blue at black isn't long enough. And it is now going to be lunch. So we'll have a little break. Excellent. And thanks for your company. And we'll probably be back in about 25 minutes. Something like that. We'll be back when they're back, I guess. Yeah.
Okay, well, here we are back from lunch. It's Keith Ayton again, about to be joined by my esteemed co commentator, Mr. Chris Clark, and it's James's turn. Now, this is his two back ball. Two, he's four and two back, isn't he, Chris, against one and four back? Yeah, and it's taking the shot we thought he'd take. Yes. Um, not as long as I would have liked to have seen this shot. And he's sent a ball back. He smashed it in the middle. So. Now we'll <coughs> see why I wanted to try and encourage him to play with the hoop four ball. This will now be just two hoops. He'll make two back yeah. and three back. Yeah. And he will make an enormously powerful leave. Yeah. And Mark will be faced with a 30 yarder to avoid. James having a finishing turn so um, not as long so I was quite critical of that leave before lunch I thought there were better options yes and, and even, even right at the end when he moved black uh, west yeah exactly he, he could have moved to east yeah and I, I suppose one of the things we ought to say is after lunch suddenly coming and finding the pace of the lawn and having to do a boundary to boundary takeoff isn't the easiest first croquet stroke no that's true and he's played it really well very well <coughs> so, you're hitting red croaking it through towards three back and getting a nice rush on yellow to two back so and what do you anticipate his powerful leave will be the, the obvious leave is simply red and yellow crosswired at hoop four mm -hmm. quite easy to achieve because it's going to be the last hoop he makes. Yeah. So after two back, he can rush yellow over towards three back, get a nice crosswire there, take off up to black and roll towards corner two. Well, he might even be able to approach Levy a crosswire and then he could run the hoop to black. He could. He could. That as it happens, happen. given yeah. where black is. Yeah. It doesn't. Uh, sort of bad things can happen with that. Uh, well, when you run run the hoop by 15 yards, that's quite bad. No, that wasn't what I was thinking about. I was assuming he was going to run it from inches and definitely run it. Yeah. But can you imagine what, how bad it would be to run three back and unluckily run four back in the same <laughs> shot? <laughs> well, OK. I had not considered that, to be fair, which I should have done, um, given that four back is on the line of three back. It is. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's just again taking these unlucky options out of play, yes. hopefully. Yes. So, rushing yellow back over towards three back, and then probably quite a tight crosswire. This is, this is coming up here. This is coming up here. That's interesting. So... I didn't okay. think that was necessary. Um, What's the plan now then? So my assumption with this is he's digging yellow and black out, leaving them at four back. He's going to get a rush out of three back on red, cross wire at hoop three, and lay up in corner one. Which is what you would do if you're for hoop one. It is, but he's not for hoop one, is he? So we can't say huge amounts now because he's a little bit too close for yeah. us. Um, I'm going to be quite frustrated if this is not another, if this just doesn't fulfil my criteria of a satisfactory leap. <coughs> um. Okay. Well, it's a it's an evolving situation we're dealing with here, Chris. So let's look at another possibility. He makes three back. Yeah. He leaves red just a little bit east of the hoop, so it can't see corner one. Right. And lays up with black and blue in corner one, so that red's only shot is at yellow. Well, black is black is joining us down the lawn. Which which he has to to make a leave. Yeah. You have to have red and black joined up to make a good leave, I think. It's not the easiest shot now, though, is it? Well, no, I think 
my little cross rail at Hoop 4 and <laughs> taking off to the north I, I was there, Chris. I was there with you there. I, I don't, don't worry, I was, I was on board with that one. Um, <coughs> and now he's not doing it and he's joining black up with yellow. So again, this goes back to my concept. Oh dear, this is short, isn't it? Where's it going? Is it's the hoop going in the, the back way? of the hoop. It's no, it's, it's, it's okay. not quiet. It's okay. Mm. Not a good shot, though. He's not going to be approaching from as close as he would like. So, let's go back even further. Let's say he's <laughs> not going to leave red where I say, but he's actually going to leave red near corner four. Okay. Takes off to yellow. Pokes yellow just south of hoops two. Mm. Lays up near corner two. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think that would be a great feed if it was for hoop one. But he yeah. isn't on hoop one, he's no, on hoop he four. No, that's right. Um, yeah. So, we have to have this constant thought in the back of our head of, does he know he's for hoop four? Well, as he remembers. I, I think he, he's, it's not a sort of mistake James makes, but this is a, certainly a rush back to corner four, isn't it? So one of the things it appears he's definitely going to be doing is laying up ahead of red spike. Yeah. And he, I'm guessing you would say that's not a good thing. Not a good thing. Um, you know, he could have had a tight crossfire at four um, and laid up tight in corner two with one ball wired, potentially. So he couldn't dig out a hoop two par here if he hit in. Um, well, red's, red's being left there. I think this concept of yellow just south of hoop two and black and blue north on the north boundary wired from it is going to be what we see. And it's a, it's a great lead for length. You know, length is really important. Um, so red would have a, a very long shot. Um, is it an easy enough chance for black and blue? Well, it's certainly not as easy as cross rowing at your own hoop. No. Um, and he's left himself a little niggly four yarder here, hasn't this, he? Which he's coped with, but yeah. he now needs, if he's going to do what you were thinking, he needs a very good controlled croquet stroke. Yeah, he needs to get this side of black for a start. He can't go oh. into black on the croquet stroke. No. Now he's not, he's not even doing that bad look of it. I'm starting to get even more confused. Oh no, he's playing into a. Oh, no, this isn't. This isn't this moving is, yellow very far. Is that meant to be a, a crosswire of red and yellow? I don't think he cares. I think he's just laying up in corner three. Okay. This is just trying to put length on red's shot. Yeah. Well. I think there are much, much better options than this. I'm but sensing into, that this is a, an area of the game that uh, you're very good at. I, th I um, confess I struggle with this sort of if making a making a good leave when there's no hoops to make or okay I, I, I may be quite good at it, it but that's because I've played 20 years of doubles with Robert Fulford. So that's a huge learning experience right, okay. from somebody who has a, such an in-depth understanding of the game that you eventually pick up on some things. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I that's think that's a double target. That's a double that is a, a double, double target. target. So it's a little tempter. There is tempter I would for the say ball Mark doesn't really want to play with. One and three quarter balls between them. So if it was one ball between them, that would be a perfect double. Yes. And I think it's one and three quarters. Okay. So, I'm going to play yellow. I know it's the ball I don't want to play, but it's shorter and it's much bigger. And it's more defensive. That's less important, because I think James will finish anyway. This is really attractive, isn't it, Keith? 
Well, a lot of people I think that are still approached this as I must move red. Ah, uh, I don't care about that, I want to hit in. Yeah. If red does shoot at black and blue and it hits, we expect Mark to finish. Yes, I think so, that's a fair, um, fair comment. It is much longer and it is much less of a double. It is possible still to hit the wrong ball. Indeed. Um, well, yeah. he is taking this shot. He's not hit it though. No, that's through the middle of the middle. And uh, it's not the easiest pick up for James, unlike across where at you. No, it's quite hard work, I but would say. One of the things you can do here is you can croquet red out as an escape ball to four back. You can rush partner to hoop four. You can rush back after hoop four and maybe get a peel and then get a rush on red over to yellow and then even if you haven't got the peel you've set up um, a delayed triple by croqueting red back over towards four back getting a rush to hoop five. Okay I suspect um, some of the viewers might not have followed all of that Chris without a, a demonstration board but maybe we'll see what's going to happen. That's, um, that's the aggressive version the sort of I can do a delayed triple from later is to just croquet this into the law and get a rush on blue to yellow yeah rush yellow to hoop that's four. what I was looking at um, and accept you might have to make hoop five off the peely which isn't normally a good thing no well but you can peel four back going to one back then as you I, I'd be, I, th I think you're looking at um, now, what's he going to do with blue here? Because he's going to stop it into the middle of the lawn. Towards six, I think so. Or just because middle of the lawn would, is actually in the way of his rush. Is right, it? sure, okay. So out of the way of his rush, but you know, maybe between one and, and five. That, and I think you can, you can bank on. Okay, that has gone. Well, it's not. It shouldn't be in the way of his rush. Uh, So that, that, that is a he's hoop five pan here though, isn't it? It's beginning to look a bit like it. That's rushed. I thought he might back himself to make four and five off yellow. Potentially. Well, I was just also looking at making hoop four rushing to blue. Rushing blue, blue to, to four back and peeling uh, okay. to rush to hoop five. Yeah, right. Um, so there, but legitimate options, it's a very easy lawn. Well he could have sent blue much nearer red, couldn't he? He could have sent it in he, the direction of six. He could have sent it two thirds of the way probably yeah. to red. Now do you think that. he was thinking, no I want to keep blue and red separate? No, I think he's just uh, making hoop five off blue. You and saying I'm good enough just to finish. I'm going to oh. get a rush out of hoop five, I'm going to get a go at the four buck peel before six. I think he might be doing what your other option, but we'll see. Oh, hello. That's a hoop six pan here. Yeah. Now, is he coming to red or...? I don't think so. I think he's going well, to go straight to blue. No, well, I if... Surely, if you're making five off blue, you'd come via red, wouldn't you? He's, I think he's going to be happy with that red as an escape ball. I think it, well, it, if it was me, I, I might settle for peeling uh, four back going to one back. Well, obviously that was what I mentioned earlier, but I, I'm a bit surprised he's, he's playing this shot. I thought he'd just, yeah, he is doing, he's just taking off and getting his rush. Um, I'm surprised he's not coming via red though. You oh, could rush red a lot closer to blue than yellow is now. Yeah, but then you can't get the peel after hoop well, five. Which you you know he likes pushing for his peels. Well, this is... Well, OK. Remember, you've asked the question, what is he going to do? Yes. Well, what should he yeah. be doing? <laughs> well, yeah, OK. Um, 
So they are different different beasts. On they can occasionally. well be, yes. Yeah, well, he's, he's definitely now looking at rushing to fall back after five. Just a fraction short. Yeah, lovely, lovely yeah, control. You see, very good. I think most people would have been content with making five absolutely. at that stage. Absolutely. This looks That's close. It's this is close. It needs to pull up, pull up. Oh, it's beautiful. No, it's 45 it? degrees, I think. No. Do you? If I've got my. Well, yeah, yeah it's know. 45 degrees. I think he'll draw it, but I'm not convinced he's going to peel it. Well, he only needs to hit red, so he can just play a straight stop shot. He? he can. Actually, I'll tell you what, it would, well, he's peeled it anyway. Mm, that was good. That was good. So oh, he fancies a cheeky little Aspen or well, peel there, Chris. Well, I know there'll be lots of people who don't know what an Aspen or peel is, <laughs> so I'll, I'll explain. It's a peel where you play it at an acute angle which would be more acute than that angle it would but so you it'd be an angle it, where you could you, do it for, from that angle you, you'd guarantee that the ball wouldn't go through the hoop and you'd aim it into the far wire and it would sort of stop on the far wire but then the striker's ball comes along promotes and, it through and promotes it what through what could possibly go wrong indeed so they're, they're they're not sort of high percentage shots i think i've had one ever right was that de deliberate so, yes oh, deliberate okay. one okay. yeah yeah um, Cheeky. So James has started this turn with not really a break, and now he's managed to get the peel. And now, now he's got a TP more or less finished and from his perspective. He'll be disappointed that he hasn't well, had the opportunities of Rush Yellow to call greedy, three. Greedy, greedy. Because he could have had all the peels before two back then. He could. <laughs> which yeah. he would have been quite pleased with. You <laughs> he know, would, that he would have been. Loved that, yeah. He would have loved that because yeah. he's going to come off, he's going to look at the commentary and the commentary is going to say how bad the leave was could have had an easy cross right hoop four <laughs> and he's going to come on and say what are you talking about add all the peels for two back we're, um, getting, we're getting I'm not sure if Blue's necessarily going to two back here I am I am oh, this is, is going no, to two yeah, back it is. Yeah. Okay. because I think whilst we are obviously saying James has pushed hard for his peels yeah. He didn't push as hard as he might do with my first option of rushing partner to hoot four. He actually rushed over there and got a rush to two hoot four off an enemy ball with a ball near a hoot five. Yeah. So yeah. he, he yeah. has actually focused on trying to get a break. Yeah. And then just relied on sort of talent to do the rest of it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, these balls are in good position. He'll be trying to rush blue back up the lawn after two back to peel penult um, and yeah it's been as a turn after lunch goes pretty good pretty good yeah so where do you like to put red here well you're not going well, this to is be... going to three back but so you hadn't got the room to put it to three back. Where, where do you like to have the ball, the fourth ball, as I think of it? So you've got the I like it partner sort of at two, two back as yeah. a pioneer and one I'll, one I'll play ball at three back. Where do you like the other one? I like it two yards south east. Um, two yards south east of Penalt. Okay. Allows me to rush back after two back peel it with a fairly firm straightish shot and then rush south right so i'm rushing to, you know, south of red and croquet back up yeah i put, put it in the box i well if i haven't got the peel i'm going to put it in the box yeah. which we mentioned yesterday as clark box well how how often do you think um from here you actually do get the peel about i would say about 12 13 percent Right.
rushing isn't a strength of mine. If it was Reg on the other hand, it'd be, it'd be close to 50, wouldn't it? <laughs> I would think so, yes. This looks good. Yeah, this looks pretty sexy. Need to keep going. No, it's give up. Nah. Okay, so again, there's there's two schools of thought here. You can put blue on front of the hoop, tap yellow, take off to red. And I'm always going to be rushing yellow south. Yeah. And this croaking is, this it is back. A, This is not being rushed south. I, oh, I don't know. Maybe it is. No. Um... <coughs> So yellow's already in the box. Yeah. That is a very might, get, much, might get moved a bit further yeah. east. Very much a box ball. So it's a ball where you're never going to be, going to be peeling with a straight shot. You're all going to, always going to be playing with pull. Sometimes you'll be playing it with a full roll. Yeah. yeah. Um, now this is a key part of the turn, isn't it? To get a rush, a forward rush out of three back. Yeah. Uh, to be he, fair to James, if he doesn't get a rush, Blue is in a very good position mm -hmm. to roll to. But getting rushes out of three back on your TPs is really important. He's left this, this is his longest hoop for a while. Yeah. Lovely shot. Yeah. Now, where do you like to put red? Uh, about two yards south mm -hmm. and probably on the opposite side to yellow so just a bit on the western side of the lawn okay um, concept being after I've made four back off yellow with blue peeled I can easily get to blue and just rush so you're it. happy with red as a penalt pioneer yeah red's the penalt pioneer yep and um, if it's peeled if blue's peeled now yep he's over hit that happy he's that. over hit that um but if he is peeled now by, say, a couple of feet yep. or something, you, you come back after four back and you rush it to the side of red and you've got a straight stop S shot. Straight stop shot. From All only easy. sort of 12 yards away. Yeah, well, yep. even less than that probably. Yeah. Um, and I adjust red, so if the lawn was fractionally easier, I might have it another foot or so south. Mm -hmm. And at United, I might have it two feet south. Okay, yeah. Um, United being the, uh, the club in Christchurch that's um, well known for producing dry, fast conditions. And very firm hoops. Very firm hoops, yes. Um, so, yeah, the most difficult conditions you're likely to play under. Uh, now we've got an um, equally interesting position with blue jaws. And some people will rush pure blue, mm -hmm. potentially that's what, that's all the way down. I would rush peel it. I wouldn't rush it all the way down ah, to right. There we go. So I'd rush peel it by, well, somewhere where I've got enough room to have a backswing um, and can still send blue down to, to Rover. And I wouldn't. Thank you. Thanks to Eugene. What would you do? I, I would play a Ooh, straight word. double peel. Would you? Um, again. That's interesting. That was just extending the swing and playing a firmer shot rather than his natural smooth shot. Yeah, and essentially the same mistake he made at hoop four. Yeah, yeah, very much so. When he's had control of his swing, everything's been really good. Yeah. And remember, he did dribble fourth turn that first shot, showing he mm. didn't have confidence. His actual best shooting style was gentle, he thought. Yeah. And to actually have to then to come out and pull out your hard shot on the occasional hoop, when you're clearly not completely comfortable about that, is, you know, an area of weakness. Um, as I was going to say, I was gonna, just going to do an Irish peel straight double, because you can line it up just yeah, as I well just, as, as I that. I would rather croquet it without the hoop, without the hoop being a factor. And, and sure, if, if you rush it to the exact spot you want it to, you can do. But if you rush it short, you've got the hoop on your back. So if you rush it too far, you've, who knows where red is. Um, I'll take your point. Um, I'll take your point. So yeah, when it's Jaws, I, I, I'll Irish it. Um, Mark's now got a choice. He could have lifted red and come to yellow, but blue wouldn't rush to hoop one. No. So he's quite rightly decided, right, I'm just going to hit blue straight away, get it into play. And with the other two balls, I can rush one of them well, before he does to it, hoop one. Is he, 
he's going to black now yeah i R think he's going to black, black back to yellow yeah. if he can and one of the things in his mind is i want to make hoop one off partner mm -hmm. yeah again the two reasons first of all it'll go to hoop three but in this case i think more importantly if something goes wrong yeah he's breaking down off partner yeah i wonder if the fact the sun's been out for a while will have changed the character of the lawn much it's a poor croquet stroke all he had to do was get south of that yeah So he's in an old hoop hole. Is he? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Oh yeah. Saw it jump out of the hole yeah. then. Really important is if you're a player, watch your ball finish. You needn't stand still mm. like Goucher and just wait until <laughs> every ball has stopped moving and then have a look round. You can be walking towards your ball, but both balls you need to be looking where they finish. Yeah. Um, accidentally playing trying to play a good rush when your ball's in a old hoop hole and going and getting a half ball contact and it only going a quarter of the way is not a way to lose an event now that was interesting i was watching mark's technique there he has quite a oh, now there a good shot. he a has good a shot. good swing but on that takeoff it was quite a sort of poke on his takeoff he can be quite pokey i think that's one of his methodologies for distance control mm. um and i sometimes do that a wee bit just to get absolutely right just to sort of feel I'm getting the distance well we talked about Reg's technique yesterday and he he uses the length of just, swing just smooth uh, it's, it's technically right yeah um, I always tell people it's harder to control distance through wrists it and is. poking yeah, it and is it's um, much much better to have a, a constant tempo in the swing and just lengthen the swing a bit or short oh, oh wow 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 gosh 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 well he was surprised i'm surprised shocked actually so he's looking at a little patch of lawn in front of the hoop there's no old hoop holes in that area no so you know shouldn't have caused any problem um and i think james is going to hit again but there are two finishing turns that both from where they got to at the start of the turn or during the turn we expected to finish well we're getting a bit of a post lunch dip yep perhaps yep um i think um, rich mentioned yesterday from a performance point of view you're meant to eat regularly and right. small amounts yeah, of things yeah. like nuts yeah. so long release energy proteins yeah yeah um obviously keep yourself hydrated um good shot um, for those interested in lunch, I can uh, inform you it was harissa chicken mm -hmm. um, with some sort of chickpeas, lentils maybe, and um, peas and sweet corn. Prepared by Ermgard and Michael Finnegan. Absolutely. And uh, Mark had one portion without the vegetables. Obviously. And James had two portions with the vegetables. <laughs> right. Um, and then we finished off... James is a bigger unit to keep going. Well, they're both sizable. Well, they're both sizable. Yeah. Um, Mark doesn't eat vegetables. No, and I think um, we had a nice lemony sort of dessert afterwards. Um, and did they both have that? Not sure, Mark did. No, I not don't sure think Mark, Mark would have had that. Um, so anyway, James has hit in. So he's for penalt with this ball, correct? Yeah, yeah. And many people will think in that. We were thinking, well, that's not as good as hitting him with your forward back ah, ball. Because, no. you know, you're obviously playing with your forward ball, and I'm, normally we try I'm, and play with our backward I ball. I think you've got a scheme whereby it is actually better to play with a penalt ball in these circumstances. And it is. And it's normally much better to be playing with the penalt ball than the forward ball. And it's for one very simple reason, which <laughs> is you can get to the peg without conceding a lift. Yes. And if you can do that, you can make one of these fantastic leaves that I've been mentioning they've been failing to make all game. <laughs> um, so, yeah. for example, in this case, James can make Penalt and Rover, and then he could cross one of the balls at four back, his hoop, mm -hmm. and lay up without a rush yeah. in corner one yeah. with one of his balls wired. Yeah. And then Mark has to hit from four back to corner one 
and even if he does he can't dig both balls out of corner one no so that's what I want to do I want to croquet red well I want to rush red up to hoop two croquet over to four back going to yellow and after the hoop rush yellow up get my crossbar well and he's not doing that. He's not doing that. He could have rolled red to four back coming to black. He could have done that, preferably going past black, but sure. Um, so okay. well, this is, you can still do it because you can run the hoop, hit red, croquet red up to hoop three, and then get the rush, and then rush the yellow. Yes. But he's played not a very good shot with blue. He's not got the rush on yellow, has he? No. Quite. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see him do something ultra aggressive here, such as rush towards the hoop and then stop yellow five or six yards closer to four back getting in front yes which isn't something i would consider not something i would consider i would either, be hitting really. yellow and taking off and yeah. making sure i made my hoop um, so that's fine so he's just doing the taking off fortunately oh no no i'm getting i don't know what's going on oh, i don't know what's no, going this on this is now. just a take off oh, no. where's yellow going where is oh. yellow? Oh my word, that is a shocker. Oh dear. Well, he might have been done by the balls there. Because he's presumably not split it as far as wide as he was expecting. There's still no excuse for that. Because, I mean, what's he trying to do as a leaf? Well, t true. We t we'll never know. So this is, he's going to try and scatter yellow. Get both balls off the boundary. Yeah. Um, so the worst thing you can do is nail yellow in the middle. Well, no, you could miss it completely. N yes. But if you hit it, hitting it in the middle and blue staying a couple of yards away from where yellow is will allow red to play. Yeah. And all he's trying to do now is get yellow to play and make sure that if red were to hit something, it hasn't got anything easy. So he's going to hit this very hard. Yeah. Missed it. And again, going back to my previous comment from five minutes ago, yeah, hard shot. Yeah, he's not been happy with those. Missed. Yeah. Um, red should shoot at yellow. If it hits, it's got choices of getting behind black, or if it hits yellow on the right hand side, it might just take off straight behind blue. Yeah. But well, he hasn't. He hasn't hit it yet. But he will be going for yellow. And it, You'd always go for the middle of it, wouldn't you? Oh, absolutely. You wouldn't be trying to cut it one way or another. No, I you just wouldn't. want to hit in. I wouldn't. Don't suppose you would. No. I don't want to hit it at a pace where it might finish in corner two. So that, that is a little bit too hard for my liking. Mm. He is now going to take off to black. Yeah. Past it. And try and rush black back to blue. Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah. Yeah, rushing right into the corner would be... Not nice. No. I think he hit it too hard. I'd, you know, he did. 10% less is OK. The, the positive thing is, if it, once he's got a yellow pass too, he's got an easier take-off to play. That's correct. I still think there's plenty of room behind black from almost anywhere you rush it to. Well, he's not hit this. Has he? No, short. No. And well, again, you can have a big approach to hoot one off blue. Yeah, there's there's four yards to get behind black there. Yeah. And not finishing with a rush pointing to the west side of the lawn is really quite disappointing. So he's going to end up rolling up to hoot one from wherever blue is. Again, it's not a difficult shot, but it should have been much easier and remember he's got that failure at hoop one recently in his mind he doesn't want to have a three foot straight hoop particularly <laughs> no uh, although i'm sure he would take a three foot straight hoop at the moment yeah well we're seeing the benefit of having yellow go too far north at this stage in the sense that if he doesn't get in front of hoop one or doesn't fancy it he's got something to go he, back to he has i mean to play a shot bad enough that I don't get a go at hoop one, I'll be disappointed.
and I'm playing one of these quite positive wide split shots you mentioned earlier and Blue's going to finish peg high mm. uh, yeah. and it, it means I can crash a hoot one off the north boundary yeah and that certainly is a benefit of having yellow up there indeed yeah but he's put Blue much further south and he's under hit it and it is runnable oh it's runnable but it's I far think from that's straight runnable. forward oh yeah well inside the corner uh, it's fine the, the only question I have is how hard is he hitting this? Is he smoothing it through? Well, he sh I personally think he should be smoothing it through, but I'm, I'm, I think he might be giving it a bit more. Oh, that's but oh dear. Well, apart from failing it, he's also failed it to unrunnable, I think. So you have picked up on the key piece of information we've received so far. Go on. It's, um, Best not to have lunch. Yes. Lunch equals lunch is, yeah. bad. Yeah. Um, I think James can just hit this. Blue at red. It's his uh, rover ball. And he really does have the choice here of not making any hoops and still expecting to finish next turn. Yeah. Um, lay up in corner three. And... I think he can leave red almost on the south boundary, leave yellow almost where it is, and just lay a rush to hoop three. Four back. Well, he's looking at. He's got to move red. Off the line a little of the hook, bit, doesn't a he? Little bit. He, he doesn't want to run the risk of Mark running hoot one. No. I think I would be have oh, trying to move it further east so that hoop five well, gave me a wild area near corner three. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's um, a good idea. Well I'm completely that's... happy with red shooting at yellow. I do have a problem with being too defensive here, and that red is quite defensive. Um, I would have had it this way, so that after four back I could have rushed partner down there, mm -hmm. croqueted partner in front of Rover, mm -hmm. and rushed to Penalt. If James leaves yellow where it is, and lays a rush to four back, yellow or red could just corner. Yeah. And you can't finish. You're almost forced to play another turn and make a better leave rather than giving a lift away and just going to the peg. So, very happy with distance this time. Red and yellow, yeah, good, you can't, good can't distance. can't complain about distance. Well, he's looking at a spot wired through the peg from red and through mm. hoop three from yellow. Okay. Uh, so he leaves red and yellow open, obviously, the only open shot. I think he's got to leave black and blue far enough apart that red has a shot at them. One of them. I simply can't see how he's going to finish next turn if Mark corners. Do you think, hmm, do you think Mark might corner? I'm not convinced he will. I think he'll shoot at yellow. I might shoot at whichever black or blue is open. With red. With red. Otherwise... Well, red... Red can just play just outside corner one, can't it? No, it can do. I mean... I can't see an easy finish for the four-back ball. And I can't see a way of the rover ball making a point and another leave. So if Red does corner... Why doesn't James just make a better leave? 
going from four back to the peg may sound good, but it isn't because it just gives a lift away. Yeah. Um, No, he's looking at shooting, clearly. And he's just looking at both blue and black and yellow. Doesn't look as though he's thought about cornering. Now, the, the only easy way to finish if red misses black and blue to third corner is to pick up red straight away with the 8-9 yarder. Right. And I don't think James is going to do that. No, I don't think so. Here we um, go. Red or yellow. This is, I, I really don't like that as a choice. Again, unhappy he thought he'd got that. Well, he was pretending like he might have a chance of getting it. Yeah. So here, James can make four back straight away, rush to the north boundary, croquet blue in front of Rover, yeah. and get a dolly rush on one of black, uh, red sure. and yellow. Sure. And it's yeah. all easy. Yeah. Um, it needs was a, a very long shot. Needs a good shot. Uh, needs need, a good croquet need, stroke. Needs a good croquet stroke. I yeah. think he's capable of playing that. Oh, sure. Um, so, yeah, I, I didn't like that. I, I couldn't see how the turn was going to progress if Mark had been defensive there. How would James have been able to make a better leave? With the ball just out of corner one and just out of corner two. Well, the first thing that you do is rush to yellow. Oh, you had a rush to yellow, that's true. And then you could rush yellow somewhere and go to the other ball and move it in the lawn a bit and that mm. sort of concept. This is weird. Does he think he's on peg? Or does he just think it's easy enough to croquet this? I suppose this is a straight stop shot, isn't it? Whereas mine was a split shot. Well, blue's presumably in the corner. Is it? Well, the, the, the issue is if red has gone a ball and a tiny bit outside the corner and blue is in the corner, you can't croquet blue to rover anymore. Well, a bit like that. Like that. This is the worst conceivable option. Yeah. So this turn isn't finishing, probably. How can you do something clever from here, Keith? <laughs> have you thought of something? Because I haven't. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm going to call it the obvious play, but it's madly dangerous, is to croquet blue fractionally into the lawn, going behind red. Oh, uh, OK. Um, rush oof. red directly behind blue on a line to rover. <laughs> play a croquet stroke where you don't go into red again, risking sending it off. Um, and even that doesn't work, does it? You even still that need doesn't a rush work. No, you, you can't do that. That doesn't work. Um, so how can you do this? Well, you you can you can croquet blue. No, you can't croquet. No, none can't, of this works. You can't croquet even in front of red, can you? Hmm. So you're almost down to rushing blue in front of Rover from near corner two. Hmm. Um, or there. Yeah, well, not much difference, is there? Blue's a tiny bit in the way of the rush to Penalt, but should be fine. So one of the things I am going to do here is I'm going to swap red and yellow over. If things go wrong, I'd much rather have yellow in corner two. Okay, yeah. Just as it being more defensive because red's the ball that needs to score points. Cool. But again, to be honest, if it's me, I'm not trying to finish from here. No. I'm already thinking what leave am I going to make. Yeah.
and I'm thinking of something quite basic and defensive like yellow in corner two, mm. red at the peg, and me with a 10 yard join corner four and 10 yards north of corner four. Really? Yeah. Um, the other option is to go really tight in corner four, oh, one foot apart. Yeah. Um, I just think the lawn's a bit easier, Mark should finish from that. quite hard work. Tism. What are you hitting? One of the ones in corner four? Oh yeah, definitely hitting the opponent in corner four. And what do you get from that? A rush to hit one? Well, you get a rush to partner in corner two. Mm. Okay. Um, and yeah, you just need to nigg niggle balls out. Uh, y your other option is um, to leave partner in corner two and just approach hoop two, sending ball to hoop three off it. Well, okay. You know, by that time you should have a ball between hoop four and the yeah. corner. Yeah. Um, and you could even rush from corner four to five yards south of hoop two, send the ball part of the way to hoop three. You could. Crash through to the boundary. Yeah. That, that works as well. Um, so, James, on the other hand, has moved yellow a long way south of corner two mm. and to me that that only benefits mark yeah there's no reason for yellow not to be in well corner two. so for example if you did lay up in corner four you've got a massive area north of yellow you can rush into yeah much easier to pick up a break and he's rushed not in front of rover So you have to get your partner ball on a boundary. Yeah. You have to make rover. Yeah. And both of those things probably indicate that he's got to play a more difficult croquet stroke now than a takeoff. Yeah, he'd be he's well, he's capable. Don't think that will phase him. No, he didn't do very well on his last approach to rover oh, with okay. that comparatively basic that was, shot. That was a bit out of a blue eyes. Is he doing a take off? Thick take off. Thick take off. Where's blue going then? Oh, okay. Right. So, went through an old hoop hole, finished short of the hoop. <sighs> Runnable but tough. Oh, is it? Yeah, well, okay. Sparing the clip. This is a big shot. Shot. Yeah, well run. But he's okay, blue. He's oh. going to have a roll them both off if he wants to get blue off. Nothing wrong in doing that from here. Ten yard wide join, and apart from yellow being in the wrong place for no apparent reason, mm. it's still okay. Yeah. And you can't join up tight in corner four anymore because of how bad yellow is. Yeah, yeah. But you can still go 10 yards. You can go 15 yards apart if you want. Yeah. Um, I do want blue in corner four though. Um, do you? Yeah. Yeah. What if you put it a foot north? No, nope, don't want that. Oh, he's gone. Don't like that at all. That makes yellow shocking. That is how bad yellow is. Mm. Joining up tight with yellow there instead of just out of corner two, or in corner two even. So what would have been wrong with black ten yards up the east boundary and blue where it is? Well, the only negative is you might not hit in next turn. James has said, I am hitting in next turn. If you shoot red at yellow, you've lost and a miss. Whereas sure. ten yards up, he's saying, actually... I might not still win from there because I might miss my 10 yarder. Yeah. And let's be honest, if they are 10 yards apart, Mark is playing red at yellow. Yeah, that's so, true. You know, this is all making it very black and white, hit or miss. Yeah. Um, yellow's in the wrong place. Uh, black and blue are tight, tight together. You can get blue probably six yards into the lawn, getting a rush on black to either hoop one or preferably yellow. In the middle. Oh, well, now then, that could be a game changer. And I I'm think having to remind myself, this is game three, isn't it? This is game three, and I think if 
for those of you who've been brave enough to stay with us all along, we mentioned about 10 o'clock this morning, um, the 1989 World's Final. Do you remember what the score was in that case? Yeah, both games were plus three. One of them had a TP. Um, what might the score in this game be? Well, <laughs> indeed, could be three TP. So he's done well, as I mentioned. Because of how far apart they were, they were neither a wide join nor a tight corner four leave, which would have a so he's got the best of both worlds. He's got the rush on black and blue into the lawn. Absolutely, and making hoot one off partner. Whereas if yellow had been in corner well, two, you know, it's all yeah, yeah, much more difficult. Yeah, the little things, but you know, if you were watching Fulford yeah. play this game, these balls would not have been in the same positions. So yeah, they've done. Um, yeah, the thing you really need though is to watch Fulford playing the game and be able to talk to him at the same time yeah. while he's doing it. Yeah. So that looks like a pretty good shot. Good hoop two pioneer and it looks like a straight rush to hoop one this time. Mark just checking about any holes in front of him. Very sensible. This is a big shot. Oh it's short. That's pokey. That's short. That was pokey. Well, we've been here before, haven't we? We have. Well, his last two were... Uh, what's the word his last two? Did he fail to approach on one of them? One of them was angled. Very angled. And one, oh, one, one was, was... That's right. One was angled. And then the, the second one, he, we just assumed he was going to run it. Well, I did. About that's there. a good shot. Good About shot. there, or was it slightly further slightly away? Slightly further away. Okay. Well, anyway, come on, Mark. Let's get this through. Well, that wasn't wholly convincing, but he's... Now, he looks in good shape now, Chris, wow. uh, in terms of where the balls are. An hour ago. Whether he's physically and mentally in good shape, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. An hour ago, we'd have just said, yeah, this has been a pretty good match. Before it's lunch, all over. this would have been finished, and we wouldn't even yeah. be yeah. considering anything else. Um, but no, these, I, um, I sense a, a slump in sort of energy and what's the word? Focus, confidence, maybe slump in confidence from both sides. Both both of them have got reasons to be having a slump in confidence. That's. Well short, is it? No, it's, yeah, it's, it's good. Come on, it's come on. Uh, it's actually rolled a bit further than I thought. Yeah, the lawns are speeding up Maybe, now. maybe. Um, but they're still only speeding up to a pace that's really, really nice. Oh, sure. Um, yeah. I think I'm going to go back uh, to blue if I can and just tidy it up here after hoop two. I think if you're totally in tune with what's going on you wouldn't even think twice about doing that you would just do it yeah that looks good yeah I've always fancied these one yard rushes as you know nice shots to build confidence yeah you've got something you can hit in the middle you're going to improve your position it's all going to become tight when you've You've just been able to relax and has a nice shot. Ooh, that's... It's fine. It's fine. It's fine, yeah. Now I've got an all, a laws question for you, Chris. Oh dear. When he was placing red, then. Yeah. If he moves black, yeah, which I would say he's almost inevitably going to do. Um, does he fall foul of this rule about um, balls in critical positions? Well, and would he then be stuck with not doing the takeoff? 
that he wanted to do? It's a good question. It's sort of. I you, don't know the answer. I'm not, this is yeah. not a trick question. I honestly don't know the answer to that. It's what he's critical, and he hasn't called a referee because he's not worried about it. Equally, it's sort of near a hoop, so it is does meet a lot of criteria of what's a critical ball. Um, and yeah, well, we're, it's, we're it's something. There's, there's something in the laws about yeah whether a minor displacement in his position is significant or something like that. Oh, so he's just calling a referee on now to put a little bit of soil into these old hoop holes just to make sure yellow runs over it smoothly and doesn't just jiggle a wee bit and lose some pace um, but yeah going back to that question um, I'm not entirely sure I mean I mean the tip it was brought in for the, um, the typical situation where you, for example, run a hoop and you're hampered. Yeah. And in sort of deciding whether you're going to try and make the row K, yeah. uh, or how you're going to try and make the row K, you accidentally move the striker's ball with your mallet, for yeah. example. It used yeah. to happen all the time. Yeah. And you would just put the ball back as best as you could. And but now, uh, if that happens, um, you try and put. I think you try and put the ball back, but you're no longer allowed to go for the hampered shot. You mm. you have to do something else. Whereas if you get a referee on, yeah, who marks the position, yeah, of your ball before you start potentially fiddling with it, yeah, um, then you're fine. If you do accidentally move it, it just goes back and you can play the shot you wanted to play. Yeah. So I would say that that isn't a critical ball Okay. in that scenario. The, the black? The black. Mm. Um, that would be my ruling. I could understand people disagreeing with it. But um, fundamentally, he's got a really easy shot to play and he's just playing it. And if black moves, it's been sort of he's decided where it was beforehand. You just put it back again. He has run hoop three by not. Mm, he didn't put yellow far enough in uh, simple terms. This is a fine example of an Aspinall peel. No, well, mm. this is something that can't go through the hoop because it's too angled. But yeah. you can follow through. You can flick it on the left-hand side as we look at it, right-hand yeah. side as it yeah, would be. Yeah. And he now he hasn't got he it jaws. Really he hasn't got it in front of the hoop. And what should have been a standard TP is now a delayed TP. Yeah. And that was down to the hoop approach. And the hoop stroke. Well, the hoop stroke, yeah, maybe. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to criticise him too much for the hoop stroke, to be honest. He's just done one of the things that we both hate. <laughs> yeah. He's got a rush, and he's rushed it to somewhere where he can't send a hoop five by an air He can know, yeah. He could have rushed it half well, that pace. You say that, but what's he up to here? He's trying to roll it into the wire, going to black. This is yeah. with a pass roll, so that if it misses, it still finishes, not dreadfully. Okay. But he's trying to hit the wire of the hoop. But had he just hit that half the pace, he'd have had a very basic croquet stroke to play. Yeah. And he's missed that, but he's played a pretty good pass roll. He's played a very good pass roll. Now, red's a bit short. That's something you can do with these balls, though, isn't it? It is. Um, effectively, sort of cheat a wee bit. When we both started playing, <laughs> you could be faulted for... Le Legalised cheating. Legalised cheating. For you to be faulted for something they called a push. That's right. And now, to be faulted on a croquet stroke like that, the referee, or yourself has to be able to visibly see the second contact. Yes. Um, and you can't. It's, you know, unless you just follow through and... Unless you do it really times. badly. Yeah. If you legally cheat really badly. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, you can push them through and get quite extreme stop shots that can't be faulted. Can't, pass rolls, sorry, that yeah. can't be faulted anymore. Um, and yeah, the older players sort of go, mm, that's not really how it used to be, not a pure no, form well, of the game. I remember Keith Wiley and, and you being very keen on being able to cl play clean uh, roles, um, even to a point where I know Keith Wiley used to play them standing up. Yep. 
We could play a standing up full roll. Yep. Um, and it used to be you'd rush peel four back after hoop four. Yeah. And you couldn't pass roll the ball to Penalt or hoop six going to hoop five. Now Jenny does that right regularly. Right. Just a uh, standard, let's just push a ball over there and push a ball down there. Mm -hmm. um, and you can't be faulted. So setting up now for his delayed triple, going to send Black out as an escape ball. That's gone into yellow. <laughs> now this, you might think that's okay because no, I don't think quite it's good. okay. Actually, I don't think it's okay at all. Yellow's too close to where you want to rush it to peel it. And and explain uh, to people what you mean by too close. Well. Let's think ahead. He's he's going down to blue, and he's going to make hoop five with blue, and he's going. Ideally, he's going to rush up here. And to rush and then, up there, you need a forward rush. And you do need a forward rush, so probably he's not going to be getting a forward rush. As he wanted. But to say finish. even if he has got a forward rush, he then wants to send blue to one back, um, and he would need to rush several yards. Um, east of yellow and then he wants to get yellow rushed into a position where he can peel it now that looks to me like it's no more than an inch away from, yeah, you from don't being want straight to be in front of the hoop and hitting it from more than 18 inches do you oh if that if that if that and that's you know that's requiring quite a bit of control on red and now without getting a forward rush out of hoop five He's either going to have to settle for not really getting the peel. He might, I suppose, think, oh, I can rush peel that. Yep, rush peeling is an option. But fundamentally, but he's what unlikely we're saying, to get red a foot or 18 inches away from yellow. If red was four feet in front of the hoop, this ah, would be much easier. Yes. No, he's played quite a good Which shot. Close. He's played a good shot. The line's wrong. He's played a good shot though. Mm. He's not got the rush peel option. Oh, and it's tough. Bet. It's tough if he has. It's a very fine cut, isn't it? He's looking at it, is he? Oh, I think he can bounce it back off a wire into peeling position. <laughs> or, with a very fine shot, might be able to draw it or peel it. But that's risky. That was trying to bounce it back off the wire. Yeah. And now blue's not a great ball to peel for, but go no. going to one back. No, it isn't. So I always reckon you need blue sort of two yards north of the hoop for that. Or no. at least one yard. I like one that. to two. I like it about eighteen inches north. Okay. Well. Um, very happy with that. So potentially rolling yellow to position where he can rush it over to four back after hoop six. Yes, that's an option. But number one priority, six. make hoop six. Make hoop six, yeah. Preferably not putting yellow in the way of your rush. Like that. Like that. Yeah. Well. Now he can't get black far enough north to be able to peel four back in the first place. No. So it's all sort of falling apart quite rapidly after having all the balls. Okay, so what's, what are his options at this stage? I'd be, th I'd be thinking, well, I'd be thinking that uh, to be honest, I've, I've just played a whole series of not really good enough strokes. So can I justify to myself setting up for peeling four back, rushing to three back? Well, I'm not doing that. Which is pretty much my last chance of finishing, unless I'm confident of doing a straight triple. Right, I'm going to rush this ball to a position where I can attempt the peel going to black. So it's going to be from about five yards. Okay. And it's going to be a little bit east of the line of three and four. But if you draws it, you're well in business again. That's really good. That's perfect. This is a genuine chance to play a split peel 
yeah. you're probably going to aim yellow outside the right hand wire. Okay. Well, and get a rush on black north of blue. You do need a rush on black north yep. of blue. And if you can jaws it or it finishes in a rush peelable position, you're still okay. And if it doesn't, you're having a ball to the peg and a diagonal spread. Right. So you're not flirting with a straight triple? No. Not even one peel? No. I might consider having the peg ball in three back. Okay. Mm -hmm. That would be my only sort of what else I might be thinking about. Otherwise I'm just going to maximise distance and hope they miss. But I do like this as an option. This is a legitimate attempt at appeal. He's not... Oh, he is playing it. So that pulled... So it's failed on two counts. Um, he hasn't got a rush on black. Uh, he's got a rush second prize to three back, to two back. Mm. Not what we want, but no. good enough. Well. Um, I, I mentioned you had to line that up with the ball missing the hoop you to did. the right-hand side. Yeah. He's yeah. missed the hoop completely. Oh, well, comfortably missed it, actually. Yeah. yeah. Oh, now it's, uh, 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 how much worse can this get? I think, well, in some ways he's lucky. He, can, he has got a, a thick takeoff he can play. Which will send black nearer to back. But I'm definitely just getting to the oh, I, I'm, I'm on the, my nerves have gone yeah. by this stage. Yeah. Uh, how, many, how many iffy shots have I just played? to get here it's almost inconceivable the number after he's made hoop one and yeah. he's sending partner to hoop three yeah yeah and 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 he sent partner to hoop three quite well and he's got a rush out of hoop two down to hoop four yeah, yeah we yeah it, it was at perfect. that stage it all started to go wrong when he rushed in the jaws of well it to be fair it started to go wrong when he on his approach to hoop three i think that was not a good shot. No, was it? he didn't send yellow far enough. No, and no. then everything else has just sort of escalated from yep. there. However, he's still on the lawn, he's still playing. Now, one of the things we potentially should mention is if Mark does get to four back and peg this turn, it's not absolutely compulsory. For James to play his rover ball, is it? He could play his peg ball because he could peg mark out. That would that would be interesting, wouldn't it? Because there are some leaves that Mark could make to leave, let's say, the peg ball at the peg mm -hmm. and the rover ball in a corner. Yeah. That it might be quite attractive for James to play the peg ball, knowing that if he played the other ball, he's definitely lost if he missed. Whereas Mark might not be able to finish if he played the peg ball. Um, so I think we should bear that in mind as the leaves being created. Once again, red's gone too far. So one possibility that we haven't spoken about is perhaps it's two degrees warmer. Perhaps the characteristics of the balls have changed a wee bit oh, wow. over that lunch period yeah, as the I've, sun's come out. I hadn't thought about that. They've been out in the sun for a while, haven't they? Yeah, they weren't taken off and put in the shade. They've been left stationary, not moving. Yeah. And this is longish. Yeah, that's a confidence builder, yeah. running it without all the yeah. wire. That was cleanly struck, though, wasn't it? Yeah. That was out of the, the meat of the mallet. Right. So he's looking at Rushy up here, is he? I think, I think so. Um, one of the things you can do here to get yourself back a chance mm. is rush back up, rush yellow just in front of four back, adjust it with your takeoff, mm -hmm. So it finishes Bob in front of mm -hmm. four back. Mm -hmm. And then if you can get a rush out of three back, <coughs> yeah. try and get dead on top of yellow 
rush peel it through four yeah, back, yeah, croquet okay. it to penult, yeah, yeah. and it's a sort of cheating way of a doing an STP. Yeah. But you need to play a couple of good shots to get to that stage. Um, from this position, I might be tempted. I might be tempted to give that a go. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? Because one of the shots you've got to, if you're willing to do that, you've got to give up the opportunity to rush yellow down the lawn near yep. a blue, haven't you? Yeah. So he's, he's he didn't want to risk that. Quite wisely. Yeah, very wisely. Yeah, nothing wrong in doing that. Um, It's probably quite interesting for our viewers and for us uh, to see the players just sort of struggling a bit. Oh, it's fab fabulous. Um, the most interesting croquet matches are played on difficult lawns oh, where sure. the players really struggle. Yeah, because it is genuinely difficult. But um, well, the yeah. sort of lawns where you. you t <laughs> You make nine hoops and a leave, and you feel you've really achieved something. Absolutely. Um, but there's pressure on both these players, and after lunch, it certainly appeared that you know the standard of plays dropped when we've got you know a couple of errors from each of them, mm. and they haven't just been basic errors; they've been absolute blunders. Yeah. Giving the world away. Yeah. Howlers. Um, and this is now an attempt to finish a turn under control and say I'm the first person to play a proper turn. Yeah. And um, let's see if you can hit. And if you can, I'll shake your hand and we'll go 2 1 down. But otherwise, you're going to go need two consecutive wins to win this championship. So he'll be making sure he makes Rover off an enemy ball yeah. to make the leave as easy as possible. I like his um, thinking about getting a cheeky peel in here. No, I don't like that. No, I didn't think you would. Uh, it makes getting a good leave a lot more difficult, it does, doesn't it? It does, and the leave is paramount mm. here. Um, I also, to be perfectly honest, quite like the opportunity to run the first hoop of my finishing turn hard off the lawn. Okay. And whilst it is possible to do that with Penalt, it's not normally the yes. optimal thing to do. Ooh. Mm -hmm. well, you can see black does. <laughs> yeah, well. So now he's going to have to play some big role to get a good lead out of this. Well, he's got to come back to yellow after Penal. Actually, he? I'm going to put another thought in your head. Okay. How about pegging out, James? I wouldn't. I wouldn't, well, but I wouldn't have done this. No, I wouldn't either. But that's why I haven't mentioned it so no. far. But given the fact he's tried to do this, is that in the back of his mind? He can actually make a perfectly good leave now, brush peeling yellow. Mm -hmm. Laying up with a rush on the max distance point. Well, hang on, let's get. He's got to. He's going to make this hoop and yep. rush blue somewhere. Where's that going? Blue's the peg ball. Is that uh, right? Blue's no. Blue's yeah, no, no. It no. isn't. Black's the peg ball. I think you were right the first time. Black's the blue's, peg ball. I think. I think blue's the peg ball. I think he failed. Oh, hang on.
Uh, no, I think you're right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Black's the peg wall. Yeah, Black's the peg wall. Right. So you so could have rushed that to the north boundary, mm. rocated it south of Rover. Yeah, so you rocate it after running Rover. Yeah. And rush Black the peg, peg out, going back to yellow, which you've rush peeled. Hopefully not too far. Just rush to peel this by a yard mm. or two. Can't afford to have it stick, obviously. That's lovely. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're going to make a diagonal spread, you need to play a pass roll, which is what he's doing. Interesting. It also indicates that he's not going to peg out. Mm. Look at how big that pass roll was with these balls. That's, I couldn't do that. I mean, in my head, I'll be going, that's, that's not possible. I haven't played much with these balls, so... Yeah, no, lots of things become possible. And now he's looking to make a diagonal spread for penultimate peg against row from peg. And because it's so easy for him to finish, James is going to play the rover ball. Mm. Which is, we've worked out the blue. The question is, can Mark get a good diagonal spread out of this? Slightly loose position. For those of you wondering about, you know, pegging out the opponent, um, I coach a three rule strategy. So if your opponent's on four back, you always peg them out. If your opponent's on Rover, you never peg them out. And if your opponent's on Penult, it's your choice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Black's, Black's going west, presumably. Yep, needs to get a good rush on blue. Mm -hmm. And we, we've mentioned this as a diagonal spread. It's actually going to be more of a horizontal mm. spread, isn't it? So a diagonal spread of, often leaves a 17-yarder and a 22-yarder. Mm -hmm. And a sort of more horizontal, just off horizontal, will leave a 19-yarder or a 19-yarder. Yeah. And because there's no defensive shot to be taken, because Mark's got an easy finish whatever, Everyone would always take the 17 yarder instead of the 22 yarder mm. if it was a diagonal. Whereas this more horizontal version just forces them into a 19 yarder unless they shoot at the ball at the peg. Well, I was going to say, if this isn't tight to the peg, then you, you quite often get that option, don't you? That is remembering is... playing the peg ball. And he wants to play blue. And he wants to play blue, yes, good point. So I think he'll be taking a 19 yarder. Yeah. Looks to have rushed it to a good spot. Okay. And again. The spot you're looking at is about two yards south of level with the peg. Yes. Um, hmm. And given I've, what's happened during this turn, yeah, this is a good result. Yes, we yeah. should say that because yeah, we, we have been yeah. quite critical during well, the turn. We have, yeah. And yeah. the outcome and is, it is easier from cheap seats. Much easier, much easier. I remember playing game five of the '95 Worlds against Rob, and he took the short lift. I made hoot one off partner. I had every ball in the world. I looked at. I thought. I should be world champion now. Mm. Immediately croqueted the peely into the middle of hoop six and went to four back and peg. <laughs> well, <laughs> so, you know, it is a lot easier not having to play the shots yourself. Yeah. Um, Indeed. There we go. Right. Penultimate peg v rover and peg. Game yeah. all. Yep. 
quite a key position in the match, this uh, next shot. Yes. Do you think about that when you're approaching this, or do you just, I've just got to hit? Just, just focus. The, the first thing that always goes through my mind is, what is the correct shot? Sure. Once I've decided what the correct shot is, that increases my confidence on playing the shot. Right. Because I know I'm playing the right shot. And then you've just got to do your normal pre-shot routine, make sure you strike the ball well, and whatever happens, happens. Yeah. Um, I think that's very good sports psychology, Chris, to be honest. It's very easy to get hung up on the outcome before the outcome. Yeah. Because yeah. really what you should do is do what you do to put yourself in the best place to hit the ball properly. Yeah. And then what happens, happens. Quite right. Right, well. If I've had some good oh. shots proud in the match, I'll try and remember those as well. Sure. So... I'll wait, wait till James takes this. Ah, I think James has, has spotted the moment, or he's just spotted the two people outside the club about to walk across his line. Across wristily on that one, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And a lot of bottom hand on that. <clears throat> I was going to ask you, how far was Blue Black from B Bolt compared to Blue at Yellow? <sighs> similar, isn't it? It is similar. Do you think it might be shorter? I'm not sure. Probably not. Very little in it, perhaps. Black's in the north half of the lawn, isn't it? It is. Probably only by four feet. Mm. Maybe five. That's not a very good first shot. I want to be on the rush line more than that. Yeah. Um, well, this isn't going to Rover for a start, is it? No. Bear in mind he's flipping out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, no, you can only get it, what, two yards south of the peg and it's, you know... Or there. I anyway. guess it's another ball to hit after running penalt. That's not good. That's the wrong side, wasn't it? Mm. He was trying to hit that on the other side. Yeah. Um, so this will, this will be a bad, bad turn not to finish. Yeah, from Mark's point of view. I mean, obviously it's bad not to finish, but just the, from where he was to be here is not a confidence booster. It's a good shot. It's a, good shot. No, it's a good. cracking no, it's croquet stroke. Absolutely brilliant. Right. Oh, Taking advantage of these deep balls. Where's that gone? It's gone a long way. You can shoot it red. You can shoot at black. Yeah. Red makes it easier to finish. Yeah. Black might be two foot shorter. It could be. Oh. <laughs> so I think we, should, we need heart rate monitors. We do. These chaps, I think. I, I think one of the I think things would have been a bit of a spike there. Yeah. One of the things to notice from that point of view is that was a really poor technical stroke. Yeah. Mark was walking after it. Um, it's one of the key things you can't do. You have to play all the shots in the same manner. And that was clearly a, I'm walking after it as soon as I've hit it. Mm. And uh, I think it's been shown. That's not something you do deliberately though, is it? No, That's... no. But you can get yourself to a position where you don't do that. Sure. 
Yeah. Um, Train one, yourself out of it. Yeah. And one of the things that the older players show when they're starting to get worse is that they walk after their hoop strokes. Right. And they start not being able to run hoops as well. Mm. And I don't think that's particularly the case here. I think that was pure pressure. It wasn't anything to do with a general decline. It was pure pressure. Yeah. And he wanted to get the shot over as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. And the hope is to hope that it hit. Yeah. Rather than just do what he normally does and make sure it hit. Um, again, all these things are much easier to sit down and criticise. Well, it's the sort of thing you that. never see Reg do. Reg yeah. or Robbie. They just yeah. This is the shot I've got. I didn't want to be here. I'll throw that away out yeah. of my mind. I am here. It's only a six, seven yarder. Yeah. Lovely. I'll hit these. Anyway, that was a seesaw game. Yes, I, yes. I have to say, I, if you asked me to write down every turn, I wouldn't be able to. Not at this stage, I might give it some thought. A 2 1 mark. How many turns was that? Let's not try and focus too much <laughs> on the number of turns. Shall we say it was significantly less than the about 73 it took me to win the third game against Mulliner when I won the Open? Yeah, it was only 57, Chris. It was only 57, <laughs> right, okay. Um, so yes, less than 57. Um, <laughs> Might have been 58, but anyway. <laughs> um, quite entertaining. Um, we had that bit in the middle where it looked like James was going to do a TPO with multiple peels on partner and it did didn't it you know yes. that was yes. going to be really quite a nice turn to watch yes. and he randomly sort of came out of it and just went all out for the sex tuple yeah really weird yeah anyway game four we've seen the same opening each game with mm -hmm. the first player laying a super shot this time this it's time gone it's gone further two now is that deliberate or is that the lawn speeding up I think it's deliberate Okay. I think Mark's looking at this and going, this shot from Abolt was looking a bit short, and James has maybe, you know, dribbled at it. James is putting another ball out. Yeah, and this is a standard response to a longer super shot. Yeah. This is saying, right, you haven't got any safe shot, you can't shoot through either ball to corner two or corner four, and I think that overall you're going to miss more than you're going to hit at this distance. And if you miss, you've given me the world. Yeah. Well, it was always the, um, just leave a rush on red towards blue option. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. I've done it. Yeah. Yeah. So what Keith's saying is lag black out two yards east of red. Yeah. And say to James, you thought I was less than 50% chance <laughs> yeah. to hit this. I yeah. think you're less than 50% as well. Yeah. Whereas... He's had a dribble at it. This has given James... This might not be a double from Abolk, because he missed on the left. It's but a it is a definitely a double it from Bebolk. It is definitely a double from Bebolk, yeah. Um, and I think he won't, he won't take the blue and black double from third corner, he'll just take the black and red yes. double. Um, now, in lining these up, are you going for black, but you've put red on the side that you miss? Yeah, this is easy for me, because I, I have a sort of 90% miss on the right. Mm -hmm. So I have black on the left, and I'm aiming at black. Yeah. And I've got blue on red on the right, in case I play my poor stroke. Yeah, that's the middle of that, I think. Yeah, should be. Um, it's embarrassing when you go through the middle without hitting anything, isn't it? That's um, called a Hogan double. It, I I'm afraid it is, yes. Um, so, easy chance now. Um, nothing difficult about this. He probably can't send red, uh, sorry, black to hoop two and get a rush on red to blue so you'd probably just focus on getting a rush on red to blue 
and send black anywhere over there. I mean, that's be pretty good to be honest, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, rush this fairly close to blue <coughs> and then play one of your good stop shots and just focus on getting a good rush to hoop Damn. one. Even if yeah. you've got two, two, he's not even putting that to hoop two. Um, I often just join this up with black. Yeah, two two um, bad pioneers next to each other. Yep. He's as, as good as a good pioneer. Yeah. He's done something else I, I also occasionally do, which is put red to a position where he might run hoop one to. Yeah. Um, so if you misapproach hoop one and you've got an angled hoop, being able to run it to either blue, red or black yeah. can be advantageous. And he normally plays for hoop and row cake when those on those hoop approaches. Right. But hopefully a settling break for James after some shakiness. Mm. Um, I think he'll he'll take nine, won't he? He won't mess about yeah. with yeah. Just one back lead this time. No. Just a straightforward nine. Because marks. Not actually shot particularly well, no. I just said. No, and missed almost everything in the semi-final yesterday. Right. Uh, really, if you'd have told me beforehand that Robert was going to lose to somebody who almost had a no-hitter, mm. I'd have said, no, you're joking. Mm. I, I've never seen him lose a match like that before. But a couple of errors and saying Mark didn't make any errors and had a couple of TPs and, you know, played quite nicely when he was in the balls. And that was good enough. So I'm going to um, try and give the viewers um, some variety. I'm going to try and find your friend. Oh yeah, Mr. Mr. Waterman. Waterman. Right. Okay. And I, I may join you later on, hopefully for the fifth. Right. Perfect. Thanks, Chris. So that's um, Chris leaving the commentary position. Uh, meanwhile, James is, I'll say, just playing four ball break at the moment. It's not. Um, not completely tidy, you don't really want to be doing approaches like this if you can avoid it. So the, the interest will probably uh, come up again when we get to what Levy's going to make. I'm expecting him to make a diagonal spread because that's the lead that he almost always makes. First break. One thing you'll notice about James is that once he gets into a rhythm he, he does play very quickly compared with some other players. but you'll notice again that he, he didn't really have blue as a good pioneer at hoop three. It's not a good pioneer at hoop five. He didn't have black as a good pioneer at hoop four. Um, but the conditions are easy enough that that's not really causing him any problems. Okay, now he didn't have room to send black to hoop six there, so he will be sending red to hoop six. So he's effectively swapped the pivot from being red, and now the pivot is black. That's a good pioneer. That's a good pioneer at six.
So blue will be going to one back, I expect. I've just been joined by somebody else who... Are you going to be doing some commentary, Mr Gregory? I understand I've been asked to. I've been doing it on the old text, but... Uh, oh. Saves my typing fingers. Welcome yeah. to um, modern media. Yeah, I'm, I am being text is being superseded. It's sad, but uh, I mean, the only difference I can think is that uh, if you can't follow live, if you're following live, you want to watch the pictures and hear your expert thoughts, Keith. But if you're uh, catching up in the evening, it's a bit quicker to do that uh, on the text. Anyway, well, James, James, James is playing his first break. Here, as you probably noticed. Yeah, this is our fourth turn, isn't it? After a super yes. shot opening. Uh, all four uh, games started with super shots. Were you uh, surprised by that tactic? or? Uh... Um, well, no. I mean, I think, I think, in a sense, I think they should have started with super shot openings. Right. Maybe. Um, because with the rain, well, the laws are a bit well, easier. Well, three ball, bit easy. I mean, three ball breaks I, I fairly easy. I don't Third honestly think Mark around. has um, actually been a super shot today. No. Well, that's uh, yeah. And they, you know, the clues James. in the name. <laughs> <laughs> James has hit more long row K's. Yes, I think that's uh, definitely true. But uh, but he's two one down. He is a uh, fairly uh, very interactive game three, strewn with errors. Relatively speaking, after lunch, in particular, no, after lunch. You blame the lunch. Do you think? Mm. Lunch was too good. They should take an hour to digest it. So, what leave do you think um, James will be producing? Right, I imagine a diagonal. Spread. Yeah, I imagine so too. Avery seems to favour the uh, new standard leave or the. Variant of it called the Morm Standard Leave when the ball's closer to hoop two, but um, normally you'd have left the ball, the hoop two ball behind by now. That's what. Uh, yeah, I think we're Mark getting Harry a diagonal spread, so it's got a bit of work left to do to uh, get black. Black will be the ball that's tight to the peg. Yeah, and uh, making two back off partner, which is. What is generally recommended, though? Well, some, you say some that. authorities you differ. You say that, that uh, yes. I remember a conversation in the pub where we had this debate, <laughs> and Phil Erdley was asked, "Which ball should you make two back off?" And he said, "Whichever happens to be closest to the hoop." <laughs> Which <laughs> well, is a good, good answer. answer. You can't good argue answer, with that. No. Can't argue with that. Absolutely not. Uh, well, I know at least a couple of top players who favour. Uh, making two back off the ball that's going to go to the peg. Yeah. Um. But yeah. certainly, yes, I, I personally prefer having partner at two back, and and, and ideally getting the the black ball in this case, the one that's going to be at the peg, pretty much in position by yeah. the time I'm making three back. Indeed, you don't want to. You don't really want to have a difficult shot here. Indeed, he's, he's not failed to get a rush after three back, so yep. now uh, I don't like my sort of half roll shot. But, yeah. Uh, Ooh, James has this has gone. Them. This has gone way too far north for me. The blue. Yeah. Okay. Well. <sighs> so it's, it it's, might it might be okay. Uh, it's just it's because a, it's more diagonal. The short shot will be shorter. Is well, your objection or? Potentially, um, shooting at blue from B bolt might be the shortest shot. Right. Okay. I think it's just about okay there, to be honest. But I do see people who I don't know if it's an optical illusion, but they they think they're putting out a uh, the ball over there, you know, three yards south of where it actually ends up. Oh, so he's very quickly got black positioned, rushed over, and he's now leaving his 
his rush for his balls. But as you say, because blue is further north, red and yellow are further south. Indeed. And, yeah. um, I well, I imagine Mark will be taking the short shot here. You, you, actually, if you get black tighter, tight to the peg, you, you have full range of options with where you lay up with red and yellow. Yeah. Because you don't really care about blue shooting. I just like to make sure that I've got a clear sight of blue without the peg in the way. Right. Just in case black gets lifted. Yeah, so, which indeed it has been. It has uh, been, uh, yeah. And, uh, as we thought, short shot, so-called. Well, it's quite a long shot, really, but uh, as lift shots go, it's fairly short. Oh, he's looking at blue? No, no. Just... Uh, oh. Just checking he hasn't... Uh, Taking the shot from a bulk rather than just to the uh, east of it. Quickly into it. Oh, missed. Close, but Close, another miss. Missed, missed on the left. Yeah. So, well, in a normal uh, top in the quality north. match, you'd expect that to be yeah, the that, that Mark's last shot of that game. Indeed, but, you would. Um, that, that should be game over now. Um, um, it hasn't always been working out like this. Certainly not in. Uh, Game three. <clears throat> now, because he's taken that shot, because Mark's taken that shot and missed, yeah. um, James really ought to be able to get a standard TP okay. going. Yeah. And much more easily than he would have done. Um, yes. Black had it, missed into corner four, yes, for example. Yes, in corner four, you normally... You either have to do a big shot, like a Hogan roll or something, to get the ball out of fourth corner early, or you have to do a delay TP. But Black will be... Uh, going near hoop four. It'll probably end up being the hoop four pioneer, or you know, swap balls around, I suppose. Yellow's going to be the hoop two pioneer, which is not ideal for the standard TP if you can get a position where yellow is a hoop one pioneer then uh, yellow naturally goes to hoop three but uh, yeah um, these chaps don't mind that they don't mind they can get a rush out of hoop two that make is, a hoop and get a rush somewhere yeah that's it's uh, a, it could catch on <laughs> <laughs> well not with me clearly but uh, yeah, <laughs> I understand uh, <laughs> top chaps have less problems and that fewer problems I should say well, his main thing is to get a good so rush a, to hoot one, which Yeah, this is it. This is a crucial shot. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? Seems to be uh, drifted a couple of yards past the ideal spot, but I dare say he'll cope. I think we'd prefer to go to black after the hoot, wouldn't we? Rather yeah, than just leave well, it Yeah, I think there. so, because black, you could improve. Yeah. And I think there are, there are two acceptable lines of play here okay one that, it all depends on how he runs this hoop and gets a rush okay well i i think it gives you more options if you put both blue and black to hoop three at okay. this stage um both on the south side by a yard or so uh, and then when you do rush after hoop two you've got many many more p places you can rush to right uh, so you've basically got all four balls round hoop three and you've you got can, all four balls round hoop three you can do what, yes. uh, whatever you want and mm. sure you're going to use one of blue or black to make hoop three um and the other one will be rushed away and sent sent down to hoop four yeah but the other way of playing it would have been to to leave blue at hoop four just now yeah early hoop four pioneer yeah but it looks like uh, james is following your preferred line uh, well we'll see where black goes i'm expecting it to come over south of hoop three and that's where he's looking Yeah, he's actually put that north of three. Okay. 
it's not well yeah we'll see where he rushes yellow but I ordinarily I'll be rushing yellow somewhere south of blue when you've got a croquet yeah. stroke yeah, it was. Send it into peeling position and then you rush blue somewhere where you can send it to yeah. before. He hasn't got the ideal rush after two, but oh, no, nice that's cut. the thing though, yeah. nice With cut. the two balls over there now, yeah, okay, you that's not. Mm. Yeah, you, you really want to be rushing yellow somewhere between, or somewhere on the line between three and four, yeah. ideally. Yeah. So you're sending it up towards four back. Rather than so, across. Are you going to black first here, or? Well, he's. I think he's going to blue, but blue. It's it's a little uh, no, I'm fast sure. roll. No, no, oh, he is going to black. He is going to black. Okay. Yeah. So. Got the easiest to get black, yellow in peeling position. Yeah. So now. Almost. Black will be going to four, and he hopes for a rush on blue to three. Got the rush to three. How's Black doing? Pretty good. Pretty you good, yeah. Not not smidge too, too, too far, yeah, but he won't mind. No. So, what do you reckon? Top player on a not too tricky lawn? Is he 80% to finish? 90% to finish? What do you think? Oh, where, where your, where's your money? I'm going to stick my neck out and say 95%. To finish, to finish the TP. Right, I think that's. It's um, all down to the hoops. Okay. Um, these hoops aren't the uh, aren't the toughest, but they they they're not absolutely trivial, are they? They're not. Um, they were reset on uh, Friday, so not had too much play on them. But quite a bit of rain overnight. Yeah, that and that's uh, probably softened, softened the ground yeah, up yeah, slightly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, almost got caught in a thunderstorm after the uh, <laughs> the late finish of uh, their entertaining plate. Uh, effectively, a semi-final. Kevin Beard pegging out Andrew Hobbs to get a nice three-ball ending, which uh, Kevin eventually won plus three. And when did that finish? Um, about nine o'clock. Oh, excellent. Something like that. And I'll say ten minutes later, heaven's opened. Um, so, the peel isn't through because you no. haven't taken the clip off, but it looks most of the way through from here. It'll so. be interesting to see how James continues from here. Right. Will he uh, rush down after four or will he uh, rely on getting a forward rush after five. Yeah, those I, are the, I watched those him are in the two. final last year and he oh, definitely yes. seemed to prefer the rush after five. He wouldn't, right. He wouldn't play north and rush, but this year he seems to have been doing it. I don't know uh, quite why. Well, we'll soon find out. Different walls, he's certainly yeah. got... Yeah, he's, in he's got a good position on black. He's got all the options he could want, really. This is quite close, so I think he might be planning to rush back. I'm not a huge fan of, of doing that because you've got to do the takeoff from blue, uh, from yellow down to blue. Yeah, you've got the uh, 20 yard takeoff. I, I don't like those. Um, Can you see that? You're 10% out, and then, I mean, blue's not ideal at five. You really want to rush it a bit closer before you. Uh, now he's pausing for thought here because I'm pretty sure he was expecting to rush black somewhere where he could put it to hoop six. Indeed. Um, and I know what he's looking at now. I'm, go I'm going to guess that he's promoting, looking at promoting through, yellow through with black yeah. and then getting a rush on yellow over to six and he's yeah. probably just heard me say that so <laughs> I better shut up now. <laughs> have to be very careful of offering unsolicited advice <laughs> because you're not allowed to take it of course so um, unless you'd already thought of it but if you would already thought of it that's fine so uh, 
I remember once uh, Pete Trimmer was playing on Lawn 8 at Cheltenham. Uh, I think he was playing Rob Fulford in something. But anyway, um, I think Rob had done a pop on Trimmer, so he was for Hoot 2, and he clearly thought he was Hoot 1. Ah. And there was a slight intake of breath from the crowd. <laughs> and then he realised, and then he had to ask the referee, does that count as advice? And he says, no, no, because I didn't say anything. They just... Uh, something like that. Uh, your computer apparently died. Jenny would like to continue the commentary on her phone, but needs you to log in to your computer. Okay, technical issue, folks. <laughs> Excuse me for a while. That's all right. This will take a little while. So, meanwhile, James is... He hasn't got the ball anywhere near hoop six. I don't yeah, I suppose that that, that will worry him too much. Yeah, He'd like a rush here, though. Oh, almost failed the hoop trying to get it. Okay, so don't think that's intended to be as one back pioneer that blue ball. I think black will be going towards one back. Ah, no, we're getting a we're getting a variation on um, the Wiley method. In which case, so black, black's become his reception ball for hoop six, yeah, and I, I think he's going to put yellow out of the way of running the hoop, run the hoop down to black. And now he'll send black to two back and hold for a, a rush on yellow to peeling position, peel yellow. And then rush blue to one button. Okay, so you need dot com at the end of that. Mm -hmm. And my password is plus twenty six TP. Plus in words. Yeah. So here he comes Hello. with his pioneering two back, and that's not going to reach two back. Yes, I was having that problem. Okay. <laughs> but you know what it is. Yeah. So. Right. <laughs> Sorry about that technical issue. Jenny Clark has uh, subbed in for me for the text commentary, but my laptop has just uh, run out of juice, so <laughs> she's going to do it on the phone. <laughs> and I, but she needs to log in as me so that we can. Anyway, so here we are. Dick has done the Wiley manoeuvre and uh, is going for the penalty peel before one back. Yep. Is this one of the things that Wiley came up with himself, or was it done I t well, previously? Well, as far as I know, Wiley came up with it, with it himself. Obviously a great thinker um, of the game. Indeed. But, author um, of... Uh, I know Robert Fulford came up with it independently. Ah. Another great thinker. Indeed. In indeed. As Keith Wiley wrote the uh, Top Players Bible, Expert Croquet Tactics. All you could ever hope to know about doing a triple peel. Yeah. Meanwhile, James has had his second peel. Um, as Keith mentioned, the two back pioneer is about 10 yards from the hoop at the moment, so we'll need a rush on that. Otherwise, all is going well. Cut, yeah, it's cut blue well, a bit north, so yeah, blue goes again, to three back. Has, has he got room to get blue to uh, three back and get a rush on yellow? And get a rush on yellow, yeah. Well, maybe with my stop shot, I could do it, but <laughs> yeah, with mine, I couldn't. Uh, and he has 
That's pretty good. It's not. No, I it's don't not. like blue. Well, it's going to be difficult to get the rover peel bound before three back, isn't it? Which, uh... And also, he's now put yellow too close to black. Yeah, I don't. I mean, it's good that he's got a an easy rush to two back. So he certainly, um, from the point of view of getting the brake back under control, is doing well. Yeah, it's just a question. I'm not confident that he's getting this road no. appeal before three back. Although he may try the manoeuvre where you... You do after three back. Yeah, so you turn the peely into the reception ball for three back. Ooh. I don't think he enjoyed that <laughs> tea bell going off as he was about to run two back. <laughs> That's uh, somewhat disappointing, <laughs> but uh, luckily he's coped. <laughs> yeah, there's only one person on the lawn, so you know. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're not to one thing you have off. to avoid, and <laughs> you fail to do it. Right. So he's made two back, and Black is coming to four back as a pioneer. And now, what's he doing here? Is he? I think Blue's too far north to be thinking about peeling, personally. Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. going over for the uh, rushing yellow after I'm three back. Pretty sure I've never managed to do this successfully. <laughs> um, My rushing. I've, I've certainly seen it done. But, oh uh, yes, yeah, yeah, I've yeah. seen it done by good players. <laughs> <laughs> You're a good player. In yeah, no, day, not at you? doing this sort of thing. Not at doing. I was going to say earlier in the commentary when Chris was talking about making two back off partner of rushing it to Penalt and peeling it through Penalt, but I'm pretty sure I've never done that one successfully. Yes. Although I have, I think, occasionally rushed it to somewhere where I, I could at least attempt the peel. This is quite a long rush on the yellow, so it's, yes, it's all a bit, accuracy. bit speculative. Yeah, but you're not losing anything. Right. Do you think he'll have a go from there? I, I think, think he, he will. probably will. Because yes. it's going to be a bad shot to miss yeah, the, the hoop The worst altogether. that can happen is that y yellow misses the hoop completely. Yes. <laughs> Ginger beer? Ginger beer, yeah. Yep. Um, Eugene Chang, looking after the commentators as ever. Excellent, yeah. <laughs> um... Just getting Andrew a drink. Always. Oh, that went through, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> a very good outcome. Indeed. That's uh, that's your last chance saloon for doing the rover peel before having to do a straight rover peel, which yes has many ways of going astray. So um, a reasonable tonk of blue somewhere here. Well, that's uh, not too bad. It's uh, it's okay, isn't it? Yeah, it's um, okay. It's another fine. example of rushing somewhere where, well, here here he can improve blue. Yeah, yeah. I think he should take yeah. off. It's blue near a penalt. Okay. So are you are you going back to Rover at this stage or later? Later, I think. Okay. Um, I think you're probably right because yellow's only just gone through, so you can't really rush it. That's right. Up the lawn. <laughs> I think if it had gone through by a couple of yards, yeah, I maybe I'd have gone uh, back. Yeah. Anyways, he's fine. I mean, he'll probably get a rush, and even if he doesn't. Just take off to yellow. As long as you can see yellow, then uh, you can send it to the peg and make, make him grow over off the black ball. And he's got a rush as well. So, so Mark's lead did not last long. <laughs> no. <laughs> assuming well, he finishes from here, which we, I'm we are sure sort of assuming that. Um, I'll certainly be typing plus 26 TP now. I'll try to restrain you myself. Press enter. I wouldn't okay. press the send button until he right. uh, okay. actually pegs <laughs> out. But, uh, yeah. 
so he's got uh, an extra ball behind Rover so there's even fewer blades of grass he can land on where he can't hit anything Black is... He's not giving himself much opportunity too... to go wrong here, is he? <laughs> Anything too You would close. hope he gets a pretty it's easy it. rover. <laughs> it's balls. one of those rare hoop approaches that is actually going further away from the hoop. But <laughs> 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 Yeah, this is all over. Uh, so, we have a decider. Yeah. How exciting. Right, well, and, um, I think I might try and... Persuade uh, the croquet commentary expert to uh, take my seat for the final game. Well, so it's been a pleasure, Andrew. Well, oh, thank you, Keith. So Keith Aiton leaves the commentary box and I am joined by the, I should have looked this up before saying it, 1997 uh, Open champion. Very, very Chris good, Andrew. Clark, very good. As well as multiple world champion and various other so trophies. We have normal service resumed there in game four after that feast of a game three which just kept going and going and going. I think I counted up to turn 24, which wow. is uh, fairly unusual, except in maybe two or three ball endings. But yeah. In, uh, yes, I don't know. Uh, my error counter broke somewhere because uh, <laughs> it's so high. So I think we can probably take a break now because it is tea time. Oh, the tea bell did ring and just the players before. Players uh, have just walked in and they're both going to be taking tea. Right. Um, so I think you can probably have 10 minutes break and uh, go and grab yourself a cup of tea. Um, talking not just to yourself, but also to the viewers. And um, join us for the um, deciding fifth game, I would guess in about 10 minutes time. Okay.
he has the choice of what to do and I presume he's chosen to go in and Ava is stuck with red and yellow so as not to confuse us and as expected, a, well I expected it, given there were four super shots so far it's a fifth super shot opening. Yeah it is indeed, um, again a little bit shorter than Mark laid it last game yeah. um, and we've been seeing Mark dribble at this from various positions from the end of A bulk to towards corner one yeah and he i don't remember him hitting any of them indeed and i think in one game he tried to find position on the west barrier was that i'm getting confused maybe that was james sorry in an even number game anyway it's another dribble um, the other thing as james did uh, in the last game is just lag a few yards and east, he's got that east of the ball but uh, yeah so the first time we've seen a hit, and there are various options now having hit, aren't there? Indeed. Um, some um, aggressive players might even attempt to make hoop one and try and get a two ball break. That's, um, that is aggressive. Uh, you need to be quite confident in your two ball break ability because there's no real tactical advantage to making a couple of hoops. In fact, it's almost at a disadvantage, isn't it? Yeah, you because want to be making at least six probably to get yeah. an advantage. But a standard option is to croquet one ball maybe 11 yards off the end of A bulk. Uh, okay. And then put the other one 11 yards off the end of B bulk. So towards corner four and towards corner two. Right. And Mark's choosing to do something I've never seen before. So that's always good. Yeah, yeah. After you've been playing limited. almost 40 years. <laughs> He's rolled red into no man's land, shall we call it. Yes. Black, yeah, yeah. Sorry, black, and he's gone just outside corner four. Now, just outside corner four is standard, because it means if James shoots with blue at yellow from the end of A bulk and misses on either side, it's likely to leave a double target. Indeed. But um, leaving black there more. almost encourages James to take the shot, because if James hits, James will expect to go round. Indeed. Um, um, I mark in earlier rounds has been trying this putting yellow where it is second term that's normally if the opponent has done the standard thing not a super shot just going off the east boundary somewhere which is quite a sensible opening um, but as you say this is uh, provocative so key, key shot key, key shot in the match yeah it is you're quite right. very important to have First break and uh, first break should depend on whether James hits or not. Mm. In the middle, centre ball. And I was thinking about fifth games of Open Championship finals, and I don't think there've been that many, but I do think quite a few of them have been 126 TP. Okay, well. I got as far as somebody asked me when it last time it went to five games and the answer is three years ago in fact slightly less than three years ago because it was in September 2020 Covid year at Cheltenham so we had a late one and um, I categorised the final as when Paddy met Harry because ah. it was Paddy Chapman and Harry Fisher yeah Harry won the first two games um, but I think the fifth game yes the fifth game Paddy went round first uh, Harry was going to do a TPO but didn't get the first peel so decided to stop it would be super advanced so he decided to stop after five hoops I think and uh, hope that Paddy missed and mm. Paddy didn't miss and finished ah. so that was that so wow. that was 21 TP I think okay so very good croquet stroke from James out of corner four yeah. getting a good rush to hoop one and, he and he's really not taken advantage of that good rush that's uh, that's that's poor that you need to hit that what 50% hard or 30% no, hard probably 20 30 yeah um, anyway, he can, can he rescue it with this? That looks, that looks pretty, good. That looks good. Let's see what oh. angle he's coming up at. Yeah, that's uh, be thrilled with shot. that. Yeah, and yeah, the black's be... really good as well, Andrew. Indeed. Oh, oh. now the black isn't very good. Ah, <laughs> oh, here we lucky if he can hit this. Can't, can't imagine. Oh, let's have a look. Uh, has he got? He could hit that. But you are slightly risking your mallet. Yeah. Well, James isn't playing with his regular mallet. It's, 
so <laughs> maybe he could, he's got his, his old mallet's been uh, re, uh, reconditioned by oh. Richard White. Yeah, I am told that the person whose mallet is, is sitting next to the lawn, so perhaps that's why he's going into corner four <laughs> instead than of breaking the mallet, taking yes, the is. risky shot on. So uh, I think probably we're odds on now not to have a plus 26. I would guess so, yes. Mark um, should be able to line up a double. Black red at black yeah. with yellow in the background or alternatively simply hit yellow from b-bulk yeah it is about a nine yarder indeed and if he hits yellow he'll have a ball at his hoop black on the other hand is longer black is about an 11 to 12 yarder yeah yeah I mean, that's a good point um, so i think there are two legitimate choices here oh well Mark's peering over towards b -bonk. Mark's had two fifth game deciders in the last two rounds against Stephen Molina and Robert Fletcher. Clearly came through them both. Um, but I don't think uh, fatigue is an issue, do you? Or, uh... No, I think he's uh, done quite well on lawn allocations as well because Semi is was on the lawn next door and his quarter was on this lawn. That's true. So he hasn't moved far away from the main pavilion as it is now. Um, yes, I'm confused at these two pavilions. Yes, it is confusing <laughs> to, as old. I went players. to the other one, the east one, but forgetting no, this is tea. Tea is in the west pavilion. Lunch is in the east pavilion. So. But uh, uh, another big shot. This is missed miss that, Black, can and see? Oh, there's oh, miss gone through the middle. Is it? Looked like it, didn't it? Oh, somebody's giving us a thumbs up. It did go through the middle. <laughs> um, Cameraman's giving us the thumbs up. So the positive thing about this the shot he took is it guards black at yellow. Indeed, and his balls are now nine yards apart rather than twenty yards apart. Or, yeah, uh, it's more than that probably. So uh, black at blue, do we think? I think we will see black at blue. Yeah. Um, Looked like a good strike. Oh, just misses on the right. So we're almost in a sort of Duffer Tice fourth term position, aren't we? It's, uh, <laughs> Indeed. Except um, that black is no blue is for hoop two. Yeah. Which is, uh, It'd be quite interesting to see whether James plays his hoop one ball black. Or his hoop two ball blue if Mark well, misses. But we'll never know. Indeed. <laughs> there have been lots of those scenarios where I thought, oh, when they miss, I'll just go and see what's going to happen. And they've always <laughs> hit him. Um, so, um, you've got choices here, haven't you? You can be quite defensive and just play a takeoff, moving yellow a few feet, focusing on getting near black and blue. Yeah. Or you can actually make sure you get it six, seven yards into the lawn. And okay, again, thick that takeoff. makes the shot a tiny bit more difficult. It does. No, no hoops in the way here. So that's a good positive for Mark. And blue and black are quite close, so if you end up six yards short, it might be a double target. So, uh, so he's so done he's lots with that yellow, and red is on the mat. This is a hopeless red. That's, that's, that's poor. But I'll say, it is a double target. It's an eight, eight yard double, nine yards maybe. Um, It'd be very yards. interesting. I think there's a hole in this, Andrew. Do you? Right. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, uh, let's hope he doesn't find it. Got both of them, so that is un inconclusive as to whether there was a hole in them. <laughs> it's flicking so off did, one, diverts it into hit, the other. Yes, yeah, so he must have hit blue first. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So now he should get the benefit of having done a lot more with that yellow ball. So Indeed, good rush to one now, and um, Avery has first break. He's over hit that again, I think. Just a little bit of a cut. But it's at short range, so he should be able to control it. Looks like a better pace to me. That looks Has he got the direction right? Not quite. No. The pace is very good. But that's about five feet directly north of the hoop. It does look to be 
pretty much due north. And we've seen both players <laughs> struggle here. Oh, there's a sign from the cameraman. It's, it's on the right. He's saying he can go to the right of the hoop. <laughs> and he's okay. So... That's good takeoff. Yeah. Ooh. It took a lot of while, but Indeed. it's gave, given him a rush. Exactly. Known in the so. train as Murray Control after Martin Murray, where you don't play a good hoop stroke, but you get a rush, an undeserved rush. Oh, I'm well, just looking. asking James, does he want it watched? And James just waving him on, saying, yeah, no, it's fine. It's a courtesy. Uh, he's got, he's not, he's got easy problem, poke. Maybe. Yeah, that's fine. So you just got to make sure he gets sort of past the yellow yeah. so he can rush it back towards two here. Yeah, one good croquet stroke here and uh, the break should be established. Blue's already part way out of fourth corner, so it uh, shouldn't be too difficult to get that into play around hoop four sometime. James going to throw a ball at the squirrel. Oh, oh it moved him. Not bad. Mark got past the yellow, yeah, maybe looks... by a fraction further than he would have liked. Um, again, Black, he's kept inside that rectangle we mentioned in earlier commentary, and he's just flicked his rush to hoop two. This is still looking nervy to me. Yeah. Well, you don't get into too many open finals, do you? This is Mark's third. Okay, so he won in 87 and then uh, 89. 89 runner-up. Which was also... The first world championship. It was indeed. Won by Joe Hogan of New Zealand. And there are nine people playing in the worlds that's going to start soon who played in the first one. And Mark's yep. one of those nine. Yeah, it's so a good, good quiz question. So uh, while Mark's, we expect taking this break round, maybe you can think of that. I think um, now he's picked up the break, one of the things we ought to say is um, a big thank you to the Nottingham Club. Um, the lawns have been good, yeah. um, particularly on this side of the court. Um, these four have really been picking up speed as the week's gone on, and the hoops have been really quite good, quite firm in the ground. Yeah. Um, uh, catering, obviously great. Excellent. Um, we're getting lunches and teas every day. Um, oh, that's short. He hasn't got hold of that at all. The yellow's great, but this red is just two yards short. So he's going to have another backward takeoff. Oh, yeah. I mentioned in my text commentary if there was an inter club croquet catering competition, ah. there'd be Nottingham v Surbiton in the final. I think. You think so? Right. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm sure we've all got our own favourites. Um, <laughs> yeah, our lawns, our lawns one to five here, the old lawns, as it were, are good. But these lawns are, are better; they're flatter and faster. Yeah, the and fastest indeed there are and firmer underfoot. Okay, so there are oh, plans to um, dig up lawns one to five. There I are. Understand, there and are. Relay those, redo those completely. I'm hoping that they won't do it in one go, because okay. it, it does take five lawns out of a 200-member club, and uh, it, it will cost more to have them done in more than one go but um, I think that might be the best option <coughs> a so, fire engine going past on the main road there uh, we're not too far from the fire station so the traffic noise is manageable here because it's usually a steady hum because it's uh, quite a busy road rather than the occasional boy racer racing down making a horrible noise so uh, it again, should be right should be should be straightforward from here the um you want to get blue into the break now don't you you do you can take off to it after you make hoop four and yeah. um, just move it to hoop six and you're gradually bringing the balls into the break um, but again just talking about club members being a load of people here to set up in the morning and close at night and take the chairs in and lift the hoops up oh um, absolutely i uh I actually played in this event a long time ago <laughs> and in the Swiss uh, I had a game that finished about half past nine in the evening and there were two or three volunteers racing on to get the hoops in and we went back to the pavilion they'd say some hot dogs for us Fantastic. And it was, it's, yeah they've made us feel really welcome I hope that uh, 
Nottingham gets a regular place on the rotor of uh, Open Championship hosts. And then finally, a thank you to Eugene and all his crew for setting us up for yesterday and today for the live video stream. Um, and and uh, also to yourself for providing text commentary for multiple days for those who are maybe stuck in an office and can't turn on a video but Indeed. can sneakily look at some text commentary <laughs> while pretending to work. I mean, my theory is also if if you're doing something during the day and you want to catch up in the evening it's Absolutely. A, bit, a bit quicker to catch up by reading some text rather than yeah. fast forwarding through some <laughs> breaks so, uh, so with these two players not, not so much fast forwarding because they're pretty fast to begin with uh, yeah it's been a lovely pace of play in the final I've, I've enjoyed it yeah. um, we have had some errors um, <laughs> but we've also had some good play mm -hmm. um, I'm expecting Mark to take this to four back and again, try and make the MSL he's been trying to make. Yeah. First game, he didn't quite get it and left a couple of dodgy balls at hoop two and at hoop four, both of which were imperfect, but um, got away with it. Um, well, in the fifth against Robert Fletcher, he got away with his ball at hoop two being perfectly visible from B ball. Completely <laughs> open. It was about 11 yard, wasn't it? Um, I did suggest to him, uh, could have gone and tied it up, Mark. Yeah, I suppose I should. <laughs> anyway, I'm sure he won't make that mistake here. And now uh, he's got all four balls pretty much under control. Yeah, just a gradual process of moving this ball out of corner four and swapping it over. And, you know, just gradually now he's got complete control he doesn't need to send black to one back here he can just send black out as a pivot yes you just the rush on yellow is the important aspect as long as black's somewhere in the middle of the lawn that's fine uh, the downside is if he's making an msl by having yellow at one back yellow goes to three back yes so i think it might change his leave into a diagonal spread because of that that's a good point yeah I have known a player leave his uh, leave a ball in warm standard leave position, then later realise it was his partner ball. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not great when you realise that. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I was going to say who it was, but I might have got it wrong, so I won't. <laughs> um, but anyway, now he's uh, approaching from a foot as you want to be doing six-inch hoops. That's what you want. <coughs> so rush blue somewhere near black and then blue to two back. Uh, now you did just have a little check there about which ball's where and maybe that will now change him right. to a different strategy. We've got to remember that James has made a hoop. Yes. And it would be helpful if I could remember which ball he'd made it with, but uh, not very good at seeing colours. I'm, I, think, I think it was blue. I'm pretty sure it was blue. Yep, it's blue. So blue is on two. So if blue's on two, it's not <laughs> ideal to leave black at hoop two, so I don't think he'll be doing that. So one perfectly good option here, Andrew, is to make an NSL, that's a new standard leave, Yeah. Um, where you have blue up at hoop two, Yeah. and you have black on the hoop four position, while tray ball, right. and he's got the balls in the right rotation to do that. Uh, okay. um, and the other option is to try and leave black tight to the peg, so it will rush to hoop one, but not to hoop two. Yeah, that's not really very easy from here because okay. it would force you to have partner at three back yeah, right. which That's you don't want, you, to you do. want to do so yeah, of the yeah. two options the the nsl with the black on hoop four is stronger so everybody has leaves they prefer to make but sometimes you've got to adjust those leaves in the light of clip positions 
often if one ball has gone round you want to try and force the forward ball to play that sort of thing um, so one of the things I'm focused on in a fifth game like this is I want to make a leave to make it as easy as possible for me if they miss right because you know that if you play a good next turn you're open champion so let's try and make it as easy Absolutely. for me as yeah. I can do. Um, okay. So yellow's going near three back, but he's got a rush on black. Very nice shot that was, wasn't it? Nice yeah. rush on black. So, uh, yeah, should be able to organise a new standard lead, as you suggest. So black goes to three back, because that's the ball you want to be making the hoop off. And just pop it behind the hoop. So you can leave it wired from the end of A bolt by hoop four. And blue will end up up towards hoop two, but not too close to B bolt. You don't want to be offering a particularly short shot from B bolt. No, so. But ideally, it's still good enough to be your hoop two pioneer. Yeah. Maybe sort of five or six yards southwest of the hoop, that sort of thing. <coughs> got a reasonable crowd here, not huge, but uh, about certainly quite a few club members. A lot of the players will have gone home, it's been a long week of croquet and quite a few have got uh, playing the World Qualifier which starts tomorrow in Southwick, so uh, certainly uh, there's a, three or four players who are doing that. And uh, next Saturday the World Championship starts. Based in London, Hurlingham is the head club where the, certainly the last few rounds of the knockout will be played, but also using five other clubs in the London region, Ealing and Dulwich and Woking, is it? Woking, Roehampton, Surbiton. Right. And I think we may even be using the All England Lawn Tennis Club. Oh. That's, uh, I'm not sure that's 100% yes, but yeah. Right. I think they've got three lawns there. Okay. And um, it might be a, a nice right. little venue to get to. Yes, probably probably not next Saturday or Sunday, I suggest, as the no. <laughs> Champion Tennis no, Championships will not. still be on. But uh, yeah, this is, of course, the All England Lawn Tennis and Croquet Club. Uh, anyway, so. Well, this is the sort of thing I do with my leave. Because at my level, it's hubris to think of the leave too much before you run three back. Because then you blob three back and you can't do anything. But gathering all the balls there, you can usually come up with some sort of NSL and OSL if things don't go so well. But obviously the top level, you're uh, more <laughs> precise than that. I'd normally be putting yellow the opposite side. Okay, because so you're going to be stuffing blue yeah, west. So. I'd be more tempted to have it a little bit west rather than east. But, you know, you, you can play it okay from there. Um, I guess you're just putting blue out from a bit further away. But you need a nice little croquet stroke here, putting black either directly straight into position, so you don't have to go back to it, or putting it past so you can run past it and knock it back. And I think that might be quite close to already being in about the right position. And if it is, he'll run the hoop and hit blue, croquet blue, to this position Andrew mentioned southwest to hoop two and then yellow and red will lay up probably just north of level with hoop five on the east boundary uh, so he's just been to a bolt to check whether any of black is sticking out can he just run this and not bother with having to hit black again and move it out of position and that's what he's done so he'll hit blue now Needs to give himself enough room to be able to send it quite a long way west.
so again I'm hoping he's not going to float it three or four yards south of hoop two and offer up this short 13 14 yarder yeah. from Bebok um, yeah. so I'm really looking for a fairly accurate ball here that doesn't give a short shot away and he's sending it out from about as far away as he could possibly do and he hasn't got red quite as far as he would like blue's good because it's much further south than it was earlier yeah so yeah james isn't going to shoot at that from b bulk and it's an adequate hoop two pioneer yeah so yeah, i'm happy enough with that yeah one of the shots that does become viable when you leave it quite a long way short of the boundary there is for James not to take a lift at all and blue. shoot blue at black. As it lies, yeah. Because you can miss on the right hand side and occasionally get lucky by flicking off the hoop and hitting black. Yes. Um, and if you do hit black it's a very easy pick up of the break as well. Indeed, and, it's, um, and it doesn't. The only disaster of you is if you hit the near wide full and stay there, but um, that's unlikely. Uh, that's unlikely. So yeah, Mark just laying up a fraction north of hoop five, and he's been laying his rush sort of pretty quite, much due west, isn't it? Well, yeah. almost. It, it was two yards north of hoop five last time, so it's even further north than the due west line. Right. Okay. So he did leave himself quite a big cut. Um, So you've got to be careful. <coughs> Excuse me. Obviously, got to be careful not to leave a double target from either either bulk. Yeah, should already. Or indeed, for blue as it lies, though, unless the yep. pegs him in the way. I don't think it is. That might encourage him to actually leave it a bit further south this time because of where blue's position. If you left it pointing two yards north of five, it'd be very close to a double. Yeah. And I've got no idea which ball or which shot James is going to take here. Okay. Um, I could I could imagine almost any one of the five potential options. Right. Can I identify five options? So the long shot with black or the long shot with blue? A short shot with black and the short shot with blue. blue. That's that's for all. Um, as blue you say, black. blue blue as it lies at black. Yeah, they're the five I'm looking at. This is the most defensive. This is the one he's taken in previous games. Uh, okay, to make to the, make it difficult to pick up a standard TP. Correct. Uh, <clears throat> Rushing the fourth game, I asked Keith what he thought James's chance of doing a standard TP was, and he said something like ninety-five percent, which sounds high to me, but something like that, but. Delay 2p, that much more difficult. 70%, 80%, Here it comes. Right. No, missed, didn't missed by quite a way. Didn't look on very the left. close. Made it to the corner though. Yeah. Um, and doing a delayed TP to win the Open Championship isn't the easiest thing in the world. No. Uh, you'll be under pressure. He's got a long way to rush to one, and then he's got an imperfect hoop two pioneer, and he's got a ball in the corner. So there's plenty of work to be done. Okay, so you don't think he can cut red to blue now and make one off blue? He hasn't been looking at that as his preferred line of play. Okay. He's wanted to make hoop one off partner. Yeah, yeah, and you're right. There this is, looks okay. Again, it's north, but very good length. Yeah. I think he'll be happy with that. So, what I'm expecting is for him to make hoop one and send red a little bit south of hoop three, uh -huh. getting a rush to hoop two, and then rush back to corner four. That's everything. Oh, Jeez. Put a ball to hoop four and then roll out of corner four, black up to this Healy at hoop three and get a standard TP out of it. Right. Yes, I've seen him play that shot earlier in the week. It's. Uh... But you need a good red. You want it about one to two yards south of hoop three. Right. Um, and you're putting it out from quite a long way away, needing to put a fair bit of focus on yellow to get a rush to hoop two. Sorry, on yellow to get a rush to hoop two on blue.
This looks great for red. Red's where you want it. Probably I prefer it two, three feet further south. Right. But as, I don't want it north. No, no. I want to be able to roll out the corner, finish right. short, and yeah. know I'm not crosswired. Yeah. Um, and he's played a good rush to two, so he should be able to rush down towards black in corner four. And the of difference... Course. Sorry, Andrew. Well, of course, the ideal if you can do it, is to rush blue into fourth corner and then you get a cannon. And That's perfect. That would be perfect, but you need to be um, pretty good at rushing. Get ideal position. Sort of thing Robert Fulford did in his prime quite regularly. But um, it's what? Pointing seven, seven or eight, pointing roughly the right direction. It's seven or eight feet rather than two or three feet. Yeah, maybe pointing a bit more at hoop four than corner four. So, uh, oh, that's a good contact, but he's not hit it hard enough, has he? No, well, he might just leave it at hoop four. Okay. And just take off to black. Yeah, croquet to hoop four, go to black, and play this big role I've been mentioning. Indeed. Yep. Yep. And I was going to say there's a big difference between doing a delayed TP and a standard TP to win a championship. Um, a lot more pressure on it. You have to play more good shots. Whereas if you can just play one good roll here, yeah, get Black as his escape ball for the peel, and get a good two-yard rush on red. It should be in his own hands and a fairly straightforward turn. But this is a big shot. Yeah, here we go. This is uh, this goes well. One of the dangers with these type of balls is to leave black short. Yeah, they pass roll more readily than uh, the balls we're more familiar super with. Super shot. That's uh, both yep. balls are are good. Yeah. Yellow arguably could be a yard further west. Yeah, okay. Leave a straighter rush, but I think I'd be happy with that. Yeah, you wouldn't want that one back. So. Right. It's in the middle. A bit more work to do on this shot. Pretty good. Ah, that's handy. Some people will say, oh, he's hit red further away from the hoop. Much better than have a three yarder that you've got to hit gently at this stage of the match. Well, yes, in an earlier game, must have been game three, I think. I think he was expecting to hoop on Roque and didn't get it and had to knock it out of peeling position. He ended up not, uh, not getting the triple. And I think blue is a good enough hoop for Parnia to play this with a straight stop shot and okay. not worry about getting a rush on black yeah. and take the pull out of the equation. Makes the peel much easier and uh, we've well, just seen one good roll so presumably you can do another one. <laughs> yeah, as you suggest. Ooh, well, it's not got the thing. jaws. It's, uh, No attempt to rush the black bear, just focused on hitting it. Yeah. Knows you can play the croquet stroke. Absolutely. You don't want to risk cutting it just for a yard or two further south. So. Uh... So are you wanting to rush back north after four and complete the peel, or wait till uh, hoop uh, five? I normally don't. You I normally, don't normally north, yeah. make hoop five. As long as you make um, hoop five with a rush, you're in. Yeah, good shape, aren't they? Yeah, but having said that, the lawn conditions are so easy that if you put a good hoop five pound there out, which he has, and he has, so you shouldn't be able to take off cross wide from that. You should no. always be on the eastern side of it. Then coming back for the rush peel and just taking off is completely legitimate. Uh, it's one of those ones where if, if Black had gone an extra yard, I wouldn't have come back to it. 
the peely. Okay. And I've gone straight to black. Because it's finished in a really quite a pleasant place to take off to, um, I might just rush back north. Giving himself a bit of a cut rush here. Yeah, it took a bit of wire, more wire than expected, I think. Okay, so another, another roll required here. Blue to six, yellow to south of red, so you can rush peel it. Yeah, I like putting blue level with hoop six, about one to two feet east of it. Okay. And it's a nice ball to go to if you don't end up getting a rush on red after hoop five. Right, yeah, a rush after hoop five. Yeah, okay, yeah. That's lovely, it's lovely there. So always worth looking at where you need to rush it so you can take off from the left hand side of it rather than the right hand side. Yeah, moving it near a, near a penalt. It's, uh, it's the next destination. And the question is, is Toggling his head is he's well, thinking about how much am I going to do with red? Yes, how you thick are you going to play it? Yeah, nice yeah. easy thin takeoff, guarantee yellow going down exactly the right line, saying red's good enough more or less where it is, or am I going to move it a few yards and make it closer to the western side, the lawn where I'm going to be playing? He did a sort of halfway house, didn't he? He moved yeah. it two yards. But yellows. Very good. Very good on black, yeah. Yeah, lovely to get that rush. That really makes things much easier. Yeah. Try and rush it all the way to corner three. <coughs> He hasn't got as good a stop shot as James, so he is going to need a little bit of room. He's got the room, but he hasn't got as easy an angle to no. get behind the red. So black can go all the way to one back. Yeah. Can he get <coughs> the angle right to get a rush on red over to hoop six? It makes break play and peeling turns so much easier when you get rushes after hoops. It does. And that's the difference between top players and maybe players on scratch or minus half or whatever. Yep. <coughs> that looks good. Yeah. Now pretty both good. balls pretty good there. Oh, he's hit that too much in the middle. Yeah, we need to cut that a bit more, but. Um, a more difficult shot to place the red in peeling position. Uh, he's still going for it, little, little, little pass roll here. Again, these balls make this shot fairly straightforward. Just a ball or two short, but it's good enough to probably get a decent go at the peel after the hoop. Might not be dead straight. And how far do you like to try and peel this one, Andrew? Wow. <laughs> it's been a while since I've been in this position, but um, what you don't want to do is peel it by about a few inches. That's horrible. You'd rather have it in the jaws. You there. would, yeah. But as long as you get it well through, that's that's fine, isn't it? Yeah, you see, I'm, Keith said as far as possible, and obviously if you do get it all the way to Rover, it is quite handy if you get a rush out of one back. But if you don't... But if you, you don't, I sort of prefer it at the peg. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's less far to go. Yeah, um, yeah not such a big croquet stroke. Yeah. And I don't need to peel it before two back. No. So no. 
the peg is sort of almost my preferred place there or right. three four yards through even um, just trying to take that big croquet stroke out of play <coughs> after one back another lovely shot the blues are great two back pioneer got a dolly rush to one back and this is the sort of time when you need to stop thinking about winning the Open Championship. Right, just, just finish this turn. Finish every shot to the best of your ability. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm almost tempted to say this will be a bigger win for Mark than it would be for James. James has won two out of the last four. Yeah. And as we said, it's 36 years since Mark won this yeah. as a 21 year old so um, hugely I... impressive performance were he to finish indeed um, and he's been well, getting he's... better and better absolutely he's uh, knocked uh, the world number one out yesterday so it doesn't get much tougher than that yeah um, Coming on from a strong performance in the McRobertson Shield in November, part of the unbeaten Avery and Birch doubles partnership. Well, Black's very good. Um, can he cut red in front of Rover? Or is he going to have to play another one of these past rolls? Oh, well, that's good. No need to have a go at this. You can just take off, leave it there, and peel going to three back. I'm going to take off, I think, from the left hand side, just moving it a bit straighter. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, what he's doing. Following your advice. Pretty sure Mark was the youngest Open champion and is still the youngest ever. 21. 21. The question is, is it, will he be the oldest if uh, he wins? I posed the question, but Stato uh, hasn't got back to me. But I think Rob was younger when he won the Worlds. Okay. Um, 1990. I'm just trying to remember who won the Opens in 1990. Okay, I have my <laughs> phone with me so I can tell you that it was Stephen Miner. Ah. Beat Robert Fulford, plus 23, plus 24 TP. I think that was the last best of three till we went to. Um, well, there were some best of threes. We went to best of five the next year, but there's your best of three. And the most recent best of three is 2019, when the lawns at Surbiton were really quite tricky. Yeah. Until, unfortunately, on the Saturday night, the rain came. Wow. <laughs> Took the sting out of it, but uh, by then the decision had been made to have best of threes. So that's when James won his first title against uh, Rich yeah. Bamford. So Mark didn't quite get yellow far enough to get a good rush on red in front of Rover, so he's now peeling at quite a angle yeah. and having to go over to black. And uh, as long as he gets south of three back, he won't get crosswired from it. But he's going to have to allow a lot of pull, and I think he'll be thrilled if this finishes in the jaws. Yeah, that'll be a good result. Yeah. You're almost lining it up on the outside of the wire. Outside Maybe of the right-hand wire. Yeah. Okay. That's oh no, that's glued not, on the wire. That's not great. It's not bad either. You can leave that till rover. Yeah, yeah. And just get on top of it and nudge it three inches dead straight and do a straight rover peel. Um, yeah. But yeah. He'll want to get a rush out of three back to avoid having to play a big croquet stroke going to blue which might not be easy from where he is, so he might go back to red. He might have to, yeah, if he, uh, yeah. Looks to be uh, setting up for a 
westward rush after the hoop, southwest. <coughs> Ideally, you'd want to avoid playing the takeoff from red to blue because it's Indeed. moving the striker's ball a long way. And there's nothing worse than having a three or four yarder at this stage in a break. <laughs> um, but the, the alternative to playing the takeoff is to play a big role, and I think he'll just play the takeoff having moved red off the wire. It's a little bit far. A little bit far with black, but it's a pretty good penalty pile now. It's not a problem. You don't want to rush Red south of the hoop and end end up with it floating south of yeah, you Rover want it, here. Certainly don't want it behind the hoop. No. As you say, you must be thinking about that problem and not about the uh, trophy, which uh, doesn't seem to be on display <laughs> as yet. But I'm sure they're all here somewhere. And you certainly don't want to have to go back to red after this shot because black's quite a long way north of the hoop. Indeed. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Lovely shot. Right on top of this blue. Right. We have an answer from Chris. Oh, yes. Hope Rotherham. A younger open champion is Hope Rotherham. Older. 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 Ah. Older. She right. won in 1960 at the age of 66, I think. Uh, James Deeth just showed me a, <laughs> right. Right. a message that from Stato, so now that, we know. That makes more sense than younger, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, I uh, never met the lady. <laughs> is she, in fact, the last female winner? I yeah. Think she is. Yeah. He's gone narrow again here. It's these balls. Just split a wee bit narrow in. Yeah, there's nothing difficult about this approach, but I don't want to be approaching from here. I want to be approaching from half that distance. Indeed. Yeah. Um, the tighter you are, the less go wrong. Red's That's great. Terrible. Looks yeah. good, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, it's a good hoop approach. Yep. Yeah. Made sure of that. I gave that an extra 10%. Indeed. So now so he hasn't no, got a rush. He hasn't got a rush, but he needs another reasonable roll to blue. Putting black behind Rover. Are you putting it deep or halfway so, deep? So you, you never put black deep here. Okay. So red is so close to Rover, you're guaranteed to Irish peel it. Okay, so you have two you, balls by the side. So you've got two options. One is two balls by the side, and the other is one ball by the side and one short straight ball. Maybe three, two and a half yards directly behind the hoop. Okay. So if you run it by the worst possible amount and can't hit your side ball, oh, you've right. still got a straight deep ball. Okay. Um, again, you know, Robert Fulford developments in the game. Now that's a little bit too deep. Probably a yard short of that would be optimal. Okay, but he's got a but so rush it's, on it's better than three yards deeper. Okay. Um, should be able to get a good <laughs> side ball that copes with most positions that yellow can finish. And be able to get right on top of this red. Goodness, I didn't really realise red was that good. That's, yeah, um, no, it's great. That's um, that's perfect. Yeah. And then we try the Irish peel. Both balls through in this stroke. Yeah. I think, I think that's uh, when I started. I don't think many people were doing Irish peels. They were doing stop shot peels and then trying to jump over and that sort of thing. And so. Irish peels with Jakes were much more difficult. Okay, no, that's a good um, point. Yeah. Because they split at wider angles, any failure to hit the back ball down the perfect line was doubled 
because it sprang out to the side. Oh, nice. Whereas these you sort of push forward a bit more, they're a bit softer and plasticky. Um, so Irish peels have become much, much easier. Um, okay, so... Red's far enough through, you're not looking to bombard it at all, are you? No, I'm just, just getting the perfect position. Tightest of dolly rushes and rushing it five feet to the side of the peg. There's no chance it's going to hill five feet on these lawns, <laughs> and providing you hit it at the right pace, you'll have a five foot peg out. Indeed, and uh, yeah, that's about all that can go wrong. Well, you, are, you can either run rush red into the back of Rover, which wouldn't be good, or you can do what's called the Grievous and rush it onto the peg. In which case it's immediately removed from the lawn and you've no ball to take croquet off and your turn is over. So just a reminder before we wrap up, we'll have more live streaming for you from the World Championships from Hurlingham uh, over the event that starts from Saturday for about nine days. So Indeed. more good croquet to look forward to, lots more nationalities involved. Um, you'll no doubt be seeing both these players in action in the later stages of the event, both world-class strong contenders, and it should be another good event covered by the CA. So a little rush to the peg now. That's oh. missed the hoop, it's a good length. Yeah. And this is going to be Mark 25. Avery. 25 TP, Mark Avery. 2023 AC Open champion. Right. Many congratulations. Um, fine performance, very few errors in his break play. Shooting might not have been quite as good as he wanted, but um, break play's been good. Mark Avery. Right, thanks for viewing, and we'll be back for the Worlds. Cheers for now.